<clears throat> and hello. Uh, one sec. I forgot the audio again. <laughs> uh, hold on a sec. All right, there we go. <clears throat> so yeah, um, as you can see, since we finished the game last stream, um, yeah, I just want to do a stream or two of like um, reading the books and credenza. Well, credenza books, whatever. <laughs> Credenza's bookshelf. Um, continue, options, credits, and delay. Now let's continue. All right. <clears throat> yeah, so I want to just like read the books and like, I don't know, discuss the game a bit here and there and stuff. We'll see how it goes. Um, I do want to, yeah, check out the original ending um, in Rowena. Uh, we'll do that afterwards, I feel. Yeah. And then, what's it called? I'm also tempted to go through a bit of the art book. I don't know. I'm thinking about that. Uh, whether to like... I won't um, go through every page in the art book, perhaps. But like, maybe bits of the art book? We'll see. Because I, I took a quick look at it and like, yeah, the small um, written quips are pretty cute. <laughs> and also some of the, like the information on like the characters and also um, the notes, the developer notes, I think. I think it's developers or like staff, the staff notes on each character and stuff. Maybe, maybe. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe, we'll see. We'll see how long going through the credenzas will take, but I also, I have a free slot to stream tomorrow anyway, so maybe tomorrow if we, if this takes ends up if this ends up taking like six hours to go through all of these. Who knows how long that'll take. <laughs> but yeah. We'll see how it goes. Alright. Um let's start off in Canon then. Rats. Uh Lenny. Alright, so we'll go... Alright, so Pete's the leader of them, aren't they? Alright. Uh, wanna hear a secret? This is kinda embarrassing, but... I... Used to have a dream once. Like Pete does now. Yeah, I know. I'm still younger than him, but a long future ahead of me. What could I do? Life's too rough for that. I would say that rats are a pathetic bunch who are too incompetent to join even the smallest syndicate, let alone a wing. Foofy losers who feed on junk and leftovers, not making any effort to change. Back when I was a young kid, I didn't like that. I thought it was better than those rats, so I decided to get into an examinee town. Little did I know that it'd be the one choice I'd regret the most. I begged and nagged at my parents, wanting to achieve that stupid dream. How'd it go, you ask? Seems you're just as stupid, aren't you? I wouldn't be hanging out with these folks if I made it, now would I? What I'm saying is, dreaming won't do jack shit for you. We didn't end up here because they gave up trying. Hell, they wouldn't have set foot on this gutter in the first place if they'd had what it takes to achieve their dreams. You get it now? Pete's a huge idiot. Hmm. I know, is that, like, what's it called? It's like, um, it's kind of like tragic, I guess. It, like, let's see. Starting, like, fighting the rats, like, it really gives you an idea about the city. Like, how to say, like, the very worst it could get, I, I guess you could say. But, like, it's kind of interesting, like, the whole dream stuff is, like, let's say, like, with Pete, like, because of the light from, um, at the end of Lobotomy Corp, like, people were able to, like, dream again. At least, like, how to say, they still got some hope from the light, at least. It'd have been, I don't know, <laughs> it would have been interesting to see if, um, what kind of ego or distortion the rats could have become. But again, they are, they are like, you know, pretty low down, so who knows if that would have been able to happen. Hmm, hold on. But yeah, hold on. But yeah, it's also kind of that thing where it's like... Um, um, the ending... Yeah, I'll save that for after I'm done with credenzas. Um, it's, I know the ending part is like, what, really short, but... I'll save that for the very end. Hmm. 
And also, I don't know how long it will take to go through all these credenzas, so... Um, I don't know if it will end up going into another stream, but we'll see, we'll see. Because I do want to check out the ending, but I want to do the credentials first. Just to get more, just to see through the rest of these characters as well. Uh, let's see. But yeah, it's kind of that thing where it's like, oh yeah, these guys don't try, but it's, they do try, but then they just find it hard to like, um, progress upwards and stuff like that. It's kind of like, tragic in a sense. Alright, so Mang Chi. Did you know, there's great for each alley in the back streets. Funny, ain't it? Trash in a trash can are grading each other. The parts that are under the protection of a syndicate, office, or association are pretty safe. Sheepers can't raid those streets easily, putting the people who live there in a pointless grade from those who don't. Though, it's pointless, honestly speaking. Sure, it's a bit safer out there. We're talking about the back streets, get it? You know what's funnier? Even kids regroup themselves according to what parts of the street they live in. We'd even shun the others whose clothes or manner didn't fit in their turf style. I had no choice but to accept this sad truth. You, you're, one, you're wondering how things were in the alleys I lived? Couldn't afford to pay protection fees to a syndicate? So the sweepers came down at night and collected most of my neighbours. <laughs> Damn. I had to witness them take chunks of flesh out of my parents and brothers while they were still breathing. Don't pity me though, my story ain't nothing special around here. Yeah, that's the cool, that's, that's the thing, like, the sweepers were like, really built up to be, um, really big city, like, players in the city, I guess you could say. Like, how to say, from Lobotomy Corp, like, this, you, like, if you go from Lobotomy Corp to Rowena, like, the sweepers are like the main threat you'd know about of the city, like, even in Lobotomy Corp, they were like spoken with such fear. And like, even here, like starting out, if you read the credentials, um, as you get them, what's it called? It's like, yeah, it really builds up the sweepers. So it's, I don't know, it's kind of, I guess, funny, I guess, with the sweepers we get in this game. They're still not annoying. Well, yeah, I guess annoying <laughs> in terms of the fight, more like they just live forever. And then um, they're like cockroaches, I guess. Or like they just they're like they just don't die easily. So they are kind of a threat. And also to be fair, mind hauler and health hauler are like really core <laughs> attributions um, to use um, throughout the whole game after you get them. And they're what? They're an they come in from urban nightmare. But then it, they're used from urban nightmare onwards. For like realizations and general play, even general play to be honest, not even just realizations. If you want to get uh, regen, but yeah, I guess yeah, the whole thing with like, oh yeah, my story ain't nothing special around here. Is like, yeah, it, life in the city is just tragic, <laughs> and I guess you could say like, yeah, this sort of thing is just commonplace, huh? Hmm. But then, what's it called? But yeah, I guess, what was it called? Uh, it's just, it is funny, like, yeah, how even in the back streets, they do try to, like, segregate, 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 uh, words, um, themselves based on some sort of, like, class system, even in the back streets, like, just to make themselves feel superior to others, like, bruh, we're all shit here. <laughs> so it's like, why... I get why it's like it's to like maintain some sort of like superiority of others even in the lowest dregs they do still want to seem superior to someone so yeah what was that meme it was like <laughs> meme yeah it's like this it's like that meme of like what's it called um like two guys on the street fighting even though it's been the same <laughs> Yeah, Health Hauler being the best sustained passive in the game just had to come from the most tenacious force in the city. Hmm, pretty much. Like, by this point in Marina's story, it's like, the sweepers are kind of decimated. I forgot why. Why were they so weak by this point? Well, I guess to be fair, you could kind of see the sweepers as like... 
uh, not natural hazard, but close enough to it in a sense. Like they're just a thing in the city you deal with. <laughs> they're this like force of nature, like a typhoon or earthquake. They happen, so just be careful that it doesn't happen to you, or take precaution against them. Like don't go out at night in the back streets. <laughs> But yeah, it'll be interesting to see, like, we have the, we have the big, was it the mother of the sweepers? So maybe we'll meet them one day. It's funny, because, like, I was thinking about this earlier, like, we we have the mother of the sweepers, but, like, every character that we met or alluded to is someone we fought in the library. Except, and also except for, um... That index person, the one from Yan's story, I forgot her name. We did. She has a portrait, but we haven't. We didn't actually fight her at all. <laughs> Only in the nest lobotomy in nest lobotomy court hunted by the carnival. Let's create any ensemble. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Oh, what do you mean by that? Do you mean like the sweepers and stuff? Oh, only in. Oh, see the sweepers. The only the sweepers in. Um, the nest. Oh, I see. Only the ones involved with um, the Botany Corpse nest were the ones who were decimated, right? Yeah. To be fair, yeah, they were hunted by the carnival for that um, prescript. Yeah, and then the ensemble also dealt with some. Hmm. I guess to be fair, with distortions and stuff, the sweepers just like got knocked down a peg in terms of like disaster level. <laughs> Like, they're much, like, sweepers are dangerous, but then you have distortions suddenly coming in. And it's like, damn, the pianist really, like, um, changed the city, I guess. It, they, the, the pianist effect on the city was huge because of the whole distortion stuff. And, like, that was the first distortion to really cause damage. Was it the very, or was, or was it, like, the very first distortion? Well... I guess technically, depending on... No, no. Wonder Lab happened before The Pianist, I guess. But I mean, to be fair, I don't think Cat did too much damage as a distortion. Um, they just wrecked Lobotomy Corp. Well, their branch of Lobotomy Corp. Um, but yeah, I don't think Cat did any like city-wide damage compared to um, The Pianist, at least. <laughs> so like The Pianist was... The distortion that changed everything in the city. Well, for the for the people inside, the head doesn't care. <laughs> All right, Pete. There's not a lot of peeps who hang around in the back streets alone. It's cause that's just madness. We can dowdy folks got a band together to survive. It's been a while, but I somewhat remember there were more details in distortion detective about nights in the back streets. Some two or three hours in the early morning where everyone huddles indoors. Hmm. Yeah, it's that that really makes it seem like some sort of like natural disaster. Like let, let let's say like an earthquake or typhoon. Like oh yeah, we'll just stay stay on stay at home. Don't don't go out. Yeah, while the sweepers sweep the streets in waves. Mm. <laughs> it's like yeah, it's pretty they're pretty much treated as a not as a natural disaster by that point. <laughs> Get into a small syndicate or anything and make a living somehow. But the ignorant fool makes a scene in the back streets on their own and they're just making themselves a target as soon as others notice they're alone. That's why we move in groups. We're called rats for a reason. We crawl about in darkened packs and jump at prey for the chance to bite them. Apart from when we spot apart, uh, bite them apart when we spot one. So, you wondering if we rats have any dreams? Hmm. I guess belonging to a proper syndicate, if any. We're just too tacky and amateurish to be called one. We hate being bound to rules, so hell will freeze over before any one of us joins an office. And no rat I know would move to an examinee town and study for wing entry exams. Those nerds at the examinee office aren't too different from rats like us. We're all dreaming silly dreams that'll never come true with our petty skills. An office, a wing, a group, a I mean a syndicate, or whatever. I think it's an easy task to belong to a decent group. I think it's an easy task to belong to a decent group. We would just accept what, what they got and live on, but still. I wanted to have a dream. I think you get a battle symbol if you beat a member of the Fingers with a character using, uh, 
using our attribute with Pete's page. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Maybe I'll try if I have time. Or I, I think I saw on the wiki there was um, a list of attribute of uh, bow symbols. I see. Uh, hey there, look at the stream. Hmm. This like it really. This is like something that's brought up later on. I think it was in Chezed's realization or like one of his episodes. And it's like it really, um, it really exemplifies um, the whole how people in the city they all want to belong to like some sort of group to be with people or for their own safety or for whatever reason. Like everyone wants to be part of something rather than which is funny. Like it does play. Oh, hard, yeah, hard, hard, hard. Maybe hard, yeah. A secret achievement to kill an index or thumb. Oh, achievement. Oh, I see, I see. With Pete's page equipped. <laughs> Interesting. That, so his, that's his dream. I see. This implied the stories we get from the pages were essentially something like Carmen interviewing them. Oh, I see. That does explain the way the dialogue is going. It's like an interview. I like the credenza. You have no reason to read it, but it really fleshes out the world and foreshadows future events. Oh, yeah, yeah. I want to just read them because, like, I liked the abnormality stuffs in Lobotomy Corp. I didn't get to, I didn't read them on stream. I read some of them, but I want to like give proper time to read these here, and it's fun to discuss it. The bar the Baron of Pete's page has to be the one to get the kill. I see. Hmm. Okay, that sounds fun. <laughs> Just like use this weak ass page. What is it again? Um, what's the stats on it? Yeah, you you you, <laughs> you need to um, you really need to like um, protect them. <laughs> Fatal to slash, weak to blunt. You're you're crap. You're you're utter crap if you <laughs> if you use this. <laughs> you need to use like Tanya's and like attributions. One to four speed dice. Yeah, you're slow as hell. <laughs> Maybe if you give it to like Yasod and then make him survive long enough to get um, to get something like um, what's it called? Get something like um, Chained Wrath and then use Mio and Strongest <laughs> to maybe make them survive long enough and also do enough damage because like the thumb aren't too well index and thumb you need to be lucky that they don't target you either index has the ai thing where they won't target um they focus on one target so index seems a bit better but you gotta be lucky of that but yeah you would want to use abno pages index ai pretty much yeah dark flame true i don't think you're gonna get that far <laughs> with um pete's page to get dark flame ready <laughs> like you may as well call that your sod Zodia by that point with how hard it is to even get to that <laughs> I think yeah the Pete character will just die <laughs> by the time you get Dark Flame ready your Zodia <laughs> but yeah if, I was thinking about this based on like the game's UI it's really interesting like um I'll show an example here. It really stood out to me. I'll, I'll just, I want to talk a bit about Zhao and um, Philip later, but it is interesting, like how the whole thing with like wanting to be involved in a group. Uh, one sec. I'll get the example while we're here. Uh, Urban nightmare. Not crying. Dawn spread. It is interesting, like... <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Wait, that's a... That's a... <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's <laughs> interesting, <laughs> like, from a UI perspective. Like, even the game's UI reflects it, like, how people want to be part of something as a group. Like, even though the Dawn Office is just gone now, like, Philip's um, UI still refers to him as ex Dawn Fixer because he still views himself as part of that office that group um but it's interesting like 
in contrast, we got like um, here. We got in contrast, like, I really love the contrast between Zhao and Philip. Even though they never met, there was like a really big contrast between the two. But like, with Zhao, like, I don't see, like, it really exemplifies her really forming her own ego. Like, she left the Lu Association, but she isn't referred to as ex Lu Association compared to Philip. So. It really like she's able to stand or stand on her own while Philip still clings on to um what's it called? Being part of the Dawn office. And like as Pete's page goes, it's still um people want to be part of groups as 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 discussed also late in one of the I think yeah, Hods. Hods episodes. Yeah, Miris also yeah. Yeah, Miris is also not part of anything. But I think it's be it's because he's like, you know, he's devoutly following. Well, not, not devout. Devout makes it seem like Hokma. <laughs> but like, he is like following Zhao and like, he isn't attached to his identity as being part of the. Um, as being part of the. Um, Liu, Liu Association either. So, I don't know. I feel like maybe. If Miris lived long enough, maybe he could form an ego himself. There is some, yeah. I mean, to be fair, he's back. Everyone's alive, so <laughs> at, the, at the very end. So who knows? Maybe Miris could get something in the future. Earnestly supporting Xiao as his own person. Hmm. That that's that's him. That 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 words it much better than I did. <laughs> yeah. Earnestly supporting Xiao as his own person. Yeah. He that's his choice. And like he's not attached to a group or anything. It's his choice. It's, it's his own decision. Mm. In the interim between Oscar and Ego Philip in the wedge, Philip drops the subtitle to. Oh, does he? I guess. Oh, true. Oh, is that? Is that the case? Damn. Uh, where is it? Oh, I I, I need to fight them real quick to see that. That's post battle. Yeah, never mind. Whoa. <laughs> Okay, yeah. I guess I can't. I need to go back to the actual fight to um, see that. Okay, cool. Is it still like? I guess to be fair, in this pre-battle, he does not even post pre-second act. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wait. Uh, hold on. I think he gets he gets it back in this part, does he? Doesn't he? Doesn't he? But again, I guess, when I guess, to be fair, yeah, he gets it back here. All right, so I see, I see. So it does signify Philip was going on the right path of like forming his own ego. But like by the time of crying children, he just, um, he just, what's it called? He, he reverts back into that. And then obviously Oswald and Pluto fuck him up even worse. <laughs> I'll discuss more on Philip and Zhao when we get to reading them, but like, I love the contrast between the two of them so much. They never met, but at the same time... Oh, okay, you beat him enough for those HP plus one glasses. Hmm. Yeah, I'll trust. I'll take your word on it. Don't worry. Or that, we can just go and fight Oscar real quick. But then... <laughs> but then... Now, Eagle Philip is fast as well, to be fair. He's not crying children, Philip. But yeah, I love the contrast between... Um, Zhao and Philip so much. Photos his realization. Although that was kind of Oscar's accident, like preventing him from fighting. Hmm. Yeah. It was more like Oscar's fault, in a sense. And also because Carmen, or rather the light. Well, yeah, Carmen, I guess. Because the library is Angela's ego. So you could say it like, oh yeah, Carmen. Well, I mean, to be fair, it's all for the good of the library. And like to achieve her goals. So if Philip didn't escape, we wouldn't have had uh, crying children as a better page and book later on. I think I made sure, to, yeah, to beat Philip for on every floor. It's a useful gift. Mm. I think it's more the issue is that oh no no that's the that's the first that's, that's his glasses. True. It's a somewhat not overly tough, but somewhat tough at that point in the game. But yeah, wasn't it? Let me see. 
I don't know. Was it? I did. Lu this was something I was thinking about earlier. Did Lulu also escape during um, the initial fight? One sec. This, I, this is something I was thinking about because it's just funny. Like, um, yeah, Streetlight was. Um, yeah, Lulu. Lulu escaped as well. It's funny, like, um, San and Lulu escaped, yeah. It's just funny to think about how we have three burn characters and f <laughs> and they all escape once during their... Um, yeah, Mars died and Lulu got really upset about that. I was just thinking that it's funny how um, we have three burn characters who just escape. <laughs> Like, this is the third time it's happened with um, Zhao. So, like, Lulu escapes, then obviously gets booked in the next um, reception. But then it's like, we have Philip escape, and then obviously we know what happens with them. The Burn Axe Trio, pretty much. <laughs> it really builds up, like, the, the whole mix it, it does make a big deal of people escaping the library. Like, we have Lulu who escapes, but then obviously just gets um, booked right after. Then we have Philip who escapes, forms an incomplete ego, and then distorts. And then we get Zhao who escapes, forms an incomplete ego, but then gets a full ego. <laughs> it's a funny coincidence. The ma three major brunk has all escaped the library on there. Mm. I feel it's intentional. Like, it's a parallel, pretty much. Like, it feels like the writers really love their parallels. It's like, like, like the most biggest parallel is like Ian and Angela. Because in the mod you tried that takes place in the post game, we had Lulu come back for a bit by the store. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, she actually, like, um, she has potential to have maybe gone eco or something, but she just, she was too weak. We just wrecked her as soon as she came back. Mm. You could reasonably write for her to manifest ego or distortion. Mm -hmm. Especially once she realized, like, ah oh, shit, Mars was my friend all along. Ah. <laughs> and also, Mars had the first book that was really good. It was the. Mars had. What book was it? It was the. It was the first one of the speed dice, wasn't it? It's the first book of a speed die. Yeah, Mars was the first one of the speed dice. <laughs> I agree with Philip and Zhao being foils. Lulu's is coincidence. Mars is the first gold page, yeah. It will try to think is that Philip incredibly had, had incredible potential. If you compare his passive passion to lose further. Oh! Is it? Let's see. Uh, you have Philip's. Uh, volatile passion. Um, this one. To lose further as emotion, emotion based. Or oh, do you mean for crying children? Uh, was it there? Was there an emotion one for Philip? Hold on. Um, speed, novel fabric, blaring brand. Oh, it's any oh oh enemy only. Oh right, he gains power based on. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Enemy on. Oh yeah, that one. That one, that was why I was like, uh, we can do, we can do this real quick. I don't need to fight it. I can just look at it. We're talking about Philip, but we're not even in his... <laughs> Honestly, Philip is such a fun character to talk about. I like him a lot. He's such a fun character to talk about, in all honesty. Walter, Isadora. <laughs> I only have one of each. Whatever, we're strong enough to just wreck them now. Well, let me take a look then. The credence doesn't show the hook office page to Lulu's friends too. Oh, I see. I don't know why that's the case. Interesting. Philip, yeah, he's a really interesting character. Oh yeah, I can just look at it. Hmm, Philip's really popular despite the fact he gets mean. Oh, passion. Gain power by double the current emotion level. Double up to level one. Oh yeah, he's up to level one, so it's still potential, but it's still gain power. Up to the double the current emotion level. Yeah, that's still nuts, so. Yeah, damn. So, like, when he's at full power, it could go up to, like, level 3 at least. Let's say level 3 to balance out the game. But let's say level 5 
if he goes nuts so that's like plus 10 power what if Sonaris for Phillips and fully manifest ego yeah double his level is bonkers the cap is his current skill yeah but he could have so much more gosh I love I like Philip a lot I make I, I even I even made a meme of him as well I posted it on my Twitter <laughs> but like I like him a lot as much as I laugh at him running away I like him a lot that's it all right since we're while we're sick um before we continue the reading um it's something I was wondering about because like you know how um what's it called Rowena, not Rowena, Limbus Company is going to be a gacha game. But then we also have, um, since we have the characters from Rowena all coming back eventually, um, it's just because Roland interfered with the at the last moment that they're just going to come back randomly and random places. Um, I kind of like had thoughts of that as like a gacha system. <laughs> It's like it's like gacha system with the characters coming back from the light, well as books, which is kind of funny. But like, so I was kind of wondering, huh? They could have gone in that direction for Limbus Company. Well, yeah, for Limbus Company, where the gacha is pretty much the characters from Marina and maybe more, and then um, the gacha system is pretty much getting them back. Uh, bit by bit so like with, with no so because it's randomized by the light or whenever they um, respawn let's say it does work as a gacha system but then of course Limbus Company now has a focus on Limbus Company has a focus on a few on a bunch of new characters which is interesting direction let's say but We'll see how it goes. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to add new people to the group. Let's say Philip, for example. Would they have Philip join as a playable character at some point? Or, would, or, or is it going to be like... I mean, to be fair, they can always add new playable characters. But... Um, right now, the focus is like on the, on the group they revealed. Which is kind of like... It's more like rhythm game kind of like gacha system where like well not rhythm game gacha system but like it's common in rhythm games where um you have like a group of characters within every other gacha is an alt is an alt of them rather than int introducing new ones hmm. um red mist gets plus two hmm. tom Re oh tom Re's in the first chapter of leviathan so they have a chance of oh yeah they have been dropped already okay interesting you want to know the characters respawn? Yeah, Leviathan chapter one, and there are two cameos from Marina in that chapter. Interesting. Uh, the fights we see in the gameplay are major events, but by canon, the library never lost a single fight. People often escape to spread the word, perhaps, but no one has ever won their books. Hmm. Oh, true. Yeah, I guess there is like, I guess yeah, it makes sense because like we have general receptions, which does um, supplement as like random encounters or. People coming in but who aren't progressing the plot. Mm. The fact that Philip gets plus two power easy when other people just get plus one. Yeah, Philip is like a lot of potential, but it's a shame that he was obviously put through the ringer of like going with Oswald and a lot of other bad stuff. He just lost it, yeah. And well, hopefully when he comes back from being booked, Maybe the part of um, him that was um, the crying children is like his like negative aspects, or at least hopefully he does. Cause he it's like what, what was it? The um, was it like one third or like one tenth was the crying children? He probably won't come back. Uh, I mean, we have we have the incomplete book of the crying children like yeah we have unstable page so we still have part of his book yes yeah, the speak no evil part mm. so yeah one third of him so at least maybe he can come back in two thirds maybe part of his personality is affected or anything yeah he still has hear and see but no speak no evil so maybe I don't know with speak no evil being gone but there's also ways you can theorize it 
Who knows? I'd like to see him back. You think? I think the Philip we find the whole. Oh, mm, maybe. True. Because to be fair, because we did restore the book, it could have been the full Philip. True. Yeah, he comes back with like avoiding his emotions and personality. Maybe. I know. I just. I'm. I'm. I'm on the hope that we get to see Philip again. <laughs> I love how we're talking about Philip. We're not even at his point yet. <laughs> At least, apparently, even distortion isn't a point of no return. If one could somehow help them overcome, probably just more difficult because you always have to beat down their trauma, like the suppressions and realizations. Yeah. It just really depends because, like, Argalia is dead, dead. <laughs> Argalia is dead, for sure. Well, you could also argue that they became part of the light and then they can always come back somehow. Like, let's say when like the patron librarians they could become part of the light and then they could come back at some point <laughs> who knows <laughs> uh, Moses fixes distortions like basically giving them therapy oh who's Moses oh from Leviathan that's that's the guy that's, that's the main character's name or one of them how apt <laughs> there's also a mod with story where Zhao distorted um, quite plausible in your opinion, because Zhao managed to manifest ego because she has mirrors to talk first, yeah. Oh, Moses distortion detective. Interesting. Alright, looking forward to that. Maybe, yeah, maybe... I don't know, because I think... I need to reread, because I... Um, I read a little bit about the whole thing surrounding the ending, the original ending. And, and like, some of the comments from the developers was stuff that I thought was recent, but then it's stuff they could always backtrack on I'll, we'll go over that when we read the ending because um, I it was that Twitter thing that was posted underneath the in the description of the video oh Moses is mentioned in the Oscar book okay interesting Moses defends himself using their smoking pipe ego so just using that ego to channel emotions which is which is useful in ego to in, ego communication oh interesting interesting nice the ensemble is dead because they all got burned instead of getting booked. Jury's out on Phillips as part of him got booked and part of him ended up in the ensemble. Yeah. Can people, Moses can restore people from before they distort physically. Okay, interesting. So maybe, maybe there's still hope for Cat, at least. <laughs> That'd be nice. Maybe, um, what's it called? Um, yeah, it'll be nice to see Cat again. I like them a lot. Yeah, the whole, you know, obviously hiding your emotion thing and then getting attached to people again and then getting heartbroken by the sacrifice was like, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I have a bunch of... I have three avatars I use and I made this avatar because I really love... I really love the art style in um, Lobotomy Corporation. I love the art style in that. It's really... I love the art style. And so I wanted to make an avatar for myself for when I played Lobotomy Corp. But then I'm now using this for Rowena. And I use it sometimes in other streams because it's my most refined avatar, I guess you could say. <laughs> I have two others I use for some other streams as well. Check them out. Wink. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there were some cases like Car Cameraman and Mermaid that were distorted that he restored. Oh, interesting. Oh, the mermaid. Wait, do you mean... Is it is it like some other mermaid? Or do you mean the mermaid from Oswald? Interesting. Alright, the Stortion Detective seems really interesting then. I guess it, like, is incomplete, but there's obviously going to be more. They want to make it a game. Do you think the gacha element of Limbs is because of the light? Um, I'm not sure. Um, I mentioned that because, um... <laughs> Cognition filter. Ha! <laughs> you could say that. You could say that. Um, uh, no, it's more like I was mentioning the light people returning was that I was thinking it could work as a distort as a gacha system, but it seems the gacha system for Limbus is going to be egos rather than um, light. Well, rather than new characters, rather it's going to be um, based on ego. Like we have. Like, I've only seen like fourth match flame um, as the as one of the character egos from the pre-registration campaign. So I'm looking forward to seeing 
other ones, especially for my favorites. Like I want to see like the phrase Letitia's um, a bunch of others as well. And also, I'm interested to see at, at some point they're going to be introducing. Um, I feel at some point they have to introduce, you know, the big character egos, like Red Mist. You have to get like surely Red Mist ego will be in the gacha one day. That would be really funny. As in, I could imagine that being like a, cele a celebration ego. And hey there, thanks, yeah. We finished the game last stream and now I'm just like, we're gonna read through the things. Uh, not likely, but I'm sure they can find some way to explain it. Honestly, it's a gacha game. <laughs> they can find some way to explain why we can use Red Mist Ego, because it's like, you have all these iconic characters. Like, we, by all means, the abnormality egos. Um, by all means, the abnormality egos. But like, yeah, maybe at least nothing there could be, um, could be, yeah, at least, yeah, nothing there could be at least the closest thing to Red Mist. But I feel like, I don't know, because it's a gacha game, it does, um, it does, um, it does, I don't know, it feels like they have to capitalize on some nostalgia at some point. <laughs> it's like, it's like, for example, if you had F Go. Um, fake Grand Order without any of the older characters or new, or just new ones. Yeah, we could. Yeah, like Black Silence as well. We could get like um, let's 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 roll. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah, we could get like a Black Silence page as well, as in a gacha with Black Silence. Yeah, I might do. I might do a watch along of the trailers. Um, this is more like a chill reading and doing. I do plan on watching the alternate, en the old ending for this game. I could, if there's time, do Limbus trailer watch along. Or maybe next stream. We'll see how long this takes to do credenza reading. That'll be fun. <laughs> Leviathan, they go to these identities the Limbus people use. Oh, I see. One of them did get the black. Okay, cool. So we did get the black silence identity. And with iconic lines and nearly doing. Damn. Okay, right. Okay, fine. They were right. They were right on that. <laughs> They were right away on getting Black Silence involved with Limbus Company, in a sense. <laughs> Alright, cool, looking forward to that. Okay, yeah, getting doing free also, especially I looked a bit at the gameplay a little bit again. And it's like the animations are much more refined. Um read Wonderlab I read Wonderlab already. I read it already. <laughs> I read it already. Um, Distortion Detective, what, just read on stream? Mm, maybe. I'll see. <laughs> It'll be fun, at least. Just because I, I want to try doing some streams that are not just games, just playing games. What's this, What's on stream? Maybe. We're doing credentials right now, but that sounds like a plan, honestly. Because <laughs> I do want to try doing some streams that are not just me playing games, but also not just simply reaction uh, streams either, but like, yeah, maybe I'll do a watch along of the trailers and stuff. We'll see, we'll see. That seems fun. A lot of warnings in the Limbus trailer. Hmm. What do you mean, like, in, like, a warning, like, aesthetically, you mean? But yeah. And also, Arbiter. Who knows? I don't. I know. It's too far. That seems really high, high end to get, like, an Arbiter in the gacha. Oh, content warning. Okay, interesting. Like, what do you mean by content warning? Oops. Alright. Now we're on to... <laughs> we only did rats. <laughs> and we're nearly an hour in. Okay. Oh, con... Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's read... Alright. I seem like also for like... Since now that I've finished the game, I can now finally click on <laughs> the recommended videos on <laughs> my channel uh, for, for Rowena now that I've finished the game. And it's like... Finn is like used as like the like the like the punching bag. Oh yeah yeah yeah, I could do that. I could do that. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah, I do I do want to watch the Roland the Jellica video. I haven't watched it yet. I want to watch that. I don't mind doing that. I mean I mean when I say 
I don't want to do solely reaction, more like I don't want it to be my main thing. <laughs> like it's fine here and there. I just don't want to. I don't want to do it for like everything for my whole streams. Like as in, I don't want it to be my only content. If that makes sense. <laughs> I don't mind doing a stream or so here and there of it. So yeah. Um, I was actually planning on doing that, actually. Um, if there's maybe t maybe tomorrow or if the condensers can get gone get read through all of the day, I will watch the Angelica Roland video here as well. Because I mentioned also at the start, I do also I'm tempted by the idea of also going through some of the art book as well. Reaction content just because we're waiting for Limbus. True. <laughs> True, true, true. And it's not like, to be fair, I'm not, I'm not, I don't plan on doing, like, reaction content forever. <laughs> like, from now on, I'm a reaction channel. <laughs> no more gameplay of any games. Just reacting to stuff. <laughs> and also, I, yeah, it's just also because I do want to try other stuff besides just playing games. Like, I've done drawing streams, and but that's the only non-gaming streams I've done. I want to try other streams as well. <laughs> Variety is good. Mm -mm -mm. Alright, let's read, like, yeah. I was about to say, like, yeah, with Finn, it's funny, like, I watched that Furioso for real video that I saw in my recommendations, like, what if Furioso was the actual dice? So, like, each roll was a dice. <laughs> and it was, like, it was just beating up Finn. <laughs> like, I feel like Finn is, like, based on a few videos I've seen, Finn is, like, the meme of the community. Um, <laughs> Finn is like the meme of the community where he's just a punching bag. <laughs> like, I guess it's, it's like just making jokes of like how he just died instantly when we in our in his reception. But like, <laughs> this guy's the punching bag, pretty much. All right, it's been a while, sis. Actually, I talked to you sometime. The meme boss. The, oh yeah, the first solo. <laughs> right, I was like, oh no, this guy's strong. Like, the first time I fought him was like, oh shit. Is he gonna actually gonna kill us? Because he's solo. No. <laughs> he just died. <laughs> I mean, I get, I get why. Story-wise, it really works. It adds weight to the whole... We're merciless. The library is merciless. And like... It's a cruel world out there, etc, etc. But yeah. Uh, actually, I talked to you some time ago. By myself, of course. It sounds like I talked to you some time ago. Wait. It's been a- WAIT! It's been a while, sis. I talked to you some time ago. Today's not gonna be the same days before. Oh, no, no, never mind. I was, I was thinking, like, um, he's, he thinks Carmen is his sister. But I think it's more like he's talking to... Um, he's just talking to... Um, I don't know, is, it, is his sister dead? I assume. <laughs> Alright, cool, cool. It's been a while, sis. Actually, I talked to you some time ago. By myself, of course. It sounds a bit... Yeah, talking to himself, pretty much, yeah. This is him talking to himself. But I'm fine. Today's not going to be the same day as the days before. I have good news. I finally joined an office by this guy called Yun, and finally, be yeah, officially became a fixer. You're proud to see your little, your precious little brother, grow up and make it, aren't you? Isn't it cool? I, I told you, there's no need to worry about me. He makes a mess, a mess, a message. Oh, I see. Could be. Oh, about Yun's office. I think it's a really nice place. No, I'm not lying. Our operator Yun is a bit cold, but he teaches me lots of things. There's also Eri, who's my senior. I've yet to be friends with her. Seems really a good person too. For now, they're giving me small jobs like searching for lost cats. Maybe they're worried I'm too inexperienced to handle tougher stuff? It's not really fancy, but if I start out with a small task like this and work up slowly, I'm gonna be a great fixer one day, yeah? My heart is already pumping with excitement. Hmm, it could be like a diary too, yeah. When I become a proud and dashing fixer, I'll buy a nest migration ticket and get a nice new home for you. I could buy my gear. Oh no, his sister is alive somewhere then. I could buy my gear at a workshop thanks to your help and that and all that. Well, that's not all. You always looked after me, sis. It's kind of embarrassing to talk about this. Anyway, don't worry about me. I do the things you want to do. 
I know you are always too busy caring for me to pursue your own interests. You offered me to give me a prosthetic body, or even a minor procedure the last time you met, but I'm doing fine without any of that stuff. And you got money to earn for yourself. I'm tired, so I'll be going now. I went around the whole town chasing a cat all day. Night, sis. I hope we see each other again. Alright, interesting. So he's a sister. He really, like, Finn, like, maybe we'll meet his, maybe we'll meet his sister at some point. Who knows? Because, like, it seems his sister is, like, kind of rich. If she can afford doing all of these prosthetics. Well, to be fair, you have you have these guys with prosthetics, but they're poor as hell. But, like, it seems that his sister has a fair amount of money, at least, to, like, say, oh, yeah, we can give you a new limb. To get stronger or not. Alright, so maybe maybe we'll meet his sister at some point. But yeah, I mentioned this the first time upon meeting Finn. But it really feels like in another story. Or at least, I guess you could say in his own story. Finn is like those um, anime protagonists, in a sense. Like the main character who like starts from the... He starts from such a like a... Yeah, he's such a small, ordinary, but precious tale of kindness. It's just bitter to see that we snuffed it. Mm. At least he's going to come back eventually from a book. But yeah, Finn has that anime main character energy. Like, they start from the bottom and then it's like... You know, like the whole optimistic um, main character sort of thing? <laughs> Philip was the protagonist. <laughs> There's lots of protagonists in this game, huh? There's a lot of them, honestly. You can see, honestly, I mentioned this also when I was playing, and it's like, it feels like a good chunk of the characters could just be um, protagonists in another game, another story. Which makes sense. It's, it's, it's one of the themes of this thing that we're just stuffing lives in the city when they all have their own lives and stories to tell, which is tragic. But at the same time, it's nice that we're gonna come back eventually. I mean, kind of a plumber. <laughs> I mean, maybe plumbing will be one of the uh, fixer jobs at some point. <laughs> but yeah, he feels like those like shonen anime protagonists, like so upbeat and like, I'm gonna be a great fixer one day. I'm gonna be Hokage, etc. <laughs> um, but yeah, also like. I, this came to me right away, the whole nest migration ticket. And I just thought of Roland, and it's like, oof. <laughs> like, he, like Roland really wanted that migration ticket after having taken part in the smoke war for him and Angelica. When it's like, nope, even that's not a simple thing. Like, Finn is super optimistic to um, think that he can get a migration ticket. To get to a nest that's for sure he's like super optimistic about this who knows maybe one day we were protagonists in our own lives especially finn <laughs> they ever had their own streams and stories and ronald was apparently begging angela to realize in the lyrics mm, mm. yeah pretty much it's like it's essentially like the mountain of books is like a mountain of corpses you're just trot like i think the books making them turn into books sort of like desensitizes Angela and even us we don't think about that stuff right away but yeah we're pretty much just killing them well they're back now as books like Hokma even said that they're not quite dead yet they're like um, in stasis until Angela chooses what to do with them but yeah I really I listened to Gone Angel a fair amount of, I see a lot actually <laughs> I listen to God Angels, God Angels a lot, especially now since I couldn't properly hear the lyrics during the fight. But yeah, I also I love the line um, with um, um, "You've always been human" because um, your desires mean you've always been human, or however that went. It's like Roland does care about Angela, even when he's pissed off. He does care about her, and like he does. It's sweet that he does. Like he always did see Angela as human because of her desires. Doesn't care about her being a machine, like physically, or like because of her super memory. 
like she had desires and he saw her as human enough so that's really cool it's time you progress with the story new tower of books is added oh shit really let's take a look oh as in as in like during the background see we just sing do a single fight well no i don't i don't think finn was a was a solo he was oh he was solo cool let's take a look and see oh is it you mean you mean deeds oh you mean oh you mean deed which one uh new tower of books is added oh you mean these i didn't notice in the, in the first playthrough Oh, is it when I first played, huh? They added more of these, you mean? Damn. Was it in the later resistance or even at the end of choices that Angela admitted? She hoped that she could reach her dream and she closed her eyes to the suffering one last time. Hmm. And yeah, it really adds, uh, like, how she always had her eyes closed, but most of the time, during Lobotomy Corp. And she closed her... Hmm. All right, but yeah, I see. So these pillars get added every time, huh? These fret level. Oh, it's fret level. I see. Interesting. Actually, uh, uh, speaking of fret level, there's something um, I realized also afterwards. Anyway, goodbye. Is Abno fight at the Tower of Books? I see. Interesting. That's cool. That's a nice detail. I didn't realize that. <laughs> then again, it's because I didn't use Keta for a long time. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't use Keta for a long time because we were stuck with these three. But like, while everyone else progressed, Keta was stuck. Um, being really weird as a floor like all of these are like defensive abilities like ur well, urging scars and blood they're all defensive but they don't exactly add anything else learning is i get learning now since we used it during realization but it's still a really weird card lies i guess it's more like if you're using a a free deck and just use lies to um make free cost super low rng curiosity is also terrible <laughs> i mean i guess if you have no draw power but curiosity has nothing to it frankly there's nothing <laughs> it's such a nothing card further beats is the biggest power gain but it's 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 like one of those you know you have to kill fast with it um, Keto was a slow bloomer, yeah, because it's like, and then it's capped out in the post game where nothing else happens. <laughs> we, we don't even get to use these in the reverb ensemble distortion. Yeah, pulsation's good, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a risky card, but it's really good. Mm -mm -mm. It's more that, um, curiosity is good. Well, you only get it if you're curious about what it does. Oh, what? Is there more? Is there more to curiosity? than what, me, what what meets the eye or is there is that it is there more to curiosity than i'm thinking or is it like is it like a hidden effect but yeah i think also keter suffered from um like not having a focus at least with malkuth you could focus on status effects um and getting hit and burn or like using ashes um with your sword he's focused on blunt He's so easy to he's so easy to use. Like I checked out that speed run I saw, <laughs> but um, I looked a little bit at it, and it's like, yeah. Once you have, um, he uses your sod, and also just using like solemn lament, blunt damage boost, bam, 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 <laughs> as the final, as like just carrying the floor. Because I saw your sod against black silence for the speed run it was like just using solemn lament and just 
getting Roland destroyed. <laughs> like even during the um, fourth phase, where he gets swords down, he doesn't even reach that because he's a solid lament. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> like Roland, like your sword has a really strong focus on blunt, which makes him super easy to use. Can this focus a stagger? Kind of. Um, I guess pale hands, but I guess three to ten stagger damage is potentially nice. But then, I guess so. I think it's more like I lean towards decks being um, a deck build. Oh yeah, sort of frost as well. Stagger. True, 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 true. And kiss. Yeah. I guess it's more like I lean towards like early game. I lean towards early to mid game. I lean towards. Um, builds that tell me what deck to build for it like let's say like blunt build a blunt deck like focus on blunt you focus on block you focus on on pierce that was a really easy way for me to parse all the pages we got I feel like maybe I, I guess I could have used Keta more I just just thrown like smoke on them or something Curiosity is good because in early game you don't have much page draw Oh, true, true, true. Early game is good, to be fair, yeah. But yeah, after yeah, after Roland gets his gloves, um, it's so much better. I mean, everyone else supports him or just, just extra power. Does have a, yeah, it doesn't have a major focus on anything, like Roland. True, it's just a jack of all trades, like Roland having all these weapons, but like none of them focus on a specific thing. True, true, I see what you mean. Hmm. And then, of course, it's held back by having the final Abno right at the end of the game. Sorry about that. <clears throat> um, yeah, and also stagger from guilt. So I could see it being a stagger deck, a stagger focused thing. Stagger them quickly and then just go Furioso on them. Yeah, true. I think it's just because Keter just develops so late in game. He's just so late. <laughs> it develops so late in the game that we don't get a chance to use them. Capstone and Ego Page is only finally coming in at the post game. Yeah, that's the big issue. Like, it comes so late. Oh, you can use normal. You can normally use Roland versus Red Mist. True, true, true. You can use Black Silence Roland against Red Mist. True. Oh yeah, ben, oh yeah, because right, Gabura's weakness, well, Red Mist's weakness is Stagger, so you could use Roland again. True. I guess post game is more for like experimenting and bunsies and mods. All right, back to Canard. <laughs> I'm still in Canard. All right, um, Eri. You have lots of things to prepare before you can jump into the fix of business. Starting with choosing equipment, you need clothes to protect your body accessory. You'll protect your bodily accessories, etc. Before any of that, body augmentation comes first. There's no point having masterful skills or fancy equipment if your body can't keep up, you know? And training hard isn't gonna do it. There's a limit to training your body, and the fittest people, the fittest body is still no match for the mechanical prosthetics of bionic organs. You gotta be able to keep your body intact to do anything, so you're pretty much forced to spend a fortune on it. Oh, I see. This this um this foreshadows Brother of Iron. This foreshadows Brotherhood of Iron in a sense. And also, it does teach. It does tell us about how widely extensive these things are. You need a little more play with Keter to understand how it works. True, true. I guess I haven't given given Keter a fair chance, really. There's a ton of there's tons of methods to enhance your body. Exoskeletons, bionic surgeries, nano tattoos, prosthetic body parts, you name it. Deciding what workshop tech to employ is up to preference and purpose. Some someone insane muscular strength that could carry them on carry a pole power pole one handed. Others want ludicrous speed, quick enough to skip over multiple blocks in a split second. It's so diverse it could go on forever. You need any ability, they got you covered. The only hurdle is money. In the city, money is what gets you power. That's why the first thing we notice when we assess our foes is how much they spent on their bodies. Oh, of course, some technologies are patented by closed groups like certain syndicates or wings are hard to get your hands on. Even if you have all the cash in the world, 
This is how everyone in the city can start to a library in the first place. Even normal clothes are enhanced. Armor and their bodies are likely enhanced. Yeah, true. Good point. It's also, yeah, Ruina, well, the city is pretty much cyberpunk in a sense. It's cyberpunk, but not too gaudy in a sense. Like, it's cyberpunk, but not neon lights everywhere. Cyber cyberpunk, yeah. Grim dark cyberpunk. I see, like, I don't fully vibe with, like, the whole neon aesthetic of cyberpunk, but, like, um, Ruina, Ruina cyberpunk, I can vibe with. I don't mind that. Yeah, it's like, Ar yeah, like Ark Knights. <laughs> it's sort of that kind of, like, aesthetic. Hmm, that kind of darkness. Not like neon cyberpunk. Hmm. It's why Finn is so weak. He doesn't have anything, so his health is stagger. Oh, right, yeah, because Finn, Finn is like, I'm gonna train. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm not getting. I'm not getting the prosthetic enhancement or whatever his sister was offering him. <laughs> mm. Like I really appreciate the setting so much in this game, a lot. Let's look at me though. It took a teensy little procedure for me to lift. Oh, no wonder, because <laughs> it's like this like chainsaw blade. Lift this humongous weapon with one hand. This is the kind of power you can get, you see. Body augmentation is more of a necess necessity than an option these days. So you want to study up on that. You don't want to stay a weakling when everyone's getting their augmentations now, do you? Let's see. I was thinking about this. I was thinking about this with, like, Brotherhood of Iron. But, like, I'll say it now. It's really... There's really something... Um... Yeah, Finn is like level 1 protagonist, pretty much. I love the irony in this game with like, you have Angela who wants to become human, but then you have all the humans who want to become machines, or like, they progress slowly and slowly into machines. I love that irony so much. I love that irony. Finn is how a shonen protagonist would work in a cyberpunk world, pretty much. <laughs> But yeah, I love the irony so much of um, Angela wanting to be human while everyone else forsakes their humanity bit by bit. You got like these fools <laughs> who can't even eat. As I was thinking about what's his face, freaking um, uh, Nemo, <laughs> like his head. Um, Finn is the classic RPG protagonist at the start of the journey, being tossed into a level 50 dungeon. Pretty much. <laughs> I love how the human, non-humans and guests have uh, better sometimes than our real, our real, like, real humans. Mm. I'm going to train to become stronger. I'm going to punch you through your chest. <laughs> yeah, trust. Pretty much. Like, I guess technically the only training is like grinding money and, you know, living the grind of money. <laughs> Of like in the city, huh? That's the way you farm. Get money, get get augments, get stronger. Finn was bungling in many ways. He had no talent. He refused to take modification procedures. Yep, exactly. All he armed himself was with a tiny weapon. Oh yeah, it's just a blade. I didn't exactly dislike him. They say a delicate person like him is nothing sort of a sort of pathetic here. He had a passion, regardless, and he was going to be our colleague from now on. Besides, it's not too it's not too common to see such a passionate fellow in the grueling mess of a city. He was an interesting one. Yori can canonically cut through cement, so she's kind of a I think she has to be somewhat augmented <laughs> by this point. I think yeah, they have to be like people aren't just superhumans in this world. They have to be like either you're a librarian with power. Or you're just... You have to be augmented somehow. Then, why did I exploit him? Exploit is a rather harsh word to describe it. If you ask me. A sloppy kid like him. Yeah, everyone is, like, is augmented except for Finn. And probably the rats. Because <laughs> they have nothing to them. Um, a sloppy kid like him would have gotten killed anyway. 
abducted in the back streets and fading away while witnessing his innards ripped, getting ripped from his body. And that's one of the tamer examples I could give. In this city, worse things are happening here, there on a daily basis. If he didn't die there, he could have died a much more terrible fate somewhere else. Isn't that right? Never mind. This is all about rationalization. Think what you want. Yeah. It's at least he died to the to a book to becoming a book, so then he can get he can come back. She was literally a singularity experimental subject, apparently, so who knows what else he picked up. Mm. Yeah, Purple Terror is nuts. <laughs> I see. I mean, to be fair, Yun's Yun having Finn 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 in his office was still a nicer solution. Yeah. It's nice to have been getting torn apart by the sweepers, pretty much. That's nice. Yun's office page fixer page one. Uh, the society of fixtures is built entirely upon meritocracy. The greater you are, the higher you climb. On the other hand, you don't have the capability. You should be thankful for any organization that accepts, and stay, accepts you and stay low. Thing is, capability can mean many things. For some, it could be physical strength. Others, superior intellect. It seems kind of unfair to me that they make arbitrary evaluations of a concept that can be taken in so many different ways. Not that I think I have some hidden talent that deserves a better grade or anything, though. I do feel a bit upset, but I think I'm at, I'm at the right place. The jobs I usually do are looking for lost cats at night. You can tell how low my spot is, yeah? I'm not a huge fan of the jobs I'm doing right now, of course. I mean, sure, I wouldn't say no to some flashier requests. I just accept it to carry on in my life. Yeah, ow. I mean, yeah, I guess how do you evaluate fixer grades? Like, if some do our strength, I guess fixers fight more often than not, to be honest. So I guess having some strength is good, even then. Uh, did I read PT? Not yet. Uh, I'll read it when we, when we... I'm going down in descending order. Oh, PT is long. <laughs> I'm reading in descending order. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's cool. Uh, Mo. I frankly don't recommend replacing your entire body with a machine. It's really a cheap one. Aside from basic issues such as vulnerability to damage and creaky noises, cheap prosthetic bodies compromise too much. You're basically giving up all joys of life. Oh, I see. All oh, right, true. Right. The Brotherhood of Iron... It kind of, um... It kind of, um... You know, what's it called? Uh, which link? Uh, which link? I don't know if YouTube chat catches links, but feel free. Oh, right. Roland says he's an information government combat specialist. True. Then again, he is like, he is, yeah, feel free to post the link. I don't know if YouTube chat has an auto thing stopping links, though. Uh, what kind of link? Um, but yeah. Hmm. Roland is more information gatherer than combat specialist. I mean, true. But he could also be lying. Like, he did lie <laughs> a fair amount in the story. Or at least hid the truth. Then again, he's, his, his, his big strength, like, his major power boost was the Black Fixer gloves. I mean, Black Silence gloves. So, I guess I can see why. He's really... Roland is a charismatic character. He's like, he can talk his way out of things and all that stuff. So, I'd say he's pretty good at information gathering. Like, even like his stuff with Angela. Like, you could tell he's good at getting information, like becoming friendly with people, and then all that stuff. He had a very, very thorough account to hunt. Oh yeah, true. He had to like go around seeing like, who's doing sus stuff? Oh, this guy is doing gear stuff? Must be related to the pianist. Um, oh, this guy is making puppets? must be ready to the pianist <laughs> and just yeah I see I see I see mm, good point um, I don't know what to show what uh, that showed what to show or not oh okay uh, I see well if you uh, you can post in the comments as well uh, at some point if you want especially with a cheap one aside yeah uh, yeah right yeah because it's funny like this pretty much it mirrors Angela's current predicament of being a machine. She can't eat. 
and all that, and all that stuff. On the wiki, you can find... Um, oh, right. Yun Office, page 2 and 3. All right, I'll do, I'll, I'll do that now, actually. Um, let me. I'll just finish reading Mo first. Can you imagine? Oh, yeah, because you mentioned, right, there was some that's not on, the, not on here. You can't taste anything when you can eat... When you eat delicious food, you can't feel the softness and coziness of a good bed. You don't even feel anything stuck to your body, be it a piece of paper or a knife. The head remembers those feelings but can't experience them again. That's kind of actually worse than Angela, to be honest. Because at least Angela does not know how food tastes or... Yeah, she doesn't know how it, t how it feels. But like, with, with these guys, they threw it all away. <laughs> They know how it feels, and they know what food tastes like, but then, now they're fucked. There are ways to overcome it though. You can buy a desire stim stimulation chip, and plug it into your brain, inject medications or use other methods. They're just absurdly expensive. You're better off saving up for a more expensive body if you want your senses back. I guess they could always get- yeah, true. They could get it back, I guess, if they spend more, but like, damn. High quality? Pricey bodies come with sensory organs. As I always say, it's all about money in this world. Jeez. Alright, let me uh, check on page one and two then. Uh, it's on the wiki, yeah. Uh, I think it's on the wiki. Okay, yeah, I see. Yeah, I see now. Um, all right. This is uh, I'm reading um the Yun's uh Yun office fixer page two. The back streets are alleyways densely spread across the city. They're entangled like spider webs. Hold on, let me just move it over here. Um, the back streets are always densely uh are always are alleyways densely spread across the city. They're entangled like spider webs and spread far and wide. I'll, actually, I'll post a link if anyone wants to follow. I can post links myself. At least. Um, and they're populated with all sorts of people. Wait, uh, it's very impossible for one to know every single thing that occurs in the back streets, and they're populated with all sorts of people. Examine towns where people preparing for entrance exams in hopes of getting to a nest have, ga have gathered. Syndicates and fixers firstly looking for business. Rock shops that benefit from their conflicts and crafting um, various tools and gadgets. It's a disorderly lump of all kinds of desires for wealth and dreams. Hold is the final favourite. Mm, yeah, I think, yeah. For my favourite Sephira, Hod is my favourite favourite. Um, I would say um, Tifereth has really gone higher higher up because of Marina though. Like, um, Lobotomy Corp, I like her, but I could tell she has still some ways to go. But like, Tifereth in Marina also shot up up high as well. I really like the whole trying to find um, meaning in life stuff, or like expectations for that sort of thing. That was her thing, yeah. And also, what's it called? Tiff Zodia was just way too fun. <laughs> so it really, like her realizing the realization with the magical girls and also thing, um, was a uh, really fun. And then, yeah, picked up another arc of development, trying to move on without Enoch, you could say. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Coincidental, but <laughs> blonde. Yeah, I see what you mean. But yeah, um, yeah, I like, yeah, Tiff, like, I think, I feel like Tiff got the most, um, got the most, uh, development of the Sephira, that's for sure, of the, pa well, patron Sephira, etc, 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 but yeah, um, <laughs> the most attractive Sephira, um, let's see, Let's see. As in personal taste. Yeah, Tiff has gathered a, yeah, a lot of wisdom and maturity, yeah. It's like, I love that she's like the balancing act between 
um, <laughs> applies clown makeup. <laughs> but yeah, Hold is still my favorite. I just I wish she got more, but I still like what she had in this game though. At least I I just wish it wasn't Greta she was paired with. Why Greta? I get why Greta, but I'm just like Greta who had the I'm gonna I'm ranting again. <laughs> like Greta had the least like development of the ensemble, but then it's like sure she's with Hod. No, <laughs> why why Greta? <laughs> like. I, I ranted about this already. I get why they're paired up with the story, but at the same time, it's like at least give Greta some build up so that there's more meaning to their encounter. Like Philip and Malkov, Chef's Kiss, that was brilliant. I love that. Oswald and Tiff, I love that. That was so good. Pluto and Hokma, so good. Two simps fighting. <laughs> but like, everyone else got something. Like, even, like, Tanya was also kind of simple, but it does work for Gabura and also just strength fighting the strongest. But, like, I don't know. Greta, I like ish. As in, I just wish she had more development. Spiritual sex in the next game give, be given better food. <laughs> I do like Hod, though, as well. Um, but she is Tifrith, Hod of the Sephiroth. The middle of the mildness between severity and mercy. Hmm, pretty much. Alright, let's get uh, back to that question on attractive. There's a lot of characters in this game. <laughs> um, maybe I'll come with an answer for like general characters as it goes, but for attractiveness... Uh, like personal taste. Bremen, yeah, Bremen worked with Neza because it was built up throughout the game with about how um, the whole art stuff and like destroying yourself over art, over your own art was not how, like Neza appreciates art, but he doesn't appreciate the fact that people are killing themselves in the name of art. And it's like, no, live, live, don't, don't get yourself killed and fuck your life up. <laughs> um, in terms of attractiveness, uh, the most attractive guy. Um, like from the Sephira only, from Sephira only. Maybe I'll come up with an answer. Maybe I'll come up with an answer. Um, when I finish the credenza for the other characters, but for the most attractive guy, I'd say. Hokma. <laughs> I don't know. I like the whole, um, you know, the whole silver fox sort of thing with him. And he looks, he looks much more cooler in this game compared to. He still looks cool in the Bothy Corp. But yeah, um, from the others, mm, yeah, Bina's like maybe Bina, um, maybe in terms of like attractiveness. Though, how to say. But yeah, honestly, it's hard to decide. There's different tastes, like, there's different angles you can go about it. Hokuma Age as well, pretty much. <laughs> like, what's it called? Like, Hod's my favorite, but I wouldn't say it's because... Well, she's more like, I don't know, Hod for me is just cute. I can't, like, if you mean attractiveness, but like, in terms of, like, hotness. Um, but yeah, Hokuma is... <laughs> oh, I say Hogma. I mean, like Hod is more. I know. I, I just see. I see Hod more as cute. <laughs> She's just cute. And same with thing with Malkov. Honestly, like I like I like Malkov's positive energy a lot. <laughs> it's why she was up there from just from Lobotomy Corp. Like I do. Can I can kind of relate in a sense to the whole. Um never give up attitude or at least I find that really inspiring she's like the whole en energetic character in anime same for being because you're a <laughs> but yeah honestly they're all um, you could they they, this, yeah, they cover a lot of tastes let's say you have like Chezed who's like or like Neza and Chezed I feel are in the same circle of like um Brolin, yeah, Brolin is like the base type, like, tired office worker look. <laughs> um, I feel like 
Neza and Chezed are in the same circle of like, um, how to describe it? Like, they have this like lazy guy energy. Like, what kind of character was like that again? I can't, like, I guess, like, with Roland, I'd say the closest thing to him is like, you know, Reagan, Reagan from Mob Psycho. I feel that's the closest thing to Roland ish in a sense but yeah easy going laid back yeah i'd say um 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 my mind blanked yeah yeah that's pretty much yeah reagan yeah reagan makes me think with roland honestly he has that charismatic but also just like dead inside look feeling a bit though reagan is not as dead inside as roland <laughs> at least <laughs> Well, then again, they both have... Yeah, that's it. Roland and Reagan both have con man energy. <laughs> but yeah, um, Neza and Chezed have that laid-back, lazy, laid-back, easygoing energy to them. That, hmm. Well, yeah, Sod is like that kind of like strict... Um, not emo, but like strict type. Malkov is that, like, if you want energy, that's Malkov for you. Like... It's just, I don't know, it's really nice. <laughs> um, Gibora is that obviously like, damn. She's like, is she six foot? No, that's, no, it's, no. But Chezid's taller than her. But she has like that, how to say, strong energy to her. Like, damn, beat me up. Sort of, <laughs> sort of thing to her that people are into. Bina has that like, yeah. Um, how to say, goth? energy <laughs> goth girl not goth but like brooding and like yeah to be fair Bina is kind of like the mother of the group while Hockma's the dad <laughs> yeah I, that really stood out in the Bosme Corp let's say in, even with the condition filter they won't hide that <laughs> anyway um, like you put before, Tenez, Cheza, and Hokbar are the pillar of mercy, while Hod, Gebur, and Bina are the pillar of severity. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. I, I didn't see that deep for the whole. So I remember I did read a little bit about this tree of the the, the um, tree of life thing uh, with the Sephira and the meaning behind it. I read a little bit about it, but I didn't read too in depth. But yeah, I see, I see. So there's also pillars as, lo as well as just the usual branches of the tree. And like, yeah, um, Nez, yeah, Tifereth is like the middle with like the one who brings balance to it all. Especially with the two on the left and right. Mm, I see. What was Atzilof again meaning? I forgot it was. Anyway, we've really sidetracked from <laughs> uh, your office, huh? Um, alright. Let me finish off page two. People who think fixers are good guys who fight off bad guys here. But we're just humans in reality. We're simply doing their jobs to make a living. Some clients... Okay, I'll just say this. I just love how the tone just shifts like that. Like, like just like the tone just shifts. <laughs> anyway, this is quite the stream so far. This is fun. <laughs> we're simply doing their jobs to make a living. Some clients look at us with sparkly eyes like we seem fine to you, but things get troublesome if we don't fulfill their requests. They give us a disappointed look, your profanities at us. Down turn into rude customers before leaving. Hmm. Perfect send-off. Ha! <laughs> uh, whilst down in the middle is the pillar of madness that bounces the two. Malkov, your sword and Tiff, in particular as the heart. Well, Malkov and your sword are the pillars of Oh I see. Tiff in places a heart that is connected to all the other Sephira bar Keter and Malkov. Oh yeah, because Malkov is at the is at the very bottom. Right. Right, because in the bottom core is reversed. But like, yeah, Keter is at the top while Malkov is at the bottom in reality. <clears throat> I see, so right. We did yeah, because fixers are like they're more like the problem solvers. They're like the ones who do stuff over people. They're the handymen, pretty much. Page 3. A hotshot fixer gets all the push they can get from the office. 
and office housing competent fixtures can get sponsorships from associations, wings or workshops. The same can be said for individual fixers. The spicy ones are sought after by many firms, but that won't be you guys. Most of us have, per have to purchase equipment of our own budget. Insane things happen in the city, and even rats could tear you a new one if you hadn't got any useful gadgets or procedures. Yeah, I guess... I guess Finn could honestly kill... As in, the rats could kill Finn. <laughs> Finn would die to the rats. Honestly, in that way, I'm deeply confused why Tiff's department in Lobotomy Corp didn't have passages to every other department. Uh, I guess for balance purposes. Oh, to be fair, like... I guess for balance purposes, to be fair, like, imagine got having... Um, having, imagine having Red Mist in Central, but then it's like, she gets to, um, she gets down to, um, she gets up to information so quickly, like, no, not information, sorry, um, control, like, you, let's say you have Red Mist down all the way in Central, and you're, you're hiding upstairs in, <laughs> in control, then it's like, since if Tiff, was connected to control. She's just there in an instant. Bam. <laughs> and it's like, oh no. It would honestly make Central even worse as a as a in terms of gameplay movement wise, it would make it even I mean, in a sense, t Central was annoying to fight in because there is like way too much space. So you can't exactly hide or run into an elevator. And it and also Right, because I got I got killed by, um, I got a bunch of my guys killed by the what was it was midnight it was no no do, uh, was it midnight yeah it was um orange midnight with um the worms and the big worm that comes up and eats you and it's like my 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 agents were walking across central <laughs> and it's like no you're too slow. And it's like Central is massive, and then it got munched. So it was like Central, please. And also because one other time was um, in Central, Red Mist was stuck, vulnerable there, and then I sent rabbits after her. But then it's like the rabbits took a long time to shoot her down because to even get to even reach her, rather, because they spawned at the bottom of Central. Traversing Briar is a is a layer of pain in the run because it's a horizontal layout. Has very little vertical movement. Yeah, it's like you don't want like agents crisscrosses across the floors of Tiff's department to move up and down. Yeah, pretty much. It's it's really it's um it's really tough doing it there. That's for sure. <laughs> like I I try to avoid fighting in Central as much as I can. Pretty much. Thankfully, yeah. Like let's see. Imagine having. Yeah, it would have. Yeah, even when you send someone to go to like, let's say, architect, the architecture. Well, any of the other floors, but they have to go through central. But you take the most roundabout path. They go zigzagging instead of going like, okay, take upper floor to safety. No, they go all the way down to lower central and then go into safety, unless you control them manually. <laughs> so it's like the. Central is a trek, let's say. It's a massive trek. But yeah. Alright, so that's Yun Fixer done. So <clears throat> Yun Office. Alright, back to Iron. Consta. What's your favorite food? That's the question I used to ask the most when I still had the human body. I love, love eating. Talking about food was a huge delight for me. We could share each other's tastes and preference and sometimes head to a restaurant for a meal like that. Yeah, food is really something that bonds people, huh? But now, my body's a machine as you can see. I can't taste anything anymore. Thank you for pointing that out. Mo told me to stop dreaming about it. I still want to try more delicious food, though. Hot and flavorful, spicy and sweet, stuff like that. Oh yeah, I read, I read it, yeah, yeah. Um, I read the third page. Um, it's about um, budget and sp and sponsors and stuff, and how, yeah, you need augmentations or else rats could kill you. I read it, yeah, yeah. I read it, yeah. But now my body's a machine, as you can see. I can't taste anything anymore. Thanks for pointing that out. Mo told me to stop dreaming about it, though. 
I still want to try more. Oh, wait. Um, hot, flavorful, spicy, sweet. Something like that. I guess this body is too cheap to get to restrain delusional thoughts like this. If we get more money and change our bodies to new ones, then maybe I'll be able to stop these thoughts from getting in the way of my work. Yeah. It's fine, it's fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah, don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry. Feel free to chat. Feel free, feel free to chat. But yeah. It's like... I guess when you're like when you're desperate for a new body, you take what you get. But at the same time, it's like I don't know. These guys are idiots. <laughs> these this whole the whole the brother of iron is just dumb. Why did you do that to yourselves? <laughs> the city of um, the city consists of twenty five nests and twenty five districts of back streets that surround these nests, and countless offices and syndicates reside in the back streets. You know what's a surefire way for a syndicate to make a name for itself among all competent competitors? The simplest method is office raiding. You literally storm into an office and wreak havoc on it. You could you never know who'll be the winner until you fight. It could stop at a good beating and a one side struck and one side surrendering. But some syndicates raid offices out of pure boredom and kill them. Each syndicate has its own way of operation. It goes without saying that the syndicate has more fame to gain out of raiding a high-grade office for the seasoned fixers. So, so the offices have to stay sharp at all times. Just to watch it. If you misjudge your opponents, you'll end up dead before you could try anything. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. So, right. All right, cool. So sometimes... All right, because syndicates are like... They're not fixers. They're just like... I guess you could close... The closest thing you could say was, um... Was that... Um... Is like syndicates are like criminal organizations in a sense but again some offices are criminal but like they're like unofficial in a sense if that makes sense they're a group but they're not like an established office 25 oh true yeah because there's like there's um 26 letters in the alphabet but there's 25 nests and 25 districts that's interesting yeah syndicates like the fixer office mm. they're kind of ish but they're not that but you, you you won't go for a syndicate for help or at least the syndicate might try something funny on you like let's say kurokumo is it kurokumo yeah kurokumo kurokumo is a syndicate and they were like extorting people for their money and stuff but yeah hmm. maybe z like maybe they can't find Maybe they said 25 because they don't know um, what Z for a corporation they could do. Like, what would the Z word be? Like, Zebra Office. I mean, Zebra Corporation. I don't know. Z. What would you, what would you name a Z Corporation? <laughs> Zombie Corp. Zombie Corp. Maybe. <laughs> Zombie Corp. Maybe, maybe. All right, fuck office, McCullen. Uh, it's not entirely impossible. You can put K as Kure. You can pun K as Kure. I'm sure they could manage something. Oh, wait, is th wait, there's a, there's a, cause like, I, d I haven't actually um listened to that much. I haven't actually, I haven't heard that much Korean, in all honesty, before this game. And yeah, I couldn't help but notice how many times they say Kure. And all that stuff, which is like, I think it means like, yeah, or all right. And like, they say kure a lot in the dialogue, especially Angela. I noticed her saying kure a lot. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> I see, so there's, there's an office called that here, huh? Oh, cure healing, I see. They're the ones who supplied the heal bullets. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. I guess to be fair, yeah, that's a pun ish, maybe. Or maybe I'm mis misspelling it. Um, cure office. Oh, I see. They did once who supplied the heal bullets. Okay, interesting. Wasn't someone talking about last stream, not in game, but like in chat, how um, execution bullets weren't explained that much? Hmm. Interesting. Hold on. Be right back. Oh, read the wiki for the page two. Oh, interesting. Okay, cool.
Page two of the Urban Myth. All right, cool, cool, cool. Oh, of um, Hook Office. All right, cool. Oh, it's an Urban Myth. Oh no, it's not there. Huh? That's weird. Oh, yeah, cause I got all the pages. Cause I got I got the achievement for. All I guess I don't know why they're not here then. Hmm. <laughs> weird. Okay, McCullen. It's not entirely impossible for a syndicate member to engage in fixer work. Oh, I see. All right, so you can they can do fixer work. I see. It's a pretty common occurrence. If you have the skills to back yourself up, multiple organizations will make sweet offers to recruit you. What matters the most here is the relationships you've built. Your fate depends on the things you've done, or karma, in other words. We didn't start out as fixers at the beginning. No, we were in fact part of the homicidal syndicate. Oh yeah, that's the thing. Like these guys look more um, syndicate than office. Because like, they seem a lot more menacing compared to like comparing this to Yun, for example. They're not as refined. Uh, we were part of the homicidal syndicate. Just see how intimidating. Yeah, pretty much. We used to be murder for hire in District 23. 23. Okay. It was a small syndicate run by Naoki, I, and a few others. But our influence started to expand bit by bit since the young and talented Taiyin joined us. Our current boss was originally the representative of an office we raided. They visited us once they heard we shredded their fixes brutally and hung their ragged corpse on the street like scarecrows. Oh, that's what the page does. That's what the page was depicting. Oh, I see. Because I remember, like, yeah, one of their pages was like that. Said they needed people like us. I thought they were just freaky with weird taste, but looking back now, I get why they chose us. It's a strategy. Each office does all kinds of sensational stunts to attract the attention of potential, cli potential clients in a saturated market. 23 was also Cannibal and Bremen. Oh, is it? Interesting. I think so. I remember 23. Yeah, this is 23. Hmm. I see. 23 seems to be a really messed up district in, the, in general. Um, do you hold radical events such as pay for one request, get one free, or group weapons into different grades and offer a free exchange for one of their most expensive ones? And the gullible clients fall for it. We don't know how much of how much more about that one plus one deal actually costs, or how it has limitations on the grades of requests you can make. We don't bother looking up to check if the top grade weapons are in fact used ones. Here's our boss didn't want to add lies to the industry. That's already full of filthy screaming schemes. But still. But they still had to catch people's eyes somehow, and it's the result. Higher guys like us and proudly advertise it. Faces from a former killer syndicate will tear things up for you. You can count on us. Hang up a slogan like this and people get hooked up. If that suits their taste, that is. I see. I see. Right, because yeah, each office is different. Oh, 23 is W Corp. I was wondering, I was, I was thinking, trying to think back on uh, reverse alphabet. It's why you theorized about artifacts of warp trains perhaps influencing the culture there. I see. Mm, but again, at the same time, aren't warp trains like... Are the warp trains, I guess subconsciously, yeah, they get all fucked up inside the warp train. And then subconsciously, um, it starts to affect the people there. Like, say, these guys, a syndicate turned office, or um, the cannibals. And also, yeah, you mentioned um, Bremen as well. <laughs> Warp, yeah, okay, W Corp was a plague to the world, huh? It is interesting though, like, like what's it called? I don't know, part of me, it's a bit, not weird, but like, because Roland meant, not weird, but more like, it's a bit, only rich, no, no, the, the rich people on warp trains, um, they take VIP, they take first class. <laughs> I don't think Olga was all that rich, or what, did she use a paycheck from thing? I don't think Olga, Olga was that rich. I think. But yeah, interesting. But yeah, the rich people took thing. Oh! Oh, Bremen was from District 9. Okay, I see, I see, I see, I see. Oh, I see, I see. Even then, yeah, I could- I still couldn't see the theory of subconsciously people are affected by warp train. It's still not cheap. True, true, true. But yeah. I know, it's a bit of a morbid thought. 
of like, because Roland mentioned he took a warp train. It's kind of a morbid thought to think what was going. I mean, to be fair, not every warp train has the same um, happenstance. Like, for example, one of them talked about how they formed a kingdom with a king and and all that stuff with a monarchy. While, of course, Love Town was um, Love Town was obviously. Um, orchestrated, orchestrated by Elena and Jai Hyun, but it's kind of interesting to think about how Roland's, you know, endless years and endless days, endless years, how many so ever years um, it was for Roland in there. Like, damn, what did you experience? What did Roland experience in the warp train? And also, I don't know, it's a bit of a morbid thought, but like... What's it called? Yeah, of course he doesn't remember, but it's still a morbid thought to think about what Roland went through. And also, it's morbid in the sense that, I don't know, part of me is thinking like, what if he was with Angelica in the warp train? For example, what if he was in the warp train? <laughs> What if, what if that was the case? Like, what if, like, it's morbid to think about, but like, what if, like, you know, Angelica died somehow in the warp train and then Roland went black silence, pissed off in the warp train and obviously was reverted backwards and could, can't remember, of course, but like, it's just a morbid thought I can't have, I can't help but have. Yeah, I mean, 10 seconds you're fine, but like, inside the train, like, if you're a per, you know what I mean? You know how I mean. <laughs> when the people did with eternity different from their case to case, it was a pretty common constant of them melding and eating each other as normal food and water ran out. Well, when you get to the warp page, it's actually something that vaguely loose to him. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah. Alright, it is nice to know that he didn't go on a warp train with Angelica, because... <laughs> yeah, that would be... Um... Rough. <laughs> that would be rough. Let's say. <laughs> Let's just say that'd be rough, if it, if it, if it was the case. Okay, you don't need water and food. True, they don't. I mean, to be fair, I think it's maybe it's they, they, they don't feel hungry or anything. True, like Tom Marie and stuff just survived um, without eating and stuff. But I guess to be fair, I mean. I guess you could go mad over the concept of not eating or drinking. Like, by all means, you don't need it, but in your mind, you're like, I should be eating and drinking. Yeah, the sensation, yeah, is that it's like, I sh like, you could, let's say you, you don't have to eat anymore. Like, you, know, you know how you have those characters in media who, like, don't have to eat anything? They can survive on just nothing. No food, no drink. But then, they still eat sometimes because of the sensation of eating. If that makes sense. Like, it feels alien to not eat even though they don't have to. It's like, yeah, pretty much like that. Because, like, yeah, because the reason why people killed each other and, like, started committing, well, trying to commit suicide was to just feel something in the train. Just to feel something, some mental, yeah, mental stimulation to like, not, to not be bored out of your mind in the warp train. Just not to be bored and like, just to do something, pretty much. You can save money if you don't eat. True, true, true. I mean, yeah, but I mean, like, as we, as we, as we've been through with these guys, food, like, having food, eating food is still, like, a sensation. It's a human sensation that if you don't have it, it feels weird. <laughs> like, but again, there are people who can go like days without eating or like have some food disorder. But like, yeah. They have a cheap body, yeah, yeah. But it's more like they have a cheap body, but it's more because it's more the mental feeling of um they want to eat. They want they want to feel food again. They want to experience food. So I wouldn't put it past someone, even if they couldn't, even if they don't need to eat, they would want to eat at some point because the sensation of food. 
Uh, Tyin's page. How's my new weapon? Isn't it sick? Union Co. Uh, if you buy expensive, you don't you want to feel the food equals profit. Mm, true. I guess. I mean, I guess if you don't want to eat at all, like you, you can, you can obviously you can go against that by all means. <laughs> I mean, more from like a normal perspective, I guess. Union Co. is the go-to workshop brand for ready-made bionic weapons and equipment. Their places, their prices are pretty reasonable compared to most procedures and workshop weapons too. On top of superb performance, top of superb performance, you can replace or attach them easily without having to worry about allergies. So it's pretty damn handy, you see? Oh, I see these like blade weapons behind them. Not hungry sometimes, you're still nibbling on something. Yeah, like that, that sort of thing, pretty much. <laughs> oh, bionic equipment is pretty simple. It's like a weapon you attach to your body. It's not all scary or dangerous, though it could feel a bit awkward when you use it for the first time. In my case, I accidentally ripped Naoki's clothes while walking by and cut my own cheek when I failed it, flailed, flailed it out of frustration. But now I've gotten used to it. I feel as if I have free hands. If you have any trouble finding the perfect procedure or weapons for you, try bionic equipment. I guarantee it's good. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like, um, Dr. Octopus hands. Or like just having extra hands, like tentacles. That'd be, that'd be, honestly, those are, hand those would be handy. <laughs> but then it's stuck to your body, like, how do you sleep? Or do you, can you just detach them? There's a huge variety of workshops, as diverse as syndicates and fixers are. Weapons need individuality to stand out in this day and age. Old-fashioned swords or guns won't stand a chance against modern weapons loaded with new technology, I bet. From cheap and common gear to bionic weapons like the one Tyan's using, to equipment of ridiculous abilities that's almost indistingu indistinguishable from magic. Don't get too hyped, though. More options means you need to be more cautious about choosing the right one for you. If you had a time and money, you could buy them all and test them out of your leisure, but we? have neither, do we? Don't just buy the things I would recommend about doing your own research though. That's one of the stupidest things you could do. Might fight, might fit them, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have a good time with it. Still, confident, still confident you can build them all? Get real, buddy. Workshop equipment is not your average weaponry, so before you choose your weapon, observe others carefully. See if any workshop products might suit you. Having keen eyes is all part of our skills. Guess why people choose us and our office out of all the tough fixers out there? Alright, I see. So, they, yeah, the hook office is like really conscious about the weapons they choose. It's like, honestly, with like all of these weapons, like having a lot of weapons, I just think about Roland and the Black Silence just having all those weapons at once. <laughs> like, he has just the whole. He just has the he just has a spread of all types of weapons pretty much for all situations. I could he afford it? I mean, to be fair, I don't know how the gloves work, but I guess once you have one, you're fine. But again, it's also Angelica, and I don't know from the sound from, from it seems is that um, yeah, Roland is the odd one out becoming a buried weapon master. Mm -hmm, pretty much, yeah. I don't think we actually, yeah, now that you, you mention it, there's no character that has like a variety of weapons they use. Only Roland. Like, at most you have like thumb office with melee and things, but even then it's like bayonet and then guns. Hannah. Oh, true, Hannah. Kind of. I mean, I guess their weapons just. Oh, yeah, PT. <laughs> PT, yeah, PT as well. Oh yeah, the gloves could just be storage, yeah. But yeah, PT, yeah, Purple Tear. Yeah, to be fair, Purple Tear is the only character to have a stance change. So, most people stick a, stick with a weapon type, and then they find it most comfortable for them to use. True. <laughs> and there's, I get, there's full stop, but they use guns mostly, and then one of them uses melee. I know it was weird. It's a sort of like shape shifting. Yeah, nano machines, nano machines, na nano machines. Hmm, nano machines. Also, does many weapons? Does he have many? I remember his spear. I don't remember anything else. Oh, Oswald. Oswald, not Oscar. <laughs> I keep getting them mixed up. I mean, Oswald is Oswald. He's, he's Oswald. <laughs> 
That's Oswald for you. Yeah, nano machines, son. Pretty much, yeah. That's that's the Hana Corporate. That's, that's the Hana Association. Just nano machines. Back when we were still part of the Killer Syndicate, we got a client asking us to hunt some crazy syndicate. They were shaking like a drenched rat as they came in. I suppose they were scared of places like this. They asked us to catch the wicked criminals kidnapping people in the parts of the streets they live in. We had one question though. It's nice that they're giving us a job, but why ask a syndicate like ours instead of going to Zvai or other offices that are better suited for handling public safety issues? And they said, they did try to request an office at first with the money raised by their neighbours. But then the office asked for a ridiculous sum of money, claiming that there's much preparation they need to take before they can uproot a whole syndicate. Poor fellow begged for help, but the office personnel didn't even flinch. Well, money is the only thing that gets fixtures moving, so that's understandable. And I think their friend recommended to us, us to them, while we were looking for another way. I remember right, right. Introduced us as a worthy, trustworthy syndicate. So they all came to our hideout. Trustworthy syndicate. It's a shame, really. I can still remember the client's head staring daggers at me, hanging from the top of a power pole. The syndicate paid us more cash. What could I do about it? Oh. <laughs> right. In the past, they were hired as a syndicate to take on another syndicate. But when the syndicate was like, no, we'll pay you money, and then they killed their clients. We don't write official contracts or anything. It's the highest bidder gets our favor. Well, that's definitely... We're not really definitely foreshadowing, but it does allude to the whole thing with um, uh, Pluto, <laughs> in a sense. No use glaring at me like that, pal. We were told by a new client to hang their heads and guts out on the street. To make an example of them. Those sick fucks even used some kind of singularity. Oh, wait! To keep them alive. Poor bastard. Should have requested an office in the first place somehow. A syndicate with a singularity. Keep them alive. Wait. Is this... Was this um, W Corp before they became a wing? Then. Is this W Corp? It seems like W Corp. Then. It's W Corp, isn't it? Before they, before they became a wing? It seems... I mean, you have a singularity. T-Corp. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's let's check out the next one. As in the page two. Uh, hook office. Give me something of a fallen wing that was no longer patented. True, true, true. It was, it was the whole thing to keep people alive. That sounds like the whole thing going on inside a warp train. Isn't it? Hmm. Alright, let me look for page two. Uh, hook office page two. Where is it? Hold on. How did I get that link last time? A Yun fixes page. Alright. Uh, what's the name of it again? Hold on. I need to get the name. I can't find it. Hold on. A hook office fixer page. Okay. Uh, where is it? I'm trying to find it. Um, could be something of a fort. Yeah, maybe you can pick up K corps and you know, like killing bullets. Keep them alive as long as possible. Oh, maybe. If it can be put alive in the warp, seems to be some side effect of the- Oh, of T-Corp, maybe. Um, it could be a wing hiring syndicate. Oh, true, maybe. Oh, maybe that's why they're kidnapping people. True, 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 true. Um, you can word the key page stories. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to find it on the wiki. Um, I found the Yun office, but I can't find Hook office. Uh, where in the world? So that as time flows forward, it's also balanced by rewinding time. But the patches were stuck in the internal present. Ah, I see. All right, key page stories. I can't find page two. I only I can only see page one. Yeah, I don't I don't see page two anywhere. 
I, I can't find it. Hmm. Yeah, I can't find it. Yeah, I can't find it. Um... Yeah, I, I, I can't find it anywhere. Oh well. We'll read on once then. I can't find it. The one new singularity like... Oh, one new singularity like Olivia. Maybe, maybe. Hmm. It just seems odd for a syndicate to have a singularity. Yeah, it could be T-Corp. Yeah, I can't, I can't find in the search. I search for it, but I can't see it. It's not, it's not on the wiki, I think. I can't, I can't see it. It only, it only has page one as a story. While your office has t page two and three for some reason. Oh well. Uh, that we know wiki key page, yeah. Hold on. Oh, in the key page uh, stories section. I see, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see, I see, I see. I got it now, yeah. So, hook. Oh, hook page two, I found it. Alright. Alright, hook page two. I'll just post the link if anyone, if anyone wants to follow. Back streets are spread all over the city, and the nests are no exception. But all the means is that there aren't back streets in the nests. Since the back streets in the nests, since the nests are completely segregated from the back streets in terms of access, each wing employs their own methods like electric fences or plasma walls, and some just fence the boundary of a couple of loose chains. Needless to say, the back street residents don't even think about crossing the border, regardless of how insecure it looks. I'd like to point out one thing the back streets in the nests have in common, It'd be that residents of the nest could get a good view of the back streets, and vice versa. Hey, did you hear that? Watching the back streets apparently is a trend among nest dwellers these days. After a day's work, they sit by the windows and look out on the streets, cracking a can of beer. Chat with their friends about what they witnessed last evening. Hell, we've seen a club dedicated to that apparently. Isn't that absurd? People in the back streets live day to day, with their lives on the line. And their struggle is nothing more than entertainment to those who live inside the nest. Hmm. Like, it's pretty much the equivalent of like, haha, look at those poor people. And just laughing at them. Hmm. Well, it does, it made me think about the thing in Wonder Lab with, um, what was her name? Rose? Was that her name? Was that their name? Um, hold on. Was that, was that character called Rose? Hold on. Oh, sorry. Uh, not Rose. Uh, it was Rose, yeah. Because, like, with Rose's story was that uh, they were looking... Mm -hmm -hmm. They were looking, like, as a kid, they looked over from the nest. They, 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 were, they, lived, they lived in the nest, but then they saw in the back streets... Um, or it was more the outskirts, rather. They got... I think it was the outskirts, actually, not the back streets. And then they saw, they realized how unfair the world was, and they wanted to join an, a wing to try and solve that. Somehow. <laughs> I see. I guess I could kind of get why people, like, let's say, whenever a nest falls, whenever, whenever a wing falls, and then the nest becomes vulnerable. And it's like, oh no, crap. These people are gonna come kill us now. <laughs> Unless one of the wings comes and takes over or something. Alright, Pierre's Bistro. Jack's Page. Our usual source of cooking ingredients are syndicates. Also, I don't know how they took from the wiki up. Has the pianist backstory? Interesting. I'll see maybe later. Alright, so Jack's page. The kinds of meat they treat and how they process it differs for each syndicate. So you should pick, care pick your caterer carefully. A meat pie bistro used to frequently trade with the musicians of Bremen and Little Piggies. Oh, Bremen. Okay. <laughs> I mean, could you call them cannibals if they're animals by this point? I guess so. 
I guess the Bremen. Oh yeah, didn't they? Didn't um Pierre and Jack talk about Bremen in their story? Like, wasn't it like they used to be customers and then now they're now they've just gone? They've gone away now. I guess. I see. I think so. Yeah. All right. Piggies is like I guess it's like three little pigs, but like that's a reference to like someone you haven't met. Oh, the Bremen. Is the Bremen provide provide? Yeah, I think they used to. Right. But then the Bremen obviously joined. Um. Yeah. Bremen is a supplier. Yeah. I misread. I misread what this was on. Yeah. They talk about Bremen providing meat. Okay. Cool. Nice to have. Yeah. So even Bremen was. I mean, too fair. Greta relates to Pierre with the eight chefs stuff, but Bremen had a lot. Yeah, even Bremen. I'm gonna write about Greta again. <laughs> like, even like Bremen did have foreshadowing or like references before we met them. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna write about Greta again. All Greta has is the eight chefs mentioned with Pierre. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> it's honestly the reason why is just more because uh, because Greta was paired with Hod. If if she was paired with someone else, I wouldn't feel as bad about it. Maybe, but it's it still feels I don't know. <laughs> like I don't know. Hopefully, next time we see Hod, she doesn't get done as dirty over this <laughs> compared to Greta. Anyway, <laughs> I've ranted about this like three times already. <laughs> Mrs. Bremen provided large quantity. I guess they had Greta versus Hot because cute girl versus shark. I mean, I get why. Like, in all seriousness, I get why. Um, with um, with uh, Greta, like based on Greta's reasoning, she was like, "Oh yeah, good people." People who are better people make. I want people to be better people because they make better food. And like Hod is like, bruh, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, she wants, like, she wants to become a better person, to be a better person. <laughs> and she doesn't want people to be better just because, just because they want to be eaten up. <laughs> and, and like, everyone would have been like, like honestly, you. I mentioned on the reception but like even you could also have had like your sod paired with Greta and it would have worked because Greta was like who cares if it's people it tastes good it will taste good and like pe and she would be like oh people eat it up but like your sod's thing was um rationality to maintain discretion but it was supposed to be like yo fam they're people no <laughs> no <laughs> and, and, and all of the characters would have something against cannibalism, <laughs> to put it frankly. <laughs> All of them would be opposed to it. But anyway, that's enough about <laughs> Greta for now, unless we get more stuff. Oh yeah, the, yeah, the rats mentioned about, yeah, the puppets and then the, the strange um, tattoo. Uh, mm. the, oh yeah, the man who strings people up, yeah. So it's like, <laughs> even from the start we had Jai Hyun and Pluto, but like, <laughs> I'm gonna say, but Greta, no, nothing. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> maybe maybe it'll be fine when we when I read Pierre's, but <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, shattered chips of bone were often in the meat, and a mixture of the types of flesh would create an odd flavor. Still, was a reliable supplier of ingredients, all in all. Outside of a case, special occasions, we'd use them for making experimental dishes or sausages. It works. It's like the music, to be blunt. They make music out of the people. Oh, speaking of, sausages are made from a mix of several kinds of meat. You could find a rat inside at times. Anyway, we rarely sold the dishes made out of their meat, other than sausages. They never treat their meat meat nicely before handing it to us. The meat from Little Piggy is a little pricey. It comes in small quantities, but its quality is good. You even got the highest grade meat sometimes, if you were lucky. Just looking at the meat from Little Piggies fills me with ideas about how to cook it. It makes my mouth water. That's how peeling the meat looks. 
the price is rather heavy. Zuni used it for important dishes or foods we served to customers. But both syndicates suddenly said they're no longer selling ingredients for some reason. So now Pierre and I have to pioneer a new supply chain on our own. I don't think this is all too bad though. I enjoy working with Pierre a lot. Ah, uh, Who's Little Piggies then? Is it related to anyone? Or is it just coincidence? Or like by some twist of fate that they, did, they just stopped working? Like by all means Bremen because they distorted and now are, are now just following the ensemble while um, Oink, um, Moo Moo and Meow aren't exactly um, into that stuff. They care more about the pianist and music and stuff than trying to sell meat. Is the Little Piggies related to anything? Or is it just that their business has run dry now? Hmm. Like, I don't know. I'm curious. We know that fate and coincidence are being replaced by Carmen. Ah, uh, true, maybe. I guess the, the little piggies just suddenly went kaput. Or just stopped doing it. This led to Jack and Pierre joining the library. Honestly, I like Pierre's look as well. She looks cool. Well, besides being cannibal. Most cooks who live here are the, have the same dream. Becoming one of the eight chefs. There are people who pursue the ultimate delicacy. Their way of cooking will give you a thrill just hearing about it. You don't feel it? No, no. I'm sure you can feel it inside. I sound crazy? Yeah. Listen up, you stubborn square. This is why I can't talk to people whose brains are too old. They taste bad too. <laughs> um, something with the pigs was in Distortion Detective. Okay, okay, interesting. Fair play. In, in, in the side, in the other material. There's a limit to the flavors people can draw though. Draw forth. The height of taste the human tongue can feel isn't as impressive as you might think, really. The most delicious food doesn't come close to sending chills down your spine. At most, it's just good enough to make your eyes spin. And the way and the food you guys you casually eat going, mmm, tasty, are way, 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 way below that. So many chefs gathered around one time, pondering what to do, what to do, to pursue a taste beyond this limit. If an inspiration struck all of them at the same time like lightning, what if they supplemented Supplemented, experiencing the taste, something beyond what the tongue can feel. You know what they say, they see presentation of the food as to its taste, right? What if the whole process of cooking could be tasted? They, they perform several experiments in an attempt to make that dream come true. So, what do you mean say, what do you mean by so? I, w I wouldn't be trying so hard if there was an end to delicacy. All the chefs are continuing to re turn their research to this day. To hear more stimulating flavors. I just want to be as good as the stain on their apron, at least. Well, all right, that gives a bit of insight into the chef, the eight chefs. Though it's nothing we didn't. Honestly, it's not anything we didn't. It gives makes it makes them have a bit more sense. But it's like with Greta's, <laughs> with Greta's um reception, um we learned with the eight chefs that they started to like cook each other, eat each other. To find more ways, like they'll go above and beyond in their experiments, and like apparently it tasted good. Apparently, more more than just taste, but like the whole process, so like self-sacrifice of your own things. But then they can't even taste it anymore because they they use their entrails and all that stuff, their insides to like they can no longer eat it. So the irony is there. You can cook, but they can't eat anymore. You cooked yourselves, yeah. I mean, sense in the sense that you can understand their goals. It's, yeah, you know what I mean? Not sense in terms of like, oh, I would do that. More in a sense that I understand you to some extent, <laughs> if that makes sense. But yeah, the thing is with, with Greta was that she was different from the other eight chefs though. That's the thing. That's the thing that sets her apart. She wouldn't go that far. Um, she has, like, she cares more about the, like, she cares a lot about the ingredients of the, of the food, of the food. So, like, she wants better people as ingredients, like, as Pierre says here, like, people who are, like, uh, 
was it? Yeah, people who t- whose brains are too old taste bad too. Like she wants like people to be better so they taste better because like oh you have people who overeat, you have people who undereat, and all that stuff, etc., etc. Because of um, societal reasons um, of like people who people don't like. It was Greta. It was like oh yeah, we have all this food and like we could honestly. If people weren't picky eaters, everyone would have food. But no, people take like people high up take the good stuff. They be, they end up like taking all the good foods, and then you have people down below who like are picky still, and then it's like they're just malnourished, so they're not good food. <laughs> it's a twisted logic, but I get it in a sense. Once again, I just wish there was more build up to Greta, like. Something more, but the only time we <laughs> I've been on this now, you, you get what I mean. <laughs> anyway, uh, Backstreet's Butcher, page one. The 623 is a street of flavor. Everything is permitted in the pursuit of making delicious dishes, even dismembering humans. Isn't that exciting? A guest into walked into a restaurant for a meal, and when the chef fell in love with them, we had the perfect amount of tenderness and girth. <laughs> the chef put out a knife, and the guest ended up on the plate. You'll become the food you appreciated one day. Others will appreciate what you've become. It's a common story often told in these streets. Well, if you really what became the main character of one of those tales, be honored. That Mr. Chef saw you as excellent meat. Hmm. This is one of the best compliments you can hear in District 23. The more you know. Hmm. It is kind of like, yeah, Greta's whole wanting the perfect... Well, not perfect person, but, you know, better people who are you know, good to, like, be better meat. Butchering a human is a lot simpler than butchering other animals. Most of them are smaller than us. Which means we can subdue them right away. Even if they try to resist. Oh, I'm not saying you necessarily have to be told to be a butcher, so don't be discouraged. Anyway, humans can be a bit noisy, but they're very handy to deal with since there's little to worry about compared to other meats. Besides the, uh, eight chefs? For them, human meat is the own, one and only ingredient that matches their pursuit. Some buzz about how the process of cooking should be part of the flavor. You can't do that with any other meat, so you better watch it. If you dare wander this part of town, the station might end up being a dining table. Alright, so yeah, the, the eight chefs are fully cannibals. At least some of them can do animals, but they do still humans as well. They can, like, they say like Jack, he mentions rats in the sausages. But like, <laughs> in this case, yeah, the eight chefs are just ant cannibals. Okay, <laughs> what happened to page two? <laughs> All right, I'll check out page two on the wiki. Mars. Uh, my mother was a fixer of a high grade that every one of my peers would dream of reaching. She was the envy of all, a radiant individual who received endless supplies of various expensive equipment and gone in constant recruit offers from the other offices. Does that mean I had a safe, comfortable childhood under the care of oh, such a wonderful person? Had that been the case, I would have earned a position in one of the wings already. Being the son of a high-end fixer, I was often targeted by syndicates opposing her. My mother's acquaintances held high expectations for me. Ah. Uh, yeah, I'm reading, and we're on street, like, office, yeah. We spent a fair amount of time just talking about other stuff. <laughs> like, a good chunk was me talking about Philip and Zhao, even though we're not even there yet. Or talking about, um, the Sephira. <laughs> so yeah, we ended up chatting a fair bit besides just credenza reading. So check it out if you want. From before this but yeah we're still really early in we're in urban myth just now with um here but hey there welcome welcome as well to the stream <laughs> at first i was okay with following their expectations i was already dreaming to follow the path of my mother in fact i was hoping to live up to it and hear compliments such as i knew you could make it from others yes i'm going to become a great fixer just like my mother then she'll be proud of me one day right so proudly say that's my boy front of others oh this kind of story like living up to your parents and others expectations i studied hard day by day taking no breaks in between countless times i held my sword with a strong resolve and many days i spent weeping alone 
Even if I face setbacks and failures, I believe I could overcome them and stand short the, 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 like the protagonist of a movie, as if I could be actually someone great. But in the end, I grew into an ordinary aspiring fixer. I learned that I was only an average person with no talent to show off. Damn. When I entered an ordinary office with my ordinary capabilities, my mother seemed very glad to hear the news. She said an associate office of the, of the Zwei is a good star, and I'll certainly be able to become successful if I work my way up. However, I was greatly disappointed in myself, and I, could, and I couldn't look my mother in the eyes until I said my final goodbye and left the house. I see. Interesting meme about Mars's mom posting in the comment. Hey, I'm a, a pure guess. Like, I don't know why. Did did Purple Tear mention she had a son? <laughs> did the Purple Tear mention she had a son? Did she? I swear she. I swear she mentioned she had a son. That would be interesting if it turned out Mars is Purple Tear's son. Double cycle string. He literally has no has talent as one of his passives. Yeah, it's just talent, like nothing special. It's, it's just some undescribed talent. So like, he has something, but there is something holding him back. That's for sure. But yeah, it's like, how to say? I honestly, I think his mother was honestly, like, she, I don't think his mother looked down on him though. That's the thing. Like, it seemed like, okay, you may not be super strong, but it also means you probably aren't putting yourself in big danger, in all honesty. Like, he has a streetlight office, which is like, he's not in as big danger if he was like super strong, in all honesty. So I could see why his mother was, you know, chill about him not being a super strong fixer. But yeah. Yeah, the, the one who looked down on him the most was himself pretty much. Like, I was thinking, like, I couldn't help but think about Malkuth throughout this whole thing. Like, this guy really needs the will to stand up straight. It's, I can't I can't help but think about Malkuth. <laughs> like, it's pretty much like, you know, Malkuth's dilemma. Having, wanting to, to be acknowledged by others because you don't have your own self-confidence to look inwards on yourself to say that yes I'm good as well so if if you apt to have Malka fight Mars <laughs> remember that you maybe forgot to post that in a nutshell just like Mars has white hair the whole terror uh, so every character but so terror might have including Angelica and, and <laughs> true his hair is white to be fair Mars literally has an object the art so it seems pretty accurate true I think Maybe it's a case where, like, um, like, maybe it feels like a case of, like, it's like Philip. We're back to Philip, but, um, yeah, Mars was still had something like this, so he has potential. I think it's like, it's his own self-doubt that really, um, holds him back. He needs... Yeah, he needed someone, he, I think he, yeah, he has potential, but like, his own self-worth holds him back, pretty much. Like, he, he endures Slash. At this stage in the game, it's really good, like, because everyone is weak or fatal or something. He just endures Slash in no weaknesses, so he's really solid at this point in the game. Like, everyone else has a weakness, even, um, what's his face? Where is it? Uh, where's San? I can't find San. Oh well. What if his mum is Nikolai? <laughs> that would be interesting, but I don't think Nikolai isn't a fixer. So, I don't think so. There's a lot of characters with white hair, but it's someone who is a fixer, at least. So, yeah. I mean, actually, I mean, it's it's pure theory. Like he talks about, he has a flatly named tank because he hasn't he hasn't chosen a path yet to define his own niche. True, good point. She's a captain, so maybe he was a fixer. True, because he mentions um, endless supplies, various expensive equipment. Like Purple Terror has lots of equipment. You could argue, but I can't remember the specifics about 
um, things mother. As in, probably Terra's son, if she mentioned it that much. But I see, I see, I see. Interesting. It's nice, yeah. I think it's nice having, um, reading these. Oh, his mum. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. We, we beat his mum, Faust, in Nimbus. Okay, interesting, interesting. That's his mother? Alright. Oh, she has white hair. Oh, she looks cool. Oh, I like her, I like her appearance. Ah. Oh, she looks cool. Oh, she also she uses a uh, Zweihander, it looks like. It looks like a Zweihander. Alright, Faust looks cool. I like her appearance. Oh, it's a meme. Okay, fair play. Ah, fair play. He's just referring to the theory of them. Oh, of the of us being funny. Ah, I see, I see, I see. Because white hair, white hair, white hair. Oh, cool. That'd be cool. Interesting. Oh, well. I didn't look at Limbus, com Limbus characters just yet. So... Mm, yeah, I'll probably do a stream of that. Why not? Well, we'll see. I might tack it on to the end of the next stream. We're like... We're, not, we're like nearly two and a half hours in. But still have all of these to read. His mom is Greta. Please, no. <laughs> It'd be something. I don't think Greta wasn't a fixer. So... <laughs> ah. <laughs> Alright, Lulu. Ugh, crap. Another day without work. Fantastic. There's got to be some case for us to take care of, like fly tipping or something. I'm gonna forget how to move at this break. If I told my friends about this, they're gonna be they're gonna, so gonna whine. Like, well, isn't it a good thing that you have a lot of free time? Or, you're well off. We're about to starve from the rack of the crests. Those dummies. Think about it for a moment. You need results to promote to better fixer grades and see some growth in your office, right? And that's gonna lead to higher income for us. But now, I'm working with my boss, San, and some dork <laughs> shaped like a ball of rice cake. But things could be better than this in the future, yeah? It's not like I have problems with my co-workers. I'm talking about stuff like weapons and office interior, you know, those kind of things. You get what I mean. I want to see Lulu interact with Tiff. <laughs> I want to see Lulu and Tiff Riff interact. <laughs> like, that would have been fun. Oh yeah, reading, yeah. It would have been fun to have more floor skits and librarians interact with the guests. But Tifriff comes way later, but like, I want to see Tifriff and Lulu interact. <laughs> Lulu also has that, like, Sundere vibes, huh? <laughs> I do bicker with Mars and stab at him often, yes. But that doesn't mean I hate him. Sun and Mars are both precious colleagues to me. Ah, Though I feel... Well, yeah, I know what you're talk about to say. If fixers develop private feelings for each other, it can be much harder to bear whatever happens down the line. I know what I'm doing is stupid. I have wits, and I Mr. Rice Cake Face. I mean, there's two ways. Like, I feel like Lulu does have feelings to Mars. That's one. But then it's like, oof, the pain. Like, with Roland and Angelica. Oof. Pain. <laughs> ah. Uh, there's something strange with Butcher Page 2. No, no, there's no Lulu page 2. That's the thing. There's no Lulu page 1, Lulu page 3. Lulu's friend page 1, Lulu's friend page 3. So, I need to go on the wiki for this. <laughs> but we're human, and it's just something that can't be helped. How could we just strictly detach ourselves from one another and focus on work? I tried acting nonchalant. I did, but I guess I can't do it. Sans City feels the same. I gotta envy Mars for being cool-headed over time. But well, when I said bantering over guests, I'm like, more as a reading group. Oh, discussing stories. I see, I see. Of a more unique for dialogue and reaction to reaction to various guests would be cool. Mm -mm -mm. And that's the first to think, but there are lots of few powers between Lulu, Mars, Xiao, and Lowell. Yeah, we actually talked about this earlier. Um, I was saying there's parallels between... Um, oh, the wiki says they combine 1, 2, and 3, 4. Interesting. For Lulus. Interesting. I guess it's weird. Well, I see, yeah, yeah. Um, because, yeah, we, we were discussing earlier, like, how, um, like, Zhao, um, how Lulu, Zhao, and Philip all run away, and they're all burn characters, so it's just funny to think about in that sense. And also, um, uh, yeah, I, I can see what you mean with Zhao and Lowell as well. So, like, yeah, because, like, Lulu comes back 
powerful revenge. But then, of course, Lulu's not all that powerful. So... <laughs> as well. And she does bring her friends along. Sorry. Like how... Um... Uh, Lulu was... Like how Xiao and was with uh, Miris and Chun. Alright. Let me check the wiki then. Hold on. Alright. Find page one. Let's see. Wait, there's something. Yeah, let me check the wiki then. Cause yeah, uh, Lulu. Oh wait, yeah, Lulu page one and okay, page two and one are combined. Yeah, I see. So like, is it? Is, this is page two technically on this paragraph. A peacekeeping office provides protection for requested territories for a certain period of time. Lulu is in one of those offices. What are they protecting against? You ask. The city, obviously. What I'm saying is, their job is to keep the area safe from all sorts of happenings and incidents that occur in the city. Of course, there won't be much to do if the area is too small or peaceful. But man, compared to us who have to wait indefinitely for someone to, take, to make a request, Lulu is living a good life. At least she does something, and we don't have to worry about starving to death even if we don't get requests. I see. Right, so these guys, Lulu's friends are just independent fixers. I guess, I don't know why they don't join the office then. Like, I guess in Lulu's case, he wants more, 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 more tougher requests. Well, these guys just want something to eat. Just give us anything for pay. <laughs> As a friend, it's unfortunate that Lulu is struck with grief. I don't have any tears to shed for her though. I've got my own share of rough experiences. I'm just not sharing it with others. No, I did say I'll help her out, but the truth is, my office figured that we could find plenty- Okay, there are offices, but like, not as successful as Streetlight. My office figured that we could find plenty of viable loot in the library. That's pretty tempting. The other one is probably thinking the same as me. I mean, what dummy would actually head to such a dangerous place, motivated purely by a friend's sub-story? The kind of intimate and deep relationship is long gone from this world, especially in business. Um, San's brother, someone mentioned it, someone mentioned it. Who was it again? Someone mentioned it in chat. I can't remember what it was. That's why I can't understand Lulu, sure. Sure, let's say that her colleague died here. Even then, she should be valuing her own life, shouldn't she? She can be stupid sometimes. Well, go into her anyway. Bada, bada, bada. That's it, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, bada. I'll, I'll check out... Is it saying bada's, um, credenza then? I'll read it. I'll read it soon. I see. Yeah, I. I was thinking. I was wondering, like, because they they had San, uh, built up for a while, having a brother, and then it's like the payoff is all the way here in thing. I see. Yeah, they have similar hairstyle. All right, that's kind of funny. Like, yeah, Lulu's is tragic, I guess, in terms of like city life, where. If you win Bada with San, you get a special combat pin. Oh, I see. Yeah, because I, I read some of the special combat symbols. Like, bring her up again. If you use either Jack, if you use Pierre against um, Greta, if you, if, I think if you attribute, if you attribute Pierre and you win against Greta, you get, you get her head as a symbol. Or if you go and use, um, if you use Salvador, and Yuna attributed onto a character who defeats Philip, you get the crying children head. With Oswald, if you have Noah and Emma, you get his head. Um, yeah. Who else was there? Pluto, if you have... I forgot. I forgot who. Oh, if you have um, Kane Office. If you have the Kane Office, I think anyone from Kane Office attributed. Um, yeah, Nemo. Nemo then, yeah. If you have Nemo and you defeat Pluto, you get his battle symbol, which is Pluto's skull. Um, I forgot who else. I think... No, oh, yeah. If you use Tomari, if you have Tomari attributed, you can... Um, you can... Um, you can use Tomari... If you use Tomari to beat... Um, Elena, you get um, her 
blood fiend half head. Bremen, Bremen, yeah. Tanya head from Mifsat. Um, I think, yeah, I think it was Kurokumo. I think. I think it was Kurokumo. It's some really obscure way to discover lore. Learning Bada is San's brother by beating up San's page. How would you even think of that normally? Yeah, that's the thing, like, San... What was San's attributions anyway? Would you even have it by accident? Let me see. Because San's one was, um... What the hell is this? Oh, right, that one. Because San... Where the hell is San? Do I not have you? Hold on. Do I not have San? I should. What? No, San lives, so... Where the hell is San? Where? Does San have a... Oh, here. Um, calmness. On Clash Win, boost the max value of the next die. I guess you could technically have this. It's somewhat useful, yeah. You could, by some chance, have calmness equipped. It's a one cost, so if you're... If you're um, thing... Oh, in the art book, I see. I Yeah, I mentioned before that I'm tempted to go through some of the art book on stream. Maybe I'll think about it. I'm not too sure yet, but maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Oh, San Eri Yun is good for Blockma. True. The issue is that with Blockma, with Hokma, is that if you use all three of them, you, you're going to be really tight on things. You can only use four. Uh, total. <laughs> so you're, you're giving up stuff like... Um, I use Eri, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I use Eri. Mm. But yeah. I am tempted... Is it, if it's in the art book, yeah. I'm tempted to go through the art book on stream as well. I don't know. I, I'm, I don't, I'm too sure on that yet. More, not because I don't want to, more because... Is that fine? Sort of thing. <laughs> two years difference yet. Yeah. One's a grade year, grade six, and one's a grade two. Hmm. To be yeah, I guess too fair. They mentioned that San isn't all that strong compared to his brother. To be fair, an associate office is one that is cooperative, has a cooperative relationship with one of the associations. The advantage of this designation is that it fixes us not to worry about starving. Oh, so they pay a stable salary. Okay, so they're not, they're not, they, they don't work on commission. They work on salary. And that the office simply has to handle tasks given by the association with proficiency, rather than having to deal with clients and accept the requests ordinary offices do. Also, I know it's not about the what we call, but did you play or see the legacy version? Oh no, feel free to ask. Um. I've seen some of the legacy version. I've I saw the I didn't play it. I knew about Lobotomy Corp all the way back when it was still stuck in legacy because um, I saw Melting Love fan art years ago and then I discovered Lobotomy Corp but it was still in legacy version because I remember I remember the agents all looking like big heads. <laughs> like massive heads. Um, but yeah. And um, I checked after I finished Lobotomy Corp. I did. I did see. Yeah, Legacy has Price of Silence. Yeah, I know about that. I knew about that. Yeah, I ended up because I saw like that one was like Hokma, Hokma's um, suppression, but as an Abno. But yeah, um, the Sephora designs. I saw them, but I'm not a fan of the designs in Legacy compared to now. The ones we have now in Lobotomy Corp are so much better, personally. Like, Hod looks a bit too cheerful. <laughs> in um, she looks too cheerful in Legacy. Let's say it's rather dissonant. What one considers a peaceful day in the city. You look at his Silent Night comment page. Ah, I mean, too f I, I read Silent Night. Uh, hold on. Let's take a look at that. I I interpreted Silent Night as meaning uh page like you know the song silent night um silent night holy night it, it felt more like he's gonna come in and just and, and stop them fighting sort of thing like he'd come in and just um come in and stop them fighting rather than it being silent night as in like he's the one bring bringing down the silent night rather than it being a silent night that's how i interpreted this page that 
that San will come in and deliver a silent night. At least that's, what, that's my interpretation of it. But I see what you mean. I mean, if you, that could just be a peaceful day of just people beating each other up. I mean, it's like, well, not worse than any other day, at least. Because <laughs> with this, with how city, with how messed up the city is, I can imagine that. To be fair. Also, at a steamed legacy is that kind of bug because of um, Play Doctor. I remember there's a bug with uh, someone mentioned the a bug with Play Doctor having two copies of him in architecture. <laughs> but that's something else, I assume. All right, San. Sans. Um, an associate office is one that in, is in cooperative relationship with one of the associations. The advantage of this designation is that his face is not to worry about stable income yet. Spending days without any incident happening in the area designed designated for peacekeeping can be admittedly boring. Though it's a blessing to have such a peaceful day in the city. I was grateful to have such sincerity each day. Reasoning with Lulu's occasional complaints. Yeah, like, San is like a peacekeeper. So, like, he comes in and stops people fighting, rather. That's what I assume. Is boredom the only downside of being in an associate office? That's not quite true. Because we're under direct command of the association. We're forced to take on any undesirable tasks they give. Even if it carries the risk of wiping out the office. <laughs> I can't blame the association. So, I can only. I only have to save have myself to, for saving to save my guy. Fighting to save my guys. I see, yeah. Alright. It's Vi 2. Oh, wait. It's Vi 2. Where's Vi 1? Wait, where's... Oh, wait. So we don't actually get the Fool's Vi Association. This is just Vi... This is just Vi 2. Isn't it? There's actually more... Um... Just Vi then. Besides... Um... This group. I still remember the day when the three of us met for the first time. It's when I joined my previous office. I was actually scared back then. It was the work first workplace I was assigned to after I became a fixer. I was hesitating in front of the glass door, wondering whether I should go in or wait for someone to open it. But then I heard a sound coming from inside. Two people arguing with each other. I decided to get, clo yeah, to get close to the door and eavesdrop on them. How tight are the bonds between our fates have to be to lead us here? <sighs> I mean, both you and I are first timings, timers. Isn't it reassuring to be with a familiar face? No, no, oh. When is this Julia person coming anyway? Don't tell me she got disappointed by your prophetic impression and went back already. You're not coming in because she's intimidated by your facial expression. She gave me a glance. Turned back to the tall person with an even fiercer gaze than moments ago. And kicked him in the shin and came striding to along towards me. A tall person followed, rubbing his shin. As the person with pigtails got closer and closer, I found myself stepping backwards, even though I knew I should be saying hello to Oak to her. Soon the chime on the door rang as, as it opened up, and we stood still for a few minutes like that, not one of us saying a word. I don't know why, it was so funny to me that she was puckering her lips. This says hesitant to speak as I was, so I burst out laughing. Ah. I just want to gain spawns him, you can't do anything and the game gives you two options. One, you go to the checkpoint and pray gain doesn't give him to you, or unlock constant shitty energy from it. I see. Oh so okay, so there's some bug with Play Doctor and Legacy, I see. Alright, so this is how Julia Walter Isadora man. Yeah, Isadora come like she's also has that like Sundere vibes to her. Especially the pigtail hairstyle. That's like classic Sundere. <laughs> anyway. San and Julia are an old, old fixer friends of mine, and San's from the streets of District 21. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U. Oh, U. Um, U, U Corp. I don't think we know anything about U Corp oration, or at least that one. Uh, the same place I grew up in. This is a secret I've only told Julia. But San actually used to be a huge coward. It's probably not that surprising to you, since he still acts like a coward from time to time. Thinking about the old days makes me laugh, though. He'd always train himself so he doesn't lag behind, and ends up getting scars on his face. At one time, he walked into a dark alleyway, saying, Exploration should be a problem for a brave person like him. 
even though his face was already full of fear, and then ran back to me in less than a minute. New cop. The only mention we've got of them so far was Roland wanted one of the status boxes. Oh, the carrier. F oh, oh, I see, I see, I see. New cop. No idea what that would mean. That would mean then. I see those those status like like a. I see. That's cool. We almost got into serious danger one time. The two of us were hanging out until after dark and ran into something nasty in a remote street. It happened when I was a little kid, so my memory of that is a little blurry. All I can remember is looking at Sand's back, standing in front of me holding a tree branch, branch he hurriedly picked up. My heart was racing with fright, but looking at his shivering legs made me chuckle a little on the inside. I don't remember what happened after that, as I said. Hmm, something in the remote street. It could be anything, to be honest. I was thinking, could it be something that we know about? But it feels like it's something that could be anything, in all honesty. Why am I bringing this up all of a sudden? I don't know. I was just reminded of the old times seeing San kneel down for the sake of his office juniors. He never changes, huh? <laughs> yeah, they do appreciate each other. They just argue about a bunch. Okay, I was thinking, what could be the thing in the streets, like... Unless it's like U Corp's singularity that snuck outside and then <laughs> they forgot about it afterwards. Maybe. Like, I don't know, maybe it could be like you like let like let like, like with um Smoke War, it was like some weird monster thing. What if it was like U Corp's singularity that that was like on the on the loose? I don't know. <laughs> it could be anything, to be honest, in the city. So you can't really say anything solid. Walter. The associations handle... He looks... Okay, he's older than I remember. Don't know about that. About that. I don't know, but... Do you know that Most Sinners from Limbus is a character from different books? Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember, I know Don Quixote is a fictional character in another book. I didn't see the other names, so... Don Quixote is like the name that stands out the most for me. But everyone else, I'm not too sure about. But as in, I don't know what media they're based on. But yeah, I heard I heard about that. Yeah, like Don Quixote is like one of the bigger names that I can remember. Fa oh yeah, Faust. Faust is based on um, what was that story? I forgot the name. Um, it's I, I know it's a story. I haven't read it myself, but I know it's a story. Faust. Faust. What was it called again? Faust... Uh, what was it again? Yeah, some German thing. Oh, it's, it, it's already called... Well, look, Faust is the character. It's from... Yeah, something based on... Yeah, uh, Mephistopheles. Um, Alright, I, I think he's called... Fa I think the thing is called Faust as well. But yeah, Faust. Alright. As soon as handle requests are made by for fixes of security of Smoke War, where apparently the monster Roland turns into second form is a reputation of discussing truth he saw. Yeah, yeah. That seems to be the case. If it, it really feels like, yeah, the Smoke War, the thing he saw in the Smoke War was that thing we fought in the second phase um, thing. Hmm. Walter is 46, not quite as old as Salvador, 54, Oscar, 53, or Iori, 52, but still distantly old, yeah. Damn, <laughs> he's 46? How do these two- how old are you? Oh, San, never mind, I'm blind. <laughs> San, <laughs> it's Walter, hi. Never mind, it's San, San, San was her friend, <laughs> you're Walter. Oh yeah, you're the one with, um, tra- uh, what's it called again? Retaliate, I think, was your card. Where there is money, there are associations. The associations follow the demand, not the other way around. Demand equals requests, and requests equals profit. It may seem materialistic to you, but seeing how the associations work, you have to agree that money is their prime objective. For example, the associations sort and classify every single notable event, notable event in a city. Urban myth, legend, Plagues, nightmares, stars. Risk is not what determines their grade. And the only question that remains is how many people are willing to pay to have that threat eliminated. Gregor is from... Oh, Metamorphosis. Oh. That Metamorphosis. Oh, I see. Yeah, Metamorphosis. I see. 
Oh, I see that. Yeah, Franz Kafka. That one. Mm -mm. <laughs> That's a word. But yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, this is something I've been thinking about um, ever since I read. This way a bug arm. Ah, metamorphosis. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, this is something I've been thinking about with Angela's bad ending and also with what we know from the current Verena ending it was like it's interesting like um, in in the bad ending for um, Angela like the library goes back to being called a star of the city like as Angela says that um, oh yeah, like like with um, Blood Red Knight, like a star of the city will eventually fall. But um, in the ba in the actual ending of the game, it's like it's interesting how like they refer to like um, what was her name? I forgot. But the arbiter, um, she refers to the library, or is it Angela? One of them, yeah, Zena, yeah. They call the library an impurity of the city because of um, Angela herself like b being obviously AI um, clone etc etc um, not clone but you know what I mean the whole AI stuff that the head hates which is interesting like it may be that like the library when it when Angela is human ends up going back to being called star of the city while at the very end of Arena, the library is still an impurity of the city because of Angela. Which is kind of interesting, like... Um, impuritus civit Civitatis is essentially a head-specific designation for rule breakers. Yeah, pretty much. And it's like... It's interesting... Yeah. As, as we go along, Angela becomes more human. Then obviously, but the threat level goes up. But it's interesting also... Impuritas is like it's kind of like a hidden like ranking I guess in a sense that only specific things are that and like but not stars of the city to some extent then as well it's interesting like and also it's like it's why I get why the head never interfered with the library as it was progressing because um as Angela's bad ending mentioned, yeah, stars of the city will eventually fall. And um, in that case, um, it's just treated as a normal thing in the city where we have this library that's killing people, but then eventually, one day, the, the library will fall, as, as all stars do. So, yeah. It's a case where like the head knows, but eventually it will solve itself. Or like people will solve it. He doesn't. They don't need to get involved. So, hmm. Anzu really had just become another human in the city. Yeah, another star of the city, rather than something that stands out above all else. An impurity. <laughs> it's interesting, like to think about that. Like, which is why the head doesn't get involved because they know that eventually stars will fall. Alright, Zvai Fixer's page. Is there a person or a group dedicated to stopping violence or murder in the back streets? Not quite. You're on your own. I said the might of Pyre Fixers. Oh yeah, because they're like, the Zvai is kind of like a police force, but they're more like a private police force. <laughs> um, protection isn't some volunteer service you can get for free. Fixers risk their lives for it. Um, you'll take our lives worth of money to get motivated. We aren't robots. If you're so afraid, why don't you hire fixes or more, or move to a nest? You're free from all outside threats when you live in a nest. Unless the nest falls, of course. I see. This, like, foreshadows the whole issue regarding Lobotomy Corp's nest. When you see the Limbus characters, will you read or look what was the book they're from? Sure. Why not? I don't know... I don't know a lot of books, but... It'll be, it'll be interesting to see what their base material is. Mm -hmm. A lot of it seems to be like... Is it, some of them had like Korean names. So 
Korean literature, I think. Some of them might be. I don't know. It's because some of them did have Korean names, I, I think. I think. We'll see. But yeah, I'll look into that when we see the Limbus characters. Zvi Association is your shield. You know about Radian because it's from your country. Radian. What's that? Uh. Uh, don't know which one this is. I can't see it. I, uh, I don't know. Alright, that's, that's cool though. Something from your country. Interesting. Zvi Association is your shield. Oh, Rodian. Oh, Russian novel. Ah, ah, I see. Rodian. Oh, I see, so their names are also changed a bit. Ah, oh, I see. I see, I see. Ah, I see, I see, I see, I see. Cool, cool, cool. That's cool. Uh, protagonist in... Oh, Crime and Punishment. I never... I've seen Crime and Punishment... Like, the name around, but I never read it. <laughs> I see, I see, I see. Interesting, interesting. Alright, so that's kind of like the hook with Limbus. If you aren't, if you don't know anything about Lobotomy Corp or Ruina, the hook, the potential hook of um, Limbus Company would be um, fictional representations of literature characters. In a sense. Eh, you you get used to it. Like like fate stay like fate stay night with like King Arthur and Saber. <laughs> you get used to it. I mean, you're free. To, they're free to like obviously like play around with it and all that stuff. But yeah, after like King Arthur in Fate Stay Night, like. You get, you're just used to it. <laughs> That's not like you get. You're used to it, pretty much. <laughs> Nikolai from R Corp comes from a male name. Mm. I see. Unless it's like Nikolai is a last name. Can you have Nikolai as a last name? I don't know. But I see. I see. I see. Zvi Association is your shield. We protect you, your family, and your home from syndicates of the back streets. Syndicates of the back streets are crazy murderers. You have the wealth to make a direct request to the association, that is. Without due payment, the association will not move. Do you believe our request fee is too expensive and you would rather request a syndicate? Hmm. While making a request to a syndicate is an option, we don't recommend it. The reason is obvious. No organization in the city that operates without abiding formal procedures can be trusted. Okay, cool. That, that goes back to the whole hook office thing here. <laughs> That goes back to the whole hook office talk. Associate fixers are classified into multiple levels too. Section 1, which is the apex. Oh, this is section 2. There is a world of difference in salaries and treatment they get. I guess this is because they are, they are much more experienced than us. Do I keep... Oh, wait. What? Then maybe I'll be able to join section 5? Oh, we're section 6. Oh, why is it 2? Why does it say 2 then? I forgot. I forgot how it went in the story. Water is section six. Oh, so what's this number two mean? Oh, okay. Radian and Nikolai are first names. I see. Wait, so why is it two? I'm confused. It's been a long time since I fought Zvi. Oh, I'm dumb. Right. <laughs> right. Ein Zvi Dry. Yeah. 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 Lu means six. Hannah means one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mm. Hannah's no, isn't Hannah one, or is it Hannah zero? One for all, all for Hannah, one f Hannah for all, one for all. Yeah, one one. It's based on the pun of like the skill name is a pun of like one for all, all for one. So Hannah for all, all for Hannah. <laughs> nah, it's fine. Languages and all that. Right, I forgot. Eins zwei drei, which is German. One two three, zwei. <laughs> it's not an easy feat to get out of association section six, of course. It is a huge effort, or perhaps something um, that can't be um, done. Yeah, she. Yeah, she is for 
means death. It means four, but also death. Which is why four is like the why the why there are assassins in this game. But also four is an unlucky number to some people. <laughs> um perhaps something that can't be accomplished with effort alone. I'm a fresh member here. So there's still a lot for me to learn. Still. I'm gonna pick up experience from as, the, as I resolve the missions assigned to me. And I'll probably figure out what to do in time. The Zvai Association tends to be more defensive than other associations or offices. Our main purpose is not to fight and win, rather ensure the safety of our clients. We don't perpetuate unnecessary killings in our duty of protecting people. Thus, if we're looking to make a request for someone's death, we recommend seeking other associations for it. Yep. Thank you, Isadora, for combat prep, which I used up to the end of the game. <laughs> I used combat prep for like until the very end. So, thanks, Isadora. I remember I saw... I think the person was in chat before. I think someone used... I saw... Um, one of the Tiff Zodia videos that they used against Black Silence. And they, um, they used combat prep for the support characters. Um, for... Um, for Tiff Zodia to support her while she's building up and surviving. So yeah, I, I didn't think of using combat prep for Tiff because she doesn't use much defensive dice normally, but that could be good, yeah. It is to help her survive. Combat prep spam is such a fun meme strap. Yeah, I love using combat prep. I loved using it a lot with Hod and then Hokma when I did use him. And then, yeah, like especially block Hod with look of the day, all of, all of these ones actually. It was so good. It was so, so good. <laughs> It carried me through a lot. Like I used, um, I used Block Hod for Love Town. I used it for crying for crying children. <laughs> I used it for Wedge Office. So it was really, really handy having Hod uh, with Block and Combat Prep. <laughs> All right, uh, Urban Myth. Urban Legend, Stray Dogs. Okay. Notice that you watch the Library of Arena videos that I recommend you to write. Uh, sometimes. Not all of them. I, it's more because I just started looking at some of them um, now that I finished the game. Because <laughs> I had a bunch pop up in my recommendations like uh, Tiff Zodia or like Furioso and all that stuff. I didn't click on them because I knew I was still playing the game. So... <laughs> Alright, Gyeongmi, Dino, Zulu, and Stray Dog. Gyeongmi. Some fools laugh at these accessories I'm wearing. They think I'm a glossy punk trying to look cool. Faked out with random ornaments with our second thought. What we don't know is that these aren't, this ain't for fashion. They're good for making arrogant idiots let their guard down. Before that, they're workshop products with real practical uses. You heard about how people use belts to choke others, didn't you? These accessories are similar to that. They're useful for beating someone to death, but I gotta take the risk that comes from using them. Expensive gadgets crafted by a premium workshop have almost zero side effects. On the other hand, this ring for example, lets me deliver a harder blow of my punches, but it chafes the skin of my hand at the same time. This one's on me for using it for too long, and I hear quality products... Oh, I see tools, yeah. Um, and I hear quality products usually get regular repairs and maintenance to prevent that. The side effects of my gear is pretty minor and negligible, but in the worst case, you get some poor sod whose neck got snapped by the necklace they were wearing. Damn. Was it, wasn't it? Let me check um, your page again. It seems like the only one I could think of with a side effect, if any of the pages have side effects, rather. Um, here. Looks loosen up. Um, what else do you have? Starting out lightly wasn't much. Uh, on hit inflict paralysis. The sort of impact, shocking blow, cut in, crush. There isn't really any side effects. Um, maybe sort of like brawl, because it's like, there's a bit of a downside. And then scratch that, like, all dice on this page lose two power. Ah, oh, true. Yeah, that, that that that's kind of a downside. Oh yeah, I can, I can look when I burn. True, I can look at it when I burn. Cause like, 
Yeah, Gyeongmi, none of them really had side effects, per se. Um, yeah, none of them had that much side effects. I guess Gratstat was kind of had side effects, in a sense. I just recommended that channel that shows full through your soul. It's interesting content. He, he likes to make fun of every video. And was, mm, yeah, I saw, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. I think I watched two from them. Mm, mm, mm. Alright. Uh, whoops. Alright, now Dino. Dino. Dino, Dino. Tattoos are the cleanest type. Oh, right. Tattoos are augments as well. I only got it because Gyeongmi pushed me to give it a shot. I'm pretty satisfied. It doesn't cost an awful lot too. It looks pretty damn nice. We cast wimps. Run away at the side of my tattoo. But you see, coolness isn't only a notable feature of these tattoos. There's tons of tattoo types depending on the quality of the ink and materials used. But generally speaking, you can have results like burst of strength or skin as hard as steel. It used to be a singularity. Oh, but ever since the wing owning the tech got snapped and its pattern expired, everyone and their mother has been using it. Don't get tattoos don't get tattoos that are too cheap though. You might wake up to find melted flesh. You exactly what you pay for in the city. Bastards are only honest when money's involved. No, I see, I see. I see, I see, I see. Interesting. Alright, interesting. Do we have more characters that use tattoos? Hmm, interesting. Okay, that's a so that was a singularity that was um I see. Oh, Bro doesn't work if it's the last page, so that means Bro doesn't have any dice. Ah, true, 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 good point. Yeah. <laughs> that's a downside to it as well. Okay, interesting. I guess you could technically use it with like, let's say if you have Brawl, but then have Disposal in hand. Yeah, the Singularity became Public Domain. Interesting. I mean, we have Lobotomy Corp Singularity, which was um, extracting... What was it? It was um, extracting um, abnormalities with Kogito. No that. But I don't think Kogito is all that accessible. So, um, yeah, I don't think they're all that, it's, it's all that accessible either, though. Yeah, the Gang of Change was, um, it was, um, what are they called again? Uh, Jikan. Yeah, these guys. Yeah, ma manifesting the human mind, yeah. Like, so even if the pattern expires for Lobotomy Corp, I don't think... I guess, yeah, I guess technically has given it to everyone, true. Oh, true, 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 true. We don't need Kogito anymore. It's just light. So technically, true, good point. <laughs> good point, good point, good point. True, true, true. Technically, that means we all have it. As in, yeah, all of the city has the uh, means now, the singularity. <laughs> I see, I see. Even if you make it, make your way up to the big leagues and become a decently influential syndicate, there's still loads of stronger gangs above you, and they peck at you all the same. No matter how far a syndicate climbs and tries, you can't surpass the five fingers at the top. Oh right, the, the fingers were syndicates. Hmm. Tanya has a, yeah, Tanya has one, I think. Yeah, I think Tanya has one. Yeah, Tanya... I think she has one. I saw on one of her art, I think. I think she does. Oh, in Distortion. Yeah, 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 I see, yeah. It could be this. Yeah, yeah, I saw, I see, yeah. True, true, true. That makes sense, though. No matter how far... Yeah, okay. So, all right, so the, fi the five fingers were syndicates. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> syndicates ain't too different from fixes in that you have to repeat the, repeat the same. Stupid shit following order from above. So in my opinion, holding on to your place seems wiser than trying to climb up out of greed of a poor ambition. Unless you're at rock bottom, of course. Someone's gotta be below us to serve as punching bags, ain't that right? Hmm. I see. It's true that our syndicate's sort of intimidating got tight hierarchy, but the bond between members is strong. We're actually leagues above leagues nicer than those office fucks who exploit and abandon each other with every breath. Those crooked bastards will do anything for profit. I'm sometimes in awe of the shit they pull. True, I guess sometimes, like, 
syndicates are kind of like they're not as corporate i guess you could say as offices in the sense that they aren't as um yeah they aren't they could potentially be pretty close to each other as well syndicates but at the same time there's a there's like a weird not weird but more like sometimes you can't really distinguish between syndicate and office i guess to be fair the off offices all are under hana association while syndicates are not but like hmm they all have their own rules and stuff honor among thieves pretty much yeah that sort of thing that sort of thing but at the same time it's not like it's not like um offices can't have friendships like honestly like let's say let's go that like like in lu in the end the, like they're all friends to be honest like especially luo and jiao the first one of the first requirements to become a color to face off against the leader of the fingers gilbert took on all five not all at once but in sequence because they hate each other but still i see i see <laughs> interesting all right so i guess that's kind of an interesting way of going about it like we have um like the han association does want to deal with the syndicates so one way is like oh yeah we'll promote you to a really high we'll we'll, we'll acknowledge your worth as a color if you um defeat one of the syndicate leaders one of the fingers leaders for us interesting okay that's cool and i guess to be fair like let's say um fun we don't have to be the same fun if there's a new fun that comes up like it could be a different like the fun in this game is like mafia but there could be like another fun that eventually comes up that's not mafia anymore there's a different fun i guess not even defeat just fight them <laughs> just like just go for a scrap like <laughs> fair play i wonder which one um black silence did then interesting <laughs> to be fair with um index who is the leader who is the leader <laughs> uh what counts as the leader for index i guess to be fair it could be an older index but like who what for like the current index who counts as the leader it's not yan of course it's not the pro it's not the proxies i mean do the proxies count because they're proxy leaders the five fingers are parallel organizations to hana for a reason mm. they're parallel mm. true what was, what was what? yeah i don't think there is technically a leader i mean what you fight the city itself <laughs> or what you go and try to find um the lady down there and destroy the machine they don't have a leader yeah just proxies and messengers the farm at least has a structured chain of command yeah hmm then again the the will of the city truly is a mysterious one let's say <laughs> it truly is mysterious all five of their own independent organizations within their own ide or ideals they just become five because they got to be the most biggest and pervasive yeah pretty much they all joined they not really joined up but they recognize each other as the strongest syndicates around pretty much well we only we only got index and thumb middle ring and pinky i guess they'd be called pinky or maybe something else that's not as silly <laughs> um we haven't met at all it's telling the arena we only have index thumb and one of the pinkies tanya oh tanya tanya's Pinky member? Oh, was? Interesting. Uh, in the art book. Okay, I'll, yeah, I see, I see. Interesting. Tanya's from middle. Oh, middle finger. I see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember now. Right. Uh, I think Orgalia, when we first met Tanya, I think they mentioned something about that. They mentioned something about that. I see, I see, I see. It's true that our syndicates often intimidating. Yeah, I used to be a rat. Yeah, those filthy. Ah, it's fine. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. And wretched rats, everyone looks down upon. It's amazing that I'm now standing shoulder to shoulder with the dogs, ain't I? I busted my ass, cornering up the ladder. I did everything in my power. 
got a small tattoo of the little cash I had and rummaged through trash to find worn but still usable accessories. It's a damn tough climb, but now that I'm up here, I'm starting to feel like it might have been better off just to live as a rat. Here, a strict barking's orders. A strict barking order set up between members. It's nothing like the rats in moving close packs. Sometimes I do miss my old family. Ah, the middle of where there was, was apparently one of the ones rolling messed up. Oh, the cartel. Oh, the cartel was the middle finger. Ah, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. All right, so the cartel is the middle finger. I see, I see, I see. All right, cool, 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 cool. So, oh, I see. All right, Molnar office. This was our first, like, inside. Well, this was the first teaser. Cartel was under the thumb. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Something like that. In Leviathan, they showed a ring, and it's something you can't see. Uh, yeah, it, you'll want to see my opinion of it after I read Leviathan. I see, I see, I see. Patel was some group under the thumb. I see, I see. Hmm, I see, I see. That's how we link. Alright, Mika. Yeah, it's interesting. I didn't realize this was all the way back in Urban Legend. And then we had a long time until um, the payoff. Is that Love Town? Where's Love Town? Is there no Love Town? There's no Love Town, is there? Unfortunate. Is th there's no Love Town? No. Aw. Was Love Town Plague or Nightmare? Oh, yeah, it was, um, Plague. Okay, it was Plague. Okay, I see. They were so messed up, they couldn't even salvage pages. I see, I see. You still no credentials. Oh, yeah, right, there's no key page. We had, all oh, right. Yeah, for Elena, you had to use, um, for Elena's mission, you had to use, I see, yeah. Ah, I wanted to see the story of Tomary, of Tom and Mary. Ah. Um, was only even slightly coherent to barely get combat page, yeah. I guess, yeah, I guess the books are also based on their current form. Like, let's say, um, we don't talk about Love Town, you already know everything about them. True, true. I just want to see, like, the, sto more st the, the story of, like, Tom and Mary, you know. <laughs> or, like, maybe a bit more of the details of what went on inside, um, thing. Inside the warp train. No. Oh. Uh, Molar. Alright, Mika. Every useful workshop technology is patented. The city strictly forbade making or selling products without using technology patented by another workshop without purchasing the rights to it. Uh, the stream will last 2000 years if that's the case. <laughs> Just every single day. Or like every small chunk. To be fair, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I guess I, don't, I think it would have been nice to have seen what did they what did they do for fun in besides beating people up. Like, do they have any pastime besides listening to Elena's orders? Or like, I want to see like, I don't know. I want to see like just how much Tomari degraded mentally. I wanted to see, like we saw some of it, but I wanted to see more. Like just how much. They just see it in writing of how much they got degraded by. Yeah, they were nice lovers, but they were lucky to get Elena and the puppeteer, yeah. But also, like... Where was Elena again? No, in, um... Were they... Is, um, Tomari... Was Tom and Mary nest dwellers? They feel like... Are they nest dwellers? No, I don't think... They wouldn't be, would they? Because why would they go in the city if they're nest dwellers? They wouldn't go out, would they? So they still live uh, in the... Not back streets, would they? Did Tom and Mary live in the back streets? Uh, here is where one of Ron's quiz about how the heads usually quiet, but that's scary fast and fur when they have to work. I hope Claude is for this poor lass's dad. Really? Oh, shit. Hold on, let's read this. Oh, they're from a nest. Okay, okay, I see. Good thing Tomari didn't choose to go to VIP, at least. <laughs> I see. Damn. Jai Hyun probably hated Tomri. Like, because Jai Hyun hates the rich. A lot. <laughs> so, damn. Jeez. 
All right, patterns. If anyone infringes the regulation and still uses Telanchi, they shouldn't have access to. They will receive a case season at cease and desist. After three times, when you see the warning, you must pay all profit you've earned through to A Corp as a fine. Why A Corp? Because they're the corporate in charge of managing and granting patents. The head. It's the head we're talking about. In any case, if you can't pay the penalty by the third warning, the head, the claw will tear you down. Damn. To tell you the truth, yes. I'm the daughter of a small workshop owner. My father dreamed to make his little brand famous. His name was... Sorry, I don't feel like saying it out loud. It's long gone, so you'll get nothing even if you look for it. That's right. To explain moments ago, if you can't spit out the money you illegitimately earn from manufacturing or selling products using stolen technology, punishment awaits. But wait, please listen to my story to the end. My father was a victim of fraud. His friend gave him technology and he asked him to make weapons for his office of it. So he made it, made them per his request. He didn't realize the technology was stolen from someone else. He already sent the weapons to the office and when he was waiting for his friend to test them out and transfer the payment, a cease and desist was sent. You can guess the rest of his story. Damn, the claw just came and ripped him apart. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, like, um, the head seems to only care for, like, these arbitrary... Well, not arbitrary, I get why, but at the same time, they care more about the rules over mishaps going on. Like, they care about AI, they care about cloning, they care about... thing. Um, but yeah, he got W syrup. <laughs> Ex extra passion. I love how you both say different attacks. <laughs> you gotta go, but I'll return. Hope they achieve more progress. That was less uh, two, three hours. It's fine. I don't mind taking my time with this sort of thing. It's fun. It's been fun just talking and chatting about the game. Honestly. <laughs> We're like three hours in, and we still got a good amount to read. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I've been having fun, so... Alright, cool, cool. But wait, it says there's a um, cease and desist, cease and desist letter three times. But I guess when you receive the warning, you must pay all profits. But I guess because there's, he made it for a friend, there was no profit to be made. So the claw just went low. First warning, no money, die. <laughs> Damn, that's rough. Olga, Mio and I are old friends. I don't honestly don't remember how our first meeting went, other than being backstreet buddies. But eh. Oh yeah, right, because Mio was in the back streets before um, she got inspired by Red Mist saving her to like work her ass off and then join our corp. That just goes to show how long our friendship's been, don't it? We've done requests together, been in life or death situations together. We moved to, we've been too busy to contact each other often, ever since I moved to this office. But then Mio called me out for a date one day. Um, he rather her father got left hanging by his friend. Yeah, pretty much. Like, his friend didn't pay him, either. So, damn. Over there I got so many C and Ds. And he's like, please give me the weapon, give the weapons back, please. But then it's like, no. And then he got killed by the claw. Maybe it was before I got to drink my old friend for a long time because I got to drink my old friend for a long time or it was because it was the honor of having a seat the famous captain of the rabbit team but I was in a mighty good mood I was taking swig after swig of booze rain should have scolded me scolded me for sure if I went back drunk drunk as a broom I felt that but that happens all the time anyway so I didn't care much but the AI, AI thing the theory is that the world of city is a post-apocalyptic future caused by sentient AI because the um, age of humanity thing. Mm -hmm. I saw some theories about that, yeah, because the head is an AI, they don't want other sentient AIs around that, to that extent. A rebellion of the sweet sentient AIs became a thing of the past from the sod realization. Oh, I see. Interesting. Yeah, this, this, like, this world, the whole world building still has a lot more to go through, huh? Let's like, even the city in itself is still a crumb in the grand scheme of well not crumb but like there's still like a lot more to learn huh interesting theory how's it going so so how about you same as you lass after some meaningless chatters Mio gasped like she remembered something and she started skimming through her fanny pack 
Then she shot me a stealthy look. All oh, right, isn't the I saw the outfits of the I saw the rabbit team um, cutouts in um, Ham Ham Pang Pang, and it was like Mio's outfit. Mio, I like I like Mio's outfit, and it, yeah, it has like a fanny pack and like she has a cap, I think, and like it's really cool. I I, I really like Mio's outfit, the casual outfit in the cutouts. Considering the existence of reality warping singularity tech. It's probably more than just sentient AI to worry about. Like, straight up alien Eldritch stuff we've seen though. Oh true, yeah, there is Eldritch with the Violet Ordeals. We, yeah, funny enough, we didn't get any Eldritch stuff in this game. But, yeah, Ordeals seem to be like future, past, present mix-ups. So, who knows, maybe we'll see some Eldritch beings in the future. Uh, someone mentioned it. I see. I, c I think of Violet Midnight. I don't know if there's any character that relates to the Eldritch from the ones we've faced so far, at least. Oh, um, is someone... I, I swear Eldritch sort of... I don't know. Maybe Unja? I need to, see, I need to read Unja. Because apparently, like, it feels like... Because I know Egyptian mythology, well, Eldritch relates to Egypt in some sense. Like, what was it? Nyala uh, Fotep, which is based on an Egyptian pharaoh or something like that. Well, because Fotep, so it's based on pharaohs. Oh, Unjap seems to be more like the Illuminati. Ah, I see, I see. Violet Midnight in Library of Arena. Yeah, that would be nuts. Um. With the Egyptian twist. Mm. It's curious. It's said that the Admanities happen before Lobotomy Corp began to distract them. You would assume they really add up with time so they can't die. True, but I feel like it's more like some. Like Nosferatu, for example. Like Nosferatu, um, the, mag the magical girls. Um, actually, yeah, I mean, to be fair, there's a lot of Admanities that in the, in the records. Um, that straight up say, oh yeah, these guys came to us of their own accord. Letitia, Plague Doctor, Nosferatu. Well, Nosferatu already existed because of Blood Fiends. And then, obviously, we've seen Elena. Um, a lot of them did exist before Lobotomy Corp. Yeah, like, um, a bunch of them. <laughs> some extracted, some are straight up. Uh, existed like oh yeah like the apocalypse bird series like the black forest is a setting as well uh, uh the gaps where the river peeked through yeah yeah that's it that's it yeah yeah that was something about that bean i mentioned the primary source the bottom corp had before kogito to make their own was the free birds from the black forest mm -hmm. I see one. Yeah, I do. I do hope we get to explore the Black Forest at some point. But again, the Abnos are like, I don't know. I'm curious to see how the Abnos from Ruina are going to be doing, because um, obviously they've been booked. Humanity didn't go extinct at this point. To be fair, abnormalities have a lot of different threat levels. Honestly, like, um. There's a lot of different threat levels. Like we have Shylock, which is based in the city, but obviously Shylock isn't that dangerous. Ish, just don't go to it when it's angry. But Shylock was a city-based one. Um, Nosferatu seems to like doesn't go rampaging over time. Mansu girls hit and miss, but yeah, Letitia is just she just does pranks. <laughs> she just does funny pranks. Well, they can kill you, but they're really small scale. Like, we didn't have... Um, well, at the end of Wonder Lab, we do have... I, I assume it's the thing with Limbus as well, with, like, the other branches of Lobotomy Corp. They have abnormalities that are on the loose. Like, the ones in the library are, like, really weakened because of the light stuff going on. But... The other ones like um, Titania with something is, or yeah. So there's a there could be a bun. Normally the birth rate, yeah, that's the thing as well. Like 
I mentioned I think we talked about this before um, is that is that I'm really curious what the hell is going on with the birth rate in the city like I don't see how people are just giving birth constantly in the city if it's such a terrible place to live then again I think I guess you have cases like Angelica and Roland that are common where people do find love even then and like of course, you have um, people can live longer technically as well because of augment. So it's a funny case. And also, the city is massive, to be fair. I can't believe I didn't realize sooner that the reason why the number of abnormal are dark and edgier, grim dark spins on normal failures because, in itself, it's a reflection of distorted, messed up state of humanity as a whole. Mm -mm -mm. True, true, true. Yeah, I see what you mean, yeah. Like, you have like a much. Well,. This is like a much darker version of Wizard of Oz, where like the wizard in the end lied and just fucked with them. Like, was like, oh no, um, Tin Man, you you want a heart? Here's this, here's this met metallic heart. You don't deserve a heart. And then <laughs> I just, I just love how in um, Warm-Hearted Woodsman's story, it's just they straight up rip the heart out of um, the Wizard of Oz and just like kills them. <laughs> Right then and there, just rips their heart out. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and to be too fair, there is also like like a lot of the other fairy tales are straight up dark already. Like, um, wasn't Little Mermaid pretty um, dark as well? Like Hans Christian Hans Christian Andersen's original version. Like, wasn't it like? she tied she got her legs sewn together in the end or something like that something like that it's messy <laughs> and the three birds have pointed out yeah yeah um that it's like the head uh big guy big um uh, big big bird is the eyes punishing bird is the arbiter and um judgment bird no no punishing bird is the claw and Judgment Bird is the Arbiter. White Knight, so where's the Dark Days? <laughs> it's like Carmen's warped ideal. To some extent, you could kind of see White Knight as um, thing as being like this, like the, the self-sacrificing one who wants to save everyone. In the end, like yeah, in the end, even Carmen admits that it's still her being selfish. Like she does want the good for humanity. But at the same time, she admits to her, she admits that it, it's also her being selfish. But I don't, mm, White Knight being Carmen, I feel it's mm, oh the apostles and then the one that betrays everyone. Um, I guess you could see it like you could relate. You could somewhat relate it like um, a doctor scientist who then turns out. I see that makes sense actually. Right, if you look at it from that angle, um, you have like this doctor scientist character, Carmen, um, who gathers up apostles. Um, so like everyone, uh, Kali, Daniel, etc. Um, Michelle, Elijah, Gabriel, etc. I, yeah, Ian, Benjamin, blah, blah, blah. And then, um, and then you end up having the traitor, uh, Michelle. <laughs> And then it, I get, okay, I get why now that, and it talks of a disease. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the disease talk from Lobotomy Corp. True. I can see that, honestly. At the same time, I know, I am I mentioned it before, but I am biased towards Carmen in the sense that I can't help but admire her goal, in honesty. Like, I feel, I can't fault her for her goals. Like, Something to change the status quo of the city, pretty much. I can't vote her for that. I mean, I don't think distortions were her intent either. Like, you know, so she still had, like, Carmen still had a morality system within her. Like, she was really fucked up over Enoch's death, especially when Carmen was, I mean, when, um, what's her name? Lisa? Yeah, Lisa. Um, Tiff's first name was um like oh you should have been the one to die and then um as carmen told ian that she's actually really sensitive and takes things to heart and so yeah 
leading Carmen to commit suicide in the end. I guess to be fair, we also get from Keta's realization that Carmen did somewhat have an idea that her sacrifice would help the greater good to some extent as well. Because I guess she knows that um, her own, like she was able to make, to go through with the Coquito stuff with her body. It's just that I don't think Ian or anyone else would have willingly, willingly let Carmen sacrifice herself for the experiment because she's Carmen. But yeah, it's interesting. But yeah, I'm, yeah, I guess we could discuss Carmen a bit. We'll see. I, we'll see with Red Mist's one. She didn't realize Ace Puff would be so thorny. Yeah, it's like Ace Puff. He literally had to. Yo, A is a weird character in the sense that I think he's he wasn't all that bad. Like he mentioned, like he had a warm heart. To be fair, but then he had to obviously um, coden up and like harden up to like become a wing, and then he obviously lost everyone around him as a result of that. And to bear the guilt of seeing what she set him down. Oh, true, yeah, true. She was there. She was. She's aware of that. The hell that was brought upon Ian, Lobotomy Corp employees, Sephira, and also even Angela. Side comment, but imagine what would happen if Sansa was set free in the city. And there's nine percent people go mad looking at it. <laughs> That's the thing, like censored is a weird one where because because we don't have the condition filter anymore, it's like how are we gonna represent censored? <laughs> I really wanna see censored one like I mean censored seems to be like sexual in a sense like based on um based on when censored kills someone and then turns their bodies into more censored it seems pretty sexual <laughs> I don't know what but it seems sexual at least <laughs> but yeah um I do like censored, honestly. Like I was expecting censored to be the last Abno for um, Yasod's realization because it fits too well with um, information team censoring information, censoring stuff, and all that stuff. Ironically, so that would have been nice, but I get why censored wasn't in the game because I think it takes you really need to work some way of figuring it out. <laughs> Anyway, back to Olga. Uh, the reading part on this entry is probably the most disturbing part. Oh, true, yeah, I think I remember reading that part. I can't remember fully, but yeah. Psst. Olga, come closer. We don't want anyone peeping on us, so stick next to me and stay quiet. You don't know you just want to hear and really stick out like a sore thumb. Just say it already. You're not a woman of style, are you? It's more fun to walk, uh, to talk. Like we're secret agents stealing confidential info when we're discussing topics like this. It's serious that way. Forget it. Our corp has been investigating something of late. It's... Uh, wait. Censored being vaguely tree-shaped when idle. And then messed up horse when moving. Yeah, I think of it like a horse. <laughs> and... Uh, you know what they say about horses. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you know, You know what they say about horses. I remember to drink water as I'm talking a lot this stream. <laughs> are you giving work to our office or are you just bragging? By the way, I guess it's pretty serious if our corp is paying attention to whatever that is. Just how big is it? Oh, I haven't heard people going. I've heard people going missing lately. Does it have anything to do with that or. Shut up and listen for a sec. You always have too much to say. Here's the deal, Olga. I've got a lush grease grassland to show you, so graze it to your heart's content and bring us some of its veggies for me. How's it sound? Some words she chose, I clicked my tongue and took a close look at the black card and walk train tickets. Mio pushed to my side, before drinking off my glass and agreeing to give it a go. I wouldn't have taken it if I'd known it would bring us this complete lunacy. <laughs> Wait. Alright, so, oh yeah, because I was wondering how these guys afforded the warp train ticket. Alright, so Mio gave Olga the warp train ticket. 
Wait, but why did... Wait, if Olga, Mika... If they were already going to the warp... The library, why would they need the warp train ticket? Why? <laughs> why would they have the warp train ticket? Unless it's like, Mia was like, Oh, here's a warp train ticket so you can have a fast way to go back home. Unless it was to force Olga to, to go to the library... I don't know. Would our team, would the R Corp know about W Corp's singularity? Like, would they would they know the truth about warp trains? The regulative is cheap. Ah, oh, fair play, yeah. Oh, fair play, fair, fair play. I see. I guess this is like this is like a goodwill thing. Like, oh yeah. All right. But sorry for having you out so late. Here's a train ticket home. I guess. But then it's like, oh yeah. Here's the invitation. Um, take it sometime, please. Follow my request. Okay. Alright, so Rain. When an office accepts a request, an official deed of contract must be drawn up before the case can be dealt with. It sounds big, but it's basically just a mutual promise. I think it's consideration in legal terms. The client will pay a certain amount of money as reward, and the fixers will do their best to resolve the case. They're plain and natural clauses for the most part. It seems people in the city are prone to breaking promises as simple as those about contracts to bind them. Well, that sure is Pluto. Well, none have been part of the Kalman's orchestrations with the ensemble to set up Love Town. Mm, maybe? Um, as in, but then, as in, Ogre's presence in um, the warp train was ultimately um oh lobotomy corp w corp and t corp are in union oh actually but it's more like um uh ogre's presence in the warp train didn't really affect anything like i don't see how carmen would have infect would have influenced mio to give um a ticket to um ogre as in ogre didn't even need, I mean, as in, Ogre, whether she's there or not, Love Town would have happened. All it did was that Ogre was forced to, um, Ogre was forced to find, to like, accept the invitation because she was just stuck in the warp train. I guess maybe, yeah, yeah, to escape the, escape the train, yeah. I guess it was just a way to speed it up, in a sense. Not for love time, but more just for... So Ogre could hurry up and go to the library. Oh, okay. Omiyo just gave the invitation for sweet box. Oh, I see. Just, just... I see. So the consequences of being of freeing everyone. People usually forget about the puppets. The ones that made people like, well, conscious alive. Yeah, that's a kind of tragic with the puppets, at least. Uh, the scary thing about Carmen's power right now is that it's not influence it's coincidence hmm. i think i know i feel like with carmen's influence or coincidence is that it's open to inter interpretation because like the only ones who can hear her voice are those who are either angela or ones who are close to distorting or forming an ego i don't think mio or olga were gonna form egos at any point there is no one to control them, so yeah, so they just stuck like they're stuck there. I don't know if there's a way to revert them back, but yeah, that's fucked with the puppets. Hmm. I, yeah. Um then plain it seems people in the city are yeah, prone to making promises. In any case, contracts served as physical evidence to prove our performance we secure our payment when we submit reports to the association. For our contract, there's no assurance that we'll score big, score a record for our career. Or get RG payment. To give an example, Big Sis resolved a huge case the other day. We absolutely not got nothing for it because he got to sign a contract. Requests made by Wings are quite different from those assigned by associations in several aspects. We made the envy of everyone once you get a request from a Wing. First of all, a Wing commissioning a regular office indicates the office has been recognized to be worthy of its trust, and that alone can be significant achievements. You have something to brag about to other fixers. The payment is big as well. A single request from a wing resolved can keep us afloat for three months minimum. If I must be honest, however, I am rather unnerved. As rewarding as works given by wings can be, 
there is significant risk. I imagine how dangerous and difficult this mission may be if our corp, a wing specializing in combat, requested us to resolve it for them. Bix has happily accepted the, accepted the job, but I still can't help but be worried a little. Still, hope it goes well. Oh no, no, it says here, um, uh, it's here. Um, Ogre got the black, got the invitation and the warp thing from Mio. Mio gave it to Ogre, um, before the, before popping on the train. Uh, the scary, um, the ego distortion thing is probably adjacent, um, ties to see the flight, opposed to being within the light. Mm. I feel it's still kind of vague with how Carmen operates as she is now as a light as the light maybe we'll get more in the future but it's kind of vague ish the only solid thing we have with how much influence she has is ego distortion moments but so far i don't think i feel personally from just this game it feels vague as in it's open-ended but yeah o mio gave Olga the invitation Oh, well, to be fair, yeah. Um, to be fair, yeah, Carmen, like, the invitations work in funny ways where, let's say, for example, the rats. Um, the rat found the invitation inside a guy's body. So, the invitation works in funny ways. It's not like the guy who they killed was going to be invited. Rather, it was the invitation for them. They found the invitation in the guy's body. So, it's really interesting. I guess Mio didn't know he teleported the guest or thought Ogre wouldn't accept unless he got stuck in a train. Yeah, that's the thing, like, I don't know. I don't know. It really, it really depends whether Mio knew about the warp train secret or not. If she knew about the secret, then it'd be like, okay, this will force Mio to go to the library right away. Um, if she thought it would just be a gesture of goodwill to Ogre that, like, look, I kept you out late. I'm gonna bring you back home. Okay, yeah. Mio admits that she just thought the library would be easy pickings for Ogre. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. She mentioned that. Yeah. I see. I see. I guess. The, I. I guess the warp train ticket was just a goodwill thing. I don't think that Ogre would use it to warp out, getting desperate in the train. Oh, I see. So she knew about the warp train being fucked up as a as a method of transportation. I see. She knew about the warp train, but she didn't think the library would be that powerful. I see, I see. Alright, now we're into uh, other pages. Grade 8 Fixer. All people in firms generating income in the city must pay their taxes, in addition to fund for work-related expenses. So the meal thinks she needs to warp train to Lobotomy Corp. Yeah, yeah, I think she did then. I guess I guess Mio knew that Ogre would have to warp out of the train. Well, take the invitation to go to the library from within the warp train because she gets stuck. Just as a way to like get Mio to get to work ASAP. <laughs> Maybe. Because uh yeah. I guess also because the invitations I guess everyone knows that by this point that people just teleport to the library once they sign the contract. Well, sign the invitation. Uh, taxes in the city. Because it's maintenance of equipment and monthly rent for office space. Um, which is already a lot. Fixers must accommodate for rather heavy taxes. I became a fixer trying not to starve. But taxes have put me in a harder, tougher hardship. Ordinary people have a hard time bearing this pressure. What can I do? In the city, orders are to be followed. We all know what happens when we don't abide by them. Oh, okay, you, you two say the same thing. Okay, you two say the same thing. Uh, I think Carmen wants people to get ego. Yeah, she wanted people to get ego, it's just that distortion is a side effect. Yeah, which is a lie was going to complete. Because people that can make ego have to do something selfish. Yeah, I think it's like distortions were... I guess, I think it was more like Carmen making the most of what she could do. In the end, distortions are technically something that would be part of the goal. At this point, you think so. Um, definitely someone who had access to the info, yeah. 
And as in, Mio didn't intend for Olga to get sandwiched between Warp and Library. But instead, she is brash enough who would have attempted to use the invitation in the face of a desperate situation. Ah, I see. I guess, but I mean, it's the same thing then, isn't it? Like, she'd be like, I'm bored. I want to get out of this train now. So then takes the invitation. Um, hello again. About Ogo and Mio, if I'm mistaken. But Ogo got invitation. No, no, no. It says here. <laughs> it says here. Um, in hindsight. Oh, I see. In hindsight. I guess to be fair, yeah. Once the warp train secret was out, Ogo was like, oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, Marie. I mean, Mio was like, oh. I see. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, Ogo got the warp train ticket and uh, the invitation from Mio here so yeah um it didn't come to olga during the tra during the train but rather she had it on her the whole time before she boarded the train yeah the black card all right grade 8 fixer page 3 for one to start working as a fixer they must acquire a license issued by hana association the first association in the order the set of skills... Oh, that's interesting, yeah. Like, Han Association goes by numbers. Um, corporations go by letters. And then the top syndicates go by fingers. Imagine if Mia went to libraries of Olga. <laughs> I mean, I think it would have been fine because they were able to clone... They, they were able to clone... Um, Mio... Um, anyways, so... <laughs> I think it's fine. I think it would have been fine. So you're going to be stay here reading for the next three days? Maybe. We're like... Hannah. Uh, isn't it Japanese? No. Hannah is a number... Oh, Korean, 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 Korean. Hannah is one in Korean, I think. Yeah, one. It's in Korean. Yeah, Hannah is one in Korean. Yeah, the library been. I mean, yeah. If if Mio, no, if Mio went by herself, we might have been able to take her on. Maybe, maybe. I mean, we're in urban legend, so I don't. No, I don't think we would have. But if we had every floor to attack her. Maybe if it was one floor, it would have been tough. But yeah, I want to. Um, by herself, probably, yeah. Do you really? Do you think she was a? Do you really think she was a giant alone? A giant, as in strong. Um, she's still pretty strong even then. But um, going alone. Oh, going, 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 going. Um, no, no, no. More like what if? We're just speaking. What if? What if we, she went alone? Like she had, she had invitation. The way things were orchestrated, people above the library's weight were heavily nerfed. Yeah, like Eugen. Like, Eugen would have been nerfed. I guess, um, what's it called? Uh, Mio's nerf would have been, um, would have been being by herself. And yeah, Eugen was exhausted, Ogre was drunk. Well, hangover. <laughs> so yeah, true. But yeah, um, <clears throat> but yeah, I want to read through these credenzas. We're like not halfway yet, but nearly. We'll see how it goes. I want to. I want to stream again tomorrow, and then maybe Monday. Then if it's just chatting this again, we'll see. We'll see. Because I, I do want to do extra stuff, like just um, like uh, what's it called? I want to check out the actual ending. Well, the first. The original ending maybe I'll go through the art book and then maybe I'll go through not all of the art book like, I don't know I, I feel a bit weird about it since like I know it's, it's like it's paid content so it feels weird to go through it too thoroughly though I don't know I'll see, I'll see how it feels when I do it and then I want to at least check out the Limbus trailers on stream maybe that'd be fun are you gonna read the piano story Oh, true, yes. Yeah. So you mentioned that's on the wiki. Uh, pro sure, why not? Because, like, the pianist is, like, this big figure that influenced so much, like, 
as a result, it caused Bremen, it caused Angelica dying, resulting in Roland and Argalia going nutso. Um, it caused, it's effectively inflicted the fear of distortions in the city and how much damage it did to a whole district. Bremen got fucked up over it. Well, they just got inspired over it. I love influence. So the pianist, no, so is in the opening of the game. <laughs> I was expecting to fight it at some point, like some way of fighting the pianist in the game, but I guess not. <laughs> is this is, is this really like pre um, prevalent figure in the past for sure, though? Um, be right back as well. One sec. I'm back. Hello. I kind of wish there was a BGM feature, like ch just to change the BGM here. Um, <laughs> like, so it's not just this one BGM we're listening to. Oh well. I mean, to be fair, I could just I could just mute the game and play like the other OST. Maybe next stream. <laughs> Luckily, need sound effects for this. But mm, we'll see. Kind of interesting when you expect by story and when you read it, it's quite unexpected. Okay, interesting. Looking forward to reading the pianist story. Uh, license from them, yeah. The setup skill is required to get a fixer's license. Three hours and we're still in Urban Legends. <laughs> yep. It's been four now, in a few seconds. <laughs> We've just been, as I mentioned, like, I expected this, to be honest. Like, just chatting about. Um, as we go along, just chatting about the stuff and then getting sidetracked with other stuff. I expect I expected it. It's fine. It's fun. This has been really fun, honestly. <laughs> I've been enjoying myself, and glad to have you guys stick around. <laughs> um, one is about physical fitness, while the other is more about mental prowess. And I see you start lasting if you start talking about Greta again. Look, look. I like Hod a lot. I feel he was done dirty by being paired with Greta. <laughs> she was done dirty. <laughs> anyway. One is about physical fitness while the other is more about mental prowess, so to speak. There are exceptions, of course, but this is generally the case. It's faster than we got when, we got when it's about gameplay. As it, oh, to be fair, I mean, eh, it depends. To be fair, it, the fights towards the end lasted a long time as well. Like, I went back to check the last stream, and Distorted Ensemble took, what, three to four hours to do. <laughs> Distorted Ensemble was three to four hours. And it's like, bruh. Uh, what do you think there'll be time to discuss if water is wet and a soup is drink after we end this? Uh, probably not enough time to discuss it now but I'm down some other time 
Uh, I mean, water isn't wet because I saw someone talk about it. And the super drink depends. I mean, do you put soup in a glass or do you put it in a bowl? If you put it in a glass and just sip it, by all means, it's um, it's a uh, it's a drink. If it's in a bowl, it's a food. <laughs> um, in this time in gameplay, we got an Abdo fight. Is it? Oh, so from this time, I see. Over how long it's been going. Fair play. After acquiring a license, the fixer must join an office. After all, it is not impossible for a no-name fixer to take her jobs on her own. Can I use Fix Soup as a source? You can try, but it's I don't know. It's not exactly soup either. It's I don't know. It's like you ever had like I think to be fair, uh, I wouldn't call like noodles soup. Noodles with soup. Noodles with a sauce. Well, you need sauce needs a certain consistency. Ocean is soup too. Ha. <laughs> Speaking of distorted ensemble, you got up there and tried out Argadia's deck. Had to quit the run cause life. Argadia is generally busted. Hmm. I guess if you need to like if you properly adjust vibration level and stuff, that could be really not so. I don't think I used Argadia's deck to its full power, in honesty. Um But yeah. I can see how he's really good if you get vibration lined up. And also your speed dice. And also because Agalia himself has pretty good speed dice as well. Liquids, do you Google what Salvador's favorite tea is? Um, no idea. Also, acquiring license. Is it? Is it actually? Is it really a question? Uh, I don't think there's an answer. I didn't see one anyway. Anyway. A guy that looks like someone who would put soup in a cup and drink it with a straw. Ha. <laughs> I mean, fair play to him. Agadia's speed rolls is 4 to 6, and Tentuous Dancer faces his speed at 4. Um, Resonant Scythe gains plus 6 power. Oh, right, Resonant Scythe. Right, my issue with um, Agadia was just drawing. But I think it's because I used Vibration, yeah, yeah. I think my issue with Agadia was because I was using him for like Ketter's realization, but the issue is Ketter's realization is really specific fights. Like Agadia works, but he's not. It's not properly um, ideal for that. In 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 another reception, then Agadia would be good, but Ketter when I used him wasn't ideal, especially the hands. <laughs> He was good for tanking bullet shots, though. After a I didn't, I, yeah, I didn't use Argalia during Distorted, which is, I don't know why I didn't. I think it's because I decided to go with what I was comfortable with. Yeah, Kenta realization moment was with, yeah, Argalia wasn't ideal for that. Choosing the right office is also important, but you can worry about that later. Only the skilled ones can afford to make choices, like the client offers from offices, or has to be tra tra transferred to another. Newcomers who've just become fixers or incompetent planks just can't who just can't handle their work properly should be content if any officer accepts them. Alright, so at least like what's it called? Finn was able to pass the tests of uh, to become a fixer at least. He managed to pass these tests at least, so that's cool. Okay, grade seven fixer page one. Really, it does does being a fixer sound cool to you? I suppose it seems nicer than the legs of rats swarming about in the back streets. It does have a personal char professional charm to it, too. But this is a tough job, I tell you. It may be better for you to try and enter a small company and do desk work instead. If you really believe fixes are cool, but let me tell you something. Oh yeah, right. Um, Emma and Noah were just office workers, weren't they? Of fixes have to risk their lives at every moment. I know it sounds silly. Everybody, everyone already struggles and fights for their life. So what's so special about us? But at least you won't have to hear of your friend's death while you're having lunch. You pack your favorite food, savor its taste, and when you're about to swallow it, know how it feels to choke on it. Your head, your friend's head suddenly rolls over to your feet. Things just happen sudden, happen like that. Damn. Syndicate so grunts. Oh yeah, this is the thing that was talked about. 
in a hook. Or was it one of the other ones? The Syndicate Raids. And it's kind of late, but look at look for this team uh slash what? Oh T. Uh Shwaha Tang. Oh Korean tea. Uh deep brown colour. Boiling medicinal herbs. Oh I see, interesting. I like tea by I haven't actually like experimented much of it. Or like tried different kinds too much. I see, I see. Oh yeah, they did talk about tea in Salvador's um intro, to be fair, I think. Are you still not convinced? Cynical or fixer? Once you set foot in this business, all the things will bind you like shackles, slowly dragging you to the bottom. The sheer weight is going to tire you, and you no longer be willing to go back up. Go back and think again carefully. It's not too late for you to make the right choice. I see. Yeah, it's like even then you're just stuck working as a fixer. They don't exactly enjoy their jobs, huh? You need to be really high up to actually like get something out of it. Who said a fixer is a free man? Must have been some no good show off who told you that. Kid, that's just our name, our dream and nothing more. Fixers are managed by offices. Most of our jobs come from the requests of the offices the offices get. So we're virtually out of work without them. And offices are managed by 12 associations. On top of those 12 is the Hana Association. Our lives are subordinate to the layer upon layer of hierarchy. I'd love to hear where that supposed freedom is according to them. Because I don't see it. Ah, there's only one way to achieve that pipe dream. A fixer's freedom is only truly complete when they're given the colour. Oh! By the Hana Association. Don't go around proclaiming that you'll become one of the colours though. You think that... You think it's easy to break from these massive fetters? I see, yeah. It really... Yeah. Like, free will and like... You're just stuck where you are, pretty much. And like, the colours are only like these like, big... Um... Powerhouses. Like, with Gabura is because she got the ego. Argalia was... Is pretty strong. Same with Black Fixer, I guess Vermilion Cross as well. The gap with Fixers um, gets bigger with the fact that money can buy a lot of the skill and strength that no one can hope to achieve, yeah. In this world, well, the city, um, you're really... You really need the money to even get anywhere. Training and stuff helps, but even that has its limits. Uh, it's a really downtrodden world, that's for sure. Our syndicates well acquainted the guys at the hook office. Oh, I see. We used to chop and rip and tear together before they moved to the fixer business. You were the best buddies. The two syndicates had a wonderful time with each other. Oh, what if maybe the syndicate that the hook office got paid by was the axe was the axe syndicate? You thought fixers and syndicates were enemies for life? We still do some help to them sometimes. Well, you could say it's a long-standing love-hate relationship. Usually a syndicate causes a scene, things just come over to take care of it. But think about it for a sec. If syndicates didn't exist, more than half of all offices would be out of the job. Essentially unemployed, you get it? Symbiotic relationship right there. So don't be so cold to us. <laughs> it really is a cycle, huh? Sure it's a cycle. And a similarity with the real world is a coincidence. Ha! <laughs> Uh, no comment. I'm sure you can... I'm sure people can obviously draw parallels. <laughs> and some fixtures often cooperate with snickers to handle cases. You know, it's not like dogs and cats constantly fight each other when we bring them together, yeah? That's sort of logic. Well, to be fair, the city is a lot worse, but then... Uh, not to get too deep. <laughs> we syndicates do the things fixtures can't dare, don't dare take care of. I heard some officers straight up ban killing people. Even. Something about life being precious or and whatevs. It's bullcrap. Anyway, let's have syndicates and fixers complement each other. There's some crooks you'd want dead for sure before they could complicate things, you see? Man, talking about them makes me miss my old friends. Don't get to meet these pals often these days. I might as well storm the hook some hook offices this time around. See some familiar faces. <laughs> Isn't it hard to see an office hiring a syndicate to make a scene? So they're hired to clean the mess. Oh, true, yeah. Like, I, I wouldn't put it past some offices being corrupt like that. Like, even, um... 
was it Streetlight or was it one of these ones? One of the earlier ones. I think Hook talked about um, lies and stuff, how some officers lie about their capabilities or their offers. So I wouldn't put it past them. I wouldn't put it past them, in all honesty. Wings hire syndicates, yeah. We yeah. If we don't see no male arbiters and no female claws, does this mean um, can't join A and C Corp? Uh, I don't think it's that bad. I don't think it is. I don't think it's that restrictive. We'll see. I don't think it's that restrictive, to be honest. To be fair, I've only seen a few. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So I don't think it's that restrictive, in all honesty. If you think the syndicates are nothing more than a gangs of ugly and bad guys, Daniel said he can join ACOP. Yeah, Daniel, Daniel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Daniel mentioned that. Yeah, he mentioned that, at least. But it'd be fun, it'd be, I can't imagine Daniel as a claw or arbiter. He's just, he, he seems way too nice. I can't imagine him going around being like, Lo, you fucked up the cease and desist, die. <laughs> or, I'm gonna bring judgment to, upon you and just do shockwaves. <laughs> I don't think, yeah, I don't think Daniel or would be could work in that, like that. Honestly, he's way too nice. Um, let me tell you, there's an outdated bias. Of course, we're free of fixers so to follow orders and requests from associations. A lot of us kill people and do some wicked shit for the sake of cash. I'll give you that. Others aren't too different from your average fixers, I'm telling you. We get requests and solve problems, but our group's moral compass is tilted a bit to the dark side. Goff Daniel. <laughs> I mean, he could get vicious like in the suppression, but he needs to be pushed to the point of despair. So I can't give you an example myself. I said before, if Daniel ever ended up in A Corp, he'd be in managerial position from combat. True. Though, imagining Arbiter Chesed is funny. <laughs> I mean, two of the two of two Arbiters look the same. Likes to join, likes to join A Corp. You need to be black haired, crazy philosophy tea like her woman. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Maybe Zena likes coffee. <laughs> we'll see. We don't know much about Zena, to be honest. Besides that encounter. I know, I feel like Zena is a bit less philosophical than Bina. Like, Bina seems older than Zena. At least. Right, some syndicates actually do heroic stuff. Syndicates hunting syndicates, I asked them. Hell, man, why aren't you guys just becoming fixers instead? And they said, they don't really like it, since they don't really want to get tangled in some formal stuff. That's just too much to prepare to get licensed and everything. Well, who say syndicates can't be the good guys? We're living as we like in the back streets. Hmm, true. The syndicates seem a bit more freer, like, it's more professional as an office and fixer, but then syndicates are more freer. But then again, we got also, um, FUM. Well, FUM is also like, we act like, they're like a mafia, to be fair. They like, they act composed, but they're also cruel and rigid. Bina was stuck, yeah true, for like years upon years. But then again, will she remember, I don't, I don't think Bina remembers the cycles though, does she? I don't know. We've, we've only ever seen the ones affected by cycles was, well, who don't remember anything, were uh, Isaiah and Briya. At Zalif, I don't know if they, were, if they remember every cycle or not. But then again, I don't think they would because otherwise, Bean, well, Bina maybe, but Hokma, I don't think Hokma would have remembered every cycle because he'd have gone insane, I think. Unless I'm underestimating his mental capab capability. Well, if P P Moon wants to make it easy to make an excuse that only women can become arbiters due to some BS, something in genes or BS. Maybe, but to be fair, yeah. Like how the Panem, like, Bina is then like mother and daughter. <laughs> I mean, Zena is, like, obviously younger than Bina. Only Angela, Hokuma, and Bina remember. Okay, cool. So Hokuma has a mind that is so good. Then yeah, they can with like, Hokuma and Bina could... Oh, wait, to be fair. Angela also experiences time at a slower speed. Um, Bina was already not so. Well, not not so, but, like, she was already dealing with extraction. So she's mentally... 
stable enough. And Hokumai guessed because he knows everything. He's able to take it calmly, to be fair. Yeah, well, Angela had the whole dilemma. Like, she wanted to change things, but she couldn't. And also, she had the whole thing with um, timing, time being extra slow for her. Bina was hard-coded to never go mad. Pretty much, yeah. She's really capable. Alright, now we're in Urban Plague. We're half halfway there. Ish. <laughs> we're halfway there ish. My faith in Sir Ian exceeds mental corruption. Pretty much, yeah. Of endless mind rending cycles. Yeah, to be fair. Yeah. Hokuma's got like this big like he's capable, like really capable. <laughs> Alright, carnival. I love how it's just you don't put the mask on them. Even for this. I love how the carnival uh, placeholder wasn't even one of the characters. They're not even, they, ha they all have names, but it's just the carnival. There are many important things to consider as a fixer, and attire is one of them. Oh, yeah, clothes, yeah. How clothes also are good. Wasn't that entire time? Yeah, Angela, oh, yeah, true, 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 yeah. Angela killed him later on because um, Benjamin was hiding. Um, he was hiding in architecture for a while before Angela killed him and then he became Hokma. True, true, true. Good point, good point, good point. Yeah. True. Because, yeah, Hok Angela only found him in architecture later on. Fixtures attire is the most effective way to signify the image of an office. Oh yeah, because they all have uniform. It's important for an office to show that it has formality and class. Most offices have a set dress code for that reason. As much as it's necessary to choose the right attire, according to code, the most important factor is the fabric that's made of. Quality fabric can offer better protection, lighten the wearer's weight for quicker movement, or allow the wearer to carry heavy weapons as large as their bodies. Okay, so even clothes can give buffs. Those who create and provide such fabric are called tailors. We are tailors who consume, in pe consume people and make silk out of them. Whether it's melting people inside our belly and congealing them in a mold, or it's unraveling humans into a thread they're really made of. The fundamentals do not matter. The technology doesn't originally belong to us. We really took hold of a technology that came off pattern when a wing was broken. Oh, I see more of that stuff. The only thing that matters is that silk made from humans has strength that differentiates it from ordinary thread. Only those who crave it visit us. Right. Also, yeah, this does kind of a line that Novo fabric is real nice. <laughs> That's stacker resist. Let's go. But yeah, it's also interesting where like it really, I, I really appreciate um, Yasod's. Um, Seed of Light applied to the city. I really appreciate um, your sons. One, it's like this, um, the rationality to maintain discretion. I do appreciate it in the context of the city a lot. Like, let's say this for example. Like, oh, these clothes are super good, but they're made of human. They're made of humans, so that's where the discretion from um, your sword comes in, which is kind of I like it. It's it's, it's a good way to view. But it's a good way to view the technology of the city, just with discretion, because they're all they're really unethical. <laughs> I don't really get how Angela kills Benjamin, trying to him to Hokuma every time. Like one cycle, human? No, 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 no. Um, I think, I think it's only once. It only needs to happen once before Hokuma gets. I don't think, I don't think Hokuma dies every cycle. I think. Is it? I don't think that's the case, is it? I don't think Benjamin dies every cycle, is it? I don't think so. I, I think... What's his name? Um, Adam Abram... Yeah, Abram, Abram. I think Abram explained it. There's something talking about how Benjamin got trapped in a weird way within a TTP, yeah. I think it's like Benjamin's message, the one he sends in the early yeah the recording we heard is saved in the cycle um because of t the singularity yeah the recording is saved so that he, that means he the message will always play out on a specific day but then benjamin will all 
is always is already Hogma. After he dies once. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I think Abraham explains it when you meet him in day 46. Yeah, Abraham explains it more better. But yeah, the recording is saved as part of the cycle after afterwards. Abel, Abel. Okay, because Abraham, yeah, Abraham, Abraham is the one who's um, the tired-looking guy. Uh, Adam is the one who's God, who thinks he's God. And Abel, okay, that's Abel. Okay, that's Abel. Okay. Gain, gain. Because Abraham sounds like an older name, so I assume I assumed that was the first guy. <laughs> it makes him sound older. But okay, that was Abel. Okay. We are tailors who consume and make people silk. Oh wait, melting inside our bellies. Cloth weaved weaved from human silk possesses various powers depending on the human strength. Some humans may have a strong body, another may be fragile but wise, and yet another may flaunt incredible strength. Oh, this silk reflects the characteristics of the human it was made from. There are many forms and powers of cloth, as there are humans in the world. Therefore, there is a uh, is more to being a tailor than simply weaving silk carefully. Picking the right person to meet the demands of the client the most. Alright, interesting. Oh no, I became machine. Oh no, I turned... Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't think that's the case with Pokma. <laughs> that would have been a bit something. There is... There is more to being tailor than simply saving more. Picking the right person to meet the demands of the client is most important. Hastily making silk out of human that looks courageous on the outside. Oh, I see. Might end up yielding useless cloth that does nothing but bolster courage. So one must be careful with picking the right material. I see, I see, I see. It just does... I see, I see. Not every piece of fabric is accessible, however. More than cash to purchase high class fabric. One must earn the favor of tailors first and foremost. Many tailors will only give their best fabric once the trust between them and their client has been established after a complex ton of events. Because of that, tailors who make high quality fabric usually belong to an organization and create cloth exclusively for them. But we are different. Until the index gave us a prescript, we did our work without taking orders from anyone, unchained to any syndicate or other organization. We were free, as some may call it. Eat sweeper. Oh, um, right. Prescript eight three seven two nine two eight. Eat fifteen sweepers and extract silk from them to make fabric. Oh, I see. I see. I see. Interesting. So the, the carnival themselves. There's lots of other tailors, but the carnival themselves were just doing whatever for their own benefit, rather than working for someone or like following specific orders. I see. Interesting. All right. Full stop. A color is the dream and lifetime goal of all fixtures to wish for freedom. Those who have been assigned a color are called the colors. A color is the part of the fixer in associations. They put forward the colors as great and successful people that... <clears throat> they put forward the colors as great and successful people that other fixers will look up to. They dream of earning wealth and fame and to be free like them one day. Colors are assigned by HANA Association. They're bundled into such a category because the HANA deemed them to be the most ideal fixers, because they're the most adequate individuals to deal with the stars of the city. The title of a color is forcibly given to fixers to qualify. Essentially, qualify essentially. Can a fixer truly be happy with freedom that was forcibly handed to them? Interesting. The sweepers made novel fabric. Yeah, yeah. They made novel fabric and then, um, they made the Nouveau fabric, but then um, Reverb Botania. Reverb Botania stole it from Kurokumo. Does that mean um, Priest Christ mentioned that Ensemble gets good cloth? Um, the Priest Christ. Um, maybe. I mean, I guess you could you could view it that the Priest the the will of the city was that. Oh yeah, we asked the Carnival to um, make the sweeper Norfolk fabric but then it's like cool and then um, the Kurokuma clan takes it and then through the whole will of the city stuff it um, it would it would inevitably end up in the hands of 
the reverberation. <laughs> I guess it's the way to make suits. <laughs> it's the one way to get the suits. The city knows everything, even the future. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? It's like the city, the will of the city is really interesting. As in, you can choose whether to believe in the will of the city or not, in all honesty. Like, it's not concrete. You're, you're free to interpret, interpret it as you want, whether it's truly a random stuff or there is like some sort of big will like for example with um yan's fake um prescripts this the will of the city knew about that so it's interesting white colors of all terms when there are many other stylish ways to choose from i have no comment to make since i don't know the reason myself my assumption is that colors are used because giving people hues representative of them is it easier to remember the refer and remember them by? It may not be the answer you're expecting, but it can't be helped. The colors have their own ways of working. They have basically nothing in common. It's good to have visible colors have their own vibrant characteristics. In that sense, the term colors is an entirely off putting. Hmm. Yes, yeah, look, the whole color thing is like. It would be nice to, to meet more colors eventually. Um, you've met. Black Silence, Red Mist, Vermilion Cross. Oh yeah, does that mean Vermilion Cross will come back normal, or would he be? Would he still be fucked up because of? Uh, I guess no, no. I yeah, I guess I don't know. I don't know how. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah, I guess he just comes back as a body. <laughs> Cause yeah, Elena. Oh wait, true. We never, we never actually got a book for Vermilion Cross, huh? We just killed him. The will of the city is controlling the head. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, he probably, he was Elenified, yeah. And that we, we didn't actually get a Vermilion Cross book. <laughs> he was just dead. We didn't actually get anything. So when he killed, when we, we need book, when we defeated him, we got no books from him. True. <laughs> All right, Stefan. Few fixtures use gun for self-defense. Bullets cost an arm and a leg, and foes who are relatively powerful tend to dodge bullets like it's nothing. They can barely graze them. There's not a lot of ways to react to enemies coming in either. Let's be quick on the draw and shoot them in weak spots. If you aren't, the other options are running away or grabbing some prop to guard yourself. Like hell, that'll save you. It takes several augmentation procedures to be able to carry something as heavy as a firearm and run fast enough. If you're a sniper, you'd be busy picking up your weapon mount and everything. Have to make necessary big movements. And what if your precious gun gets damaged if you try blocking your foes with it? Oh, I was talking about the kinds of guns me and Tamaki use, not firearms in general. You see what Luwei is carrying? Heard there were lighter rifles and some that come with bayonets for close quarters combat. You'd like the, like the fun. Um, there's a Vermilion mod that can get his pages. Ah, I see. Interesting. Yeah, I think, he, yeah, we didn't get his book because he was already dead. He was just like a puppet. Oh, well, yeah, he was like a puppet, but like dead, dead. Like, at least with the puppets that we got from um, the reception, they were still um, alive to some extent. All right. That's also why we didn't get puppet Angelica's books, because he was dead, dead. Yeah, the puppets still have a consciousness, except for Angelica. But mind you, those guns have a um, fair set of downsides, so don't be too quick to buy them. You might as well save the money and get a quality workshop weapon or an augmentation surgery. Hell, you could probably buy a fine weapon with the money it takes to buy bullets for target practice. You weren't planning on using guns in actual fights without ever practicing, were you? I mean, go ahead, if you really want dislocated shoulders and seven fingers. Despite all this, there are still workshops that manufacture guns like us for people who use them. Guns are just comfortable to use. Those heavy taxes won't be a problem as long as you use guns for such intended purposes. How many defenseless thugs standing in the middle of the street can notice a bullet flying towards them? Of course, it'd be better to get specifically made workshop devices that use a specific terminology to muffle the sound of gunfire. But don't worry too much. There's currently no technology in our world that can completely, completely cancel out noise. Oh yeah, true, even like... With, wait, 
With black silence, did that completely cancel noise or is it more muffled? Like, um, yeah, tell, <laughs> tell you a lot of good bullets. <laughs> Wait, because with black silence, did that completely nullify noise or was that just muffled the noise? And it won't exist in the foreseeable future. Yeah, you don't need to take a take. You need that. You don't, you don't need that to make guns work, though. All it takes is a vintageous situation. Yeah, foreshadowing. You can still hear. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can still hear the method. So, yeah, even with black silence, they can't. Um, you know. Um, do it out. They can't close it out. They can't fully be silent. Hmm. What do you think about heads, the head and gun stuff? Um, wasn't the head was like, there's a lot of taxes on guns and bullets and stuff or something? I kind of get why, because... I guess, I don't know, maybe the head fights purely by range. <laughs> so it makes bullets really unwieldy, as in they don't, they don't want bullets to be common. So maybe the head fights at range instead. Maybe? Or maybe it's better for the city to have, like, guns are, like, seen as, like, in the modern world, at least. Guns are seen, in, in our world, let's say, um, guns are seen as, like, the B.O. Well, as in terms of, like, personal personal weapons, guns are pretty much the B.O. endo weapon. Um, it's, like, the ultimate, like, ultimate weapon in terms of, like, personal, personal weapons, like, a gun will beat a sword fight, but if guns weren't around, you'd have people going for more variety. Spears, swords... I guess maybe the head wants to encourage a more varied um, weapon array, instead of just guns. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, it may cause purges in the back, true. I mean, if, if, if guns were accessible as well, people would die extra faster, like, faster than normal. <laughs> there aren't many rushes that can craft guns. Setting aside the low demand, in Gay's office reception was mentioned at teleological expense if we don't use um, visuals. I see, interesting. The, the, the head doesn't want the old world gun meta to come back. Yeah, that's the thing, like, the game is post apocalyptic, if I remember correctly, from Lobotomy Corp. So, maybe. maybe. Maybe the head knows how the old world worked. And they don't want the old world, old world to come into fruition like it did before. Hmm. Maybe, maybe actually, or maybe um, I don't know. You could theorize that maybe the apocalypse happened because of sentient AI, which is why now the head has the, these laws about AI and cloning. Maybe that, maybe AI and cloning is what brought about the end of the world last time, which is why the head now. Um, in, uh, has those laws against robotics and clones. That's one theory, that's for sure. Alright. Um, setting aside the difficulty of acquiring a firearm manufacturing license and the head strict guidelines are biggest limitations. The guidelines include cause Cause it's like the maximum length of the gun barrel must be shorter than a higher, shorter of a higher the caliber is. All right, so you can't have super long range, high caliber weapons, pretty much. No gun should possess the firepower to penetrate steel or building walls. Gunfire must be audible. And I haven't heard. Yeah, guns are heavily nerfed in this universe, in the city. Like guns. Like, even guns in our world can go through walls and steel. <laughs> These are some weak bullets comparatively to even the ones we have in real life. Like, gunfire must be audible and we have silencers. So it does seem like the head is avoiding, like, current gun meta, so you say. <laughs> the first page of the guideline body states do not research or imagine technology by infringing the firearm manufacturing guidelines and provided by the head along the license interesting do not research or imagine like how would they like how does the head um <laughs> uh what's it called imagine thoughts then interesting 
Like how not imagine, but like, how do they like mind read then? Hmm. I don't want to know the details, and frankly, I don't want to be know any more than that. But certainly, our works just permit to make S-class firearms. I'm guessing there's only three to five of them in the entire city. Who do they take requests from? Where are they? And what kind of people run them? They're all a mystery. I can hear there was a rumor that an S-class workshop exists somewhere. Also, oh, I imagine Atelier is um is Atelier was it Atelier, the gun one, maybe. Hmm. All right, Dawn Office. This full of something. Atelier Logic manufactures guns, while Christian Atelier is dual blades. Now, they two sets of the same workshop. I find this interesting. Hmm. I mean, Atelier means like um, Atelier. I've seen the term before. I don't think. Um, I don't think they're the same because it's based on what Atelier. Atelier means workshop. Yeah, Atelier means workshop in French. So it could just be, um, yeah, it could just mean like logic workshop and then crystal workshop. Oh, still a bit more to go. Whoops. <laughs> Did you read? No, no, no. I missed, I messed up. Whoops. There's still more here. They don't want, yeah, people save at the head, um, make their own bullets. Yeah. So logic, logic workshop. People say that the, the head put heavy restrictions um, on firearms because they don't want distance to be harmed too easily. It's true that a gun can effortlessly kill a person with one well-placed shot. That's not all. The assailant doesn't even have to show themselves to attack, and a flying bullet is simply too fast for the average person, making it a fine weapon for stealthily killing. But making it hard to kill people doesn't seem a good reason to impose such restrictions. What about countless other triflings and useless methods that exist to kill people? I just cannot understand that they would see this as a solely philosophical issue. Are you are you asking if it's because the wings don't have sufficient technical expertise? I'm not here for senseless, senseless chatter. The wings could easily make superior weapons with better technology. There's no reason they couldn't improve upon current designs. There are probably some people who feel the same as me. We don't question it further or just tr or try to dig into the truth because, well, they have their hands full making ends meet and they don't want to risk losing it all meddling in business secrets, I suppose. That is that and this is this, pretty much. Roland's, ro 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 Roland's old mentality, I guess by this point. Maybe it's improved now. Yeah, that's pretty much the whole... There's questions to be asked, but that is that, this is this, we just move on because they're so busy trying to live that they can't afford to take some time to actually think about this stuff. It's interesting. Alright, Salvador. Case name, Thousand Needles. Oh, this is the, this is the thing they did last time. Um, serial code DN00113, Urban Legend. Date occurrence, something... Um, whatever year, whatever month, on the 21st. Oh, maybe... No, this is year, month, day. Or is it... Yeah, year, month, day. The document is a compilation of relevant information on the case of the Thousand Needles, which occurred in the back streets of 20, District 22. While a clear conclusion has yet to be made, expected to speculate to be a case of distortion based on apparent inability to confirm the cause or analyze the composition. Okay, so, all right, yeah, Thousand Needles is a distortion. The first apparent source of the incident was wandering the back streets of District 22 before swelling up and exploding. Hunch numerous needles were dispersed upon explosion, flying in all directions. The needles were stuck onto buildings, caused uh, walls, caused a site of impact to melt and crack. When a human was struck with one of the needles, they were transformed into AO2. Oh, this, this is like reading an abnormality um, codex. <laughs> they were transformed into AO2, going through the same... Okay, so they just explode. The orange symbol the nape of AO1's neck was also found on the needles discharged from its body. When they arrived on the scene after making a request, taking the request, the bits of flesh scattered around the streets began to merge into one giant body using a brainstem focus resonator, coming 3 meters tall, 
10 foot mass that I will refer to as AO3. AO3 began throwing large needles, length of which varied from 1 to 3 meters. Unlike the small needles fired from the explosion of AO1 or AO2, that could only be leave small dents on the building structures, the giant needles flung by AO3 caused buildings to helplessly melt. In addition, local residents who stared into the entity's eyes or holes in its body soon produced a boiling sun before turning to AO2, trying to forbid people from observing it closely. AO1 visited office to give a request four days prior to the incident. Oh, a person. Oh! Is, oh, I see. Yesterday's promise. Prior to the incident, refer to audio transcript for testimony from fix sort of thing. Judging by what they said, such as made a deal with the devil, and terrible things will happen if I break the contract. It's speculated that yesterday's promise is behind the incident. Ah. I see. Right, so I guess, um, I think, I guess when our Gallia was still going around the place, they were trying to recruit distortions. So maybe Needles would have been one. I don't think they planned for Philip, but I see, I see. Even though he was guided, guided to get, this is all in a line to get Philip to get distorted. Who knows? Depends how much you want to see it as a mastermind sort of plot. Audio transcript of testimony from Fixer. Needles is created by Pluto. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but Pluto works with Argalia. So it could have been part of the plan to like either recruit, rec yeah, either recruit Needles or recruit, or it was a plan to get um, someone to distort as a result of Needles. Who knows? I'm fine. Can I just talk, can I talk about this? Okay, got it. When was it? A person visited our office last Wednesday, if I remember correctly. They introduced themselves as an ordinary resident of the back streets of District 22. They said they needed help. There were bags under his eyes and their hair was a tangled mess. Their eyes were lifeless and blurry and there was some sort of symbol on their neck. As if they had been attacked by a stigma workshop product. Their desperation was palpable. We couldn't even walk straight, and they were strained to approach me with awkward steps. I must have calmed them down and they said, I'm sorry. Uh, why do you need to recruit on creation when it's under your control? I mean, to be fair, I, 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 think, I guess it's more like, I mean, as in recruit in terms of like, being part of the ensemble, I mean, that's what I mean. Being as part of the big ensemble group, maybe, potentially. Like, I don't think, if, if Yan distorted, um, I don't think Argalia would have would have been against recruiting Yan, for example. If he was there to see him distort. I don't think he'd have been against that. If we didn't deal with Yan right away. For example. Unless they wanted to go with the member limit to have a full ensemble with the right instruments, maybe. Um, they couldn't walk straight. They were strained to approach me with Augusta. I managed to calm them down and they said, I'm sorry. I'm not sure how to explain it. In short, they made a contract with a devilish person of some kind. If they were scared, they might break the contract. So they were now asking for us to take care of the devil so it can't kill them as punishment. I still don't get what he's talking about, even though I'm talking about it. To be frank, I just couldn't understand what they were talking about. What they were saying. Um, not just because their level of knowledge and manner of speech was lamentably inferior now. All they uttered was a series of hysteric words they let out they let out like they were possessed by something. I can't dare to describe them. They kept saying confusing things like dust will skewer people's heads and make a necklace out of them to offer it. We keep getting closer. They're multiplying in numbers. They're approaching from me from inside me. Over mysteriously bright glint in their eyes. Oh our office records counselling um, with our clients by principle. Records counselling. You'll see how confusing this whole situation was if I give you this file a listen. Don't worry. We record them with the client's consent and everything. So there's nothing illegal about this. But recording... What can I do? Really? The whole thing to deal with the devil thing that sounds unrealistic. I honestly thought they were lying. So I may have an excuse to turn them away. I see. Imagine a humanoid needle to go against the library. And just go needles versus hod. Please. <laughs> if we, I guess at least we learned about needles here, but <laughs> it's the same thing with Greta. Please. 
I don't think Needles had as much. I mean, we had Yuna kill Needles anyway. So. <laughs> I, I am curious what the hell the need the contract Pluto gave to Needles, but. Mm. I think it was last Monday. Derry said something strange to me. He told me they made a con. Oh, Derry. Derry's the name of the person. Contract. And they said they were scared they might break it. They said they don't know what horrifying penalty they'll have to face upon breaking the contract. But it also means that this Derry person was like almost gonna form an ego. Interesting. Channel meme. Greta versus Hod. Ha! It's more because I just like Hod a lot. Like, she's my favorite Sephira. So. I just, I don't know. I, and the more I mention it, the more it just happens. So I'll just, I'll just, I'll hold my tongue. <laughs> it was done is done. So we'll see what more hot stuff we get in the future. <laughs> they said they don't know what horrifying. I tried to calm them down, saying they should be fine as long as they don't breach the contract. But Derry got ticked off. When it's unfair, we're supposed to comply with unfavorable terms. He didn't find print. When he broke to tears, saying we're doomed anyway. We apparently agreed to do free tasks in exchange for getting power. Oh, okay. Greta for another one summon to fight Hod. Who would you choose? Honestly, um, I feel like Hod fits Philip as well, to be honest, because, like, I think Hod fits Philip's as well, because, like, you have Philip thinking he's a better person and all that stuff and trying to be one but then he just flops horrifically about it trying to be a good person so I could see Philip fitting with Hod but then Malkuth I love the way they did it's clever it's really clever the way they did standing up straight but with Mal but as a as a weird distorted version of it pretty much with um Philip I love the way they did that um to be a better person who would fit like with someone else? You could you could maybe put um, Elena, maybe. Like we did see that she kind of like she's capable of being a good person. We saw that. Well, she was using she was using them, but you could argue that she could have been a better person based on how she was during the whole warp train thing. She was a good nurse. Um, but and also it's the, it's, it's, it's the talk they had with um, she had with Bina where it's like oh yeah I, like she was thinking about how at first the whole eating stuff thing eating people thing then it was like nah I don't care but then it's like it works well with also Bina's break the cycle thing well the opposite um, Elena just didn't care enough to like she didn't try to break the cycle of eating people as a blood fiend she just continued doing as she is um i honestly the thing with greta i feel is more because i feel i just wish there was more build up like give me something give me a reception with the eight chefs give me something where greta escapes or something because like um at least with like Eileen, we didn't fight her at all, but we had gears come in, gear worshippers, and also we had the whole build up with full stop office and then her hanging out with our Galia. So we had that at least. Everyone else gets build up to some extent, even Bremen. Bremen had links to Pianist and also as we're going through now, they, are, they, are, they were mentioned by Jack and Pierre. Like uh, the only build up Greta got was um, was uh, eight chefs, and then by the end of it, when they're all together, and then when when, he, when um, the index hung up the bodies of um, the farm people for that for the but well, not not for them to collect, but like but yeah, they collected the bodies of the farm to use for the puppetry and also for um, Greta to cook. <laughs> But then, otherwise, yeah. I think it's just more the fact that Greta had nothing to build up. Like, barely anything to build her up. Like, let's go. Cool. Like, you could, like, come up, like, 
like like what I did before the ensemble fight was like try to guess who would match with who. Like I got I got a bunch wrong, but even then it's like um like even Oswald for example. Um like with Oswald we had build up with him with um Philip, we had build up with him um with Noah, Emma. So yeah, and then obviously we learn about his we learn about his philosophy once we do fight Tifereth, but like the clash of like Oswald's whole it really mirrors it mirrors a bit of Tifereth back in Lobotomy Corp. Like don't care about expectations for the future. Live in the now and like don't care about the future, don't like nihilism but like nothing in life matters sort of thing. Well, Tiferif now is like she wants to look ahead to the future like Enoch did. So that really was brilliant. Um, with Gre- <laughs> we're back to talk about Greta. <laughs> um, with Greta, it was like I want people to be better people because they become they make good food because otherwise because if people are better people they won't selfishly either hog all the foods themselves event causing people down below to starve and become worse food so better people are ones who taste better and are better ingredients which works i get it i get it <laughs> i don't know i just i just wish we had i don't know it's not as much of a clash of ideals in that sense in the sense that hod wasn't hod, hod has no chance of being like yeah, I can understand you. It's like, no, fam, that's cannibalism. What the hell's this? <laughs> There's no way I, I can agree with this. Like, Greta's one is like, ingredients. Better people make good ingredients. So it's like... <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this is like the fifth time now. <laughs> um, imagine a... Pl- one, yeah. Watch when, watch, watch when we get all the way down to here and we actually get to talk about her for actual proper purposes. Maybe this will re- maybe this will redeem her. Maybe. Maybe this will redeem her. But anyway, back to <laughs> Back to Yuna. Um, imagine the plot twist that actually Greta is part of Philip. <laughs> I get that you're hiding that Greta is your favourite character, not hot. Ha! <sighs> but yeah, like, yeah, it's more because I feel this way because Hod's my favorite Sephira. <laughs> like, Tifereth really rose up the ranks in terms of like how much I like her. Like, she really got some good stuff, and then Oswald was a really good foil to Tifereth. Like, surface level is that like it's like oh yeah, um, Oswald is like Jester of Nihil to some extent on the surface level but then there's also stuff like their ideal Id- their um, philosophies clashing really really well and it being a mirror of Tifereth's how she was in the past so <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll see when we get to reading Greta's page stay tuned for that probably next stream we're like five hours in and we're still on Don Office. <laughs> I mean, so maybe Greta is someone's favorite character, and power to them. <laughs> I think it's just more the grouping, rather, or the, just having more build up to her. But anyway, we're talking about needles here as a distortion, not Greta. Do I have to recall that messed up memory? Uh, from District Resident 2. Alright. If it's necessary to prevent another incident from happening, I guess there's no choice. You can record it, sure. I don't remember everything that happened. That had, every, uh, I don't remember everything that happened, actually. That day was like any other, except Derry showed up in the streets after going missing for a few days, looking awfully gaunt. Other than that, the weather was normal, the streets were the same as always. I know. That's when the incident started. Derry was walking around the street, mumbling something. Though he didn't seem to be heading in a specific direction. 
as if they were starting off into space and forcibly dragging their feet along. It did seem strange. They said strange things like keeps coming or boiling. They were always a bit of a weirdo, so it didn't bother me too much. <laughs> but then Derry's bodies began swelling up. All I could think at that moment was how funny they looked. Expanding, expanding like a balloon. It seems unre unrealistic. Maybe it was the shock of confronting an evil situation paralyzing the human brain, or a brain beginning to believe that it's only a dream and marveling at the scene. But I was standing still and staring at what was going on. Am I really in reality? But before I could gather myself up, the incident happened. Derry's body blew up and thousands of weird needles went. Mrs. Madrid, who was uh, standing in front of me, was struck. Yeah, the guy with the weird tattoo, yeah. That was um, Pluto, yeah. That was Pluto. Mm hmm. That was Pluto. That was Pluto. So even Pluto. <laughs> Let's look into this again. <laughs> even Pluto got some, like, early foreshadowing at the very start. Oh, eight. <laughs> but then Pluto appeared again. Um. Pluto appeared again. Um. <laughs> Pluto appeared again. Um. With Ogalia. And then showed up ever since. Like with, um. Kane Office. Mm. <laughs> I see, I see. <laughs> I mean, I do get. I do get Greta. I just wish she had more to her. Or at least more build up to her. We'll talk more on Greta when we get to her. Unless something prompts this again. <laughs> Mrs. Madrid, who was standing in front of me, was stuck with one of the anal, with one of the needles. And her body swelled up and exploded into a shower of needles like Derry did. I luckily managed to get away without getting hit by any needles. I ran straight to this office without turning back once. And now... Now I don't think I can get back there. I wonder if anyone lived. My friend Midgen's... Midgen's alright. If my house is fine, I'm curious, but I just can't go back. I can't do it. What do I do? I don't want to go back to... The interviewer's breath became coarse and unstable afterwards. Recording was suspended as it was deemed the interview could no longer be proceed. No longer proceed. I guess at least she was given some comfort in a dawn office, at least. District 22 A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, B. V, v Corporation. No idea who that is. Alright, case office. A lot. Kane office? Oh, Kane office. Oh, right, they were hired by the Kane office, weren't they? Hmm. Kane Office is an all right. Kane Office wanted to investigate into W Corp's um, singularity because of the whole patent war and to make money and all that stuff. Kane Office is a notary public office that officially administrates administers uh, various matters when a contract is made between. <laughs> I love okay, Kai. I love the irony in that in that they dealt with Pluto then. <laughs> the unfair contract, dude. A notary public office preserves evidence involved in in contractual processes and cert cert certifies legal issues. Sometimes the office may play the role of a broker. All right, no wonder Pluto was involved with the Kane office. It really, um, it really uh, works together, huh? When you work with the Kane office, the process you have to follow will usually be simple. Outside of a few special cases. All you need is to do is to make a, a, a need to do is make a summary of all the details for the deal you're making and visit the office. And don't forget to take all the relevant documents with you. Notorial deed of promissory note, migration permit for the nest or the back streets of district, whatever deed of for a contract, and everything else related to the deal. If you safely finished your business with Kane Office, those documents will become powerful pieces of evidence that protect you in case of dispute, breakouts, for whatever reason. I see, I see. I guess Roland should have got his contract properly done through Kane Office, huh? A proper contract. He's obviously didn't have a charge mechanic. It would have fit in your opinion. Maybe PM decided it was too early. I think, yeah, too early, I guess. They did, like, at least, at the very least, um... At the very least, the Kane, the 
uh, Gay's office did have um, we did have like uh, paralysis at least they, they have a lot of they have they're more paralysis overcharged but it makes sense it's paralysis so it works out uh, yeah a lot of a lot of paralysis so it still works for them it, like I don't think we had much paralysis before this to be fair like yeah we, we didn't have much we didn't like our main source of paralysis was um these fools <laughs> was um these guys and also a little bit from everywhere else but the main paralysis is from um is from um this office from uh gaze at least so yeah this is the main source of paralysis at least so i, I see why they just went with that instead of charge Invo was it unstable charge wasn't it was one of their abilities <laughs> hold on i think it was unstable charge was one of theirs wasn't it Yeah, unstable charge was Bono, but it's base it's used for strength rather than charge. <laughs> so yeah, I get what you mean as well. They could they could have been charged potentially, but I guess yeah, mechanically it would have been it's for the best. Charge was introduced later on. All right, the lock. I like the lock's outfit a lot. Uh, the nest is home where the birds brood their eggs. They use their wings to devoutly protect their eggs from outside threat. Since such is the role of the nest and wings that constitute the city. Do the eggs represent people inhabiting the nest then? Not a chance. These eggs are the treasures that wings possess. Singularities. Technology that makes money. Featured in countless patents. Its residents are nothing more than feathers of the wings that serve to protect the eggs. A wing will end up falling when it loses too many of its feathers, but it won't bother to desperately protect all of its feathers since a wing or two will naturally grow back. They're basically expendables. 26. Wait. 26 wings. Wait a minute. 26 wings. Didn't someone say 27 somewhere? 25, rather? What was the 25 mentioned? Uh, where was 25? Someone mentioned 25. Um, and then there's 26 wings. So, there's, um, there's 26 wings, but 25. So then where is the 26? Yeah, it was here, wasn't it? Where is it? It was somewhere here. Uh, it was like 25? Hold on. One of them said 25. Hold on. Which one? What? Let me quickly check. One of them said 25 um, districts or whatever. So then there's 26 wings, but then... Hold on. Oh yeah, Arnold. Okay. Oh yeah, here. 25 nests and 26, 25 districts. But then there's 26 wings. How does that work? Where is where is this other wing? A, 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 a corporation does have a nest, right? So then there's 25 nests, 25 districts, but then there's 26 wings. What was up with that then? Huh. All right, interesting. There's 25, 26 wings, but then 25 nests. Yeah, Z is missing in the map. Interesting, interesting. All right, wonder what's up with that then. Unless Z is dead, there is no Z. There's, there is no Z Corp. There's no Z district, but I think there's a wing Z. Yeah, there's only 25 dis. Yeah, even um. Yeah, even one of these ones. Yeah, even Arnold mentioned it. But then it's 26 wings. So, who knows what's up with Z. With Z Corp, then. Unless Z Corp is on, is on another plane of existence. Or there is no Z Corp. 
And um, even though there's, there's no Z Corp at all, it does not exist. And there's, there's an open spot right now. Now, no, wait, no, that makes no sense then. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it's, it's, it's something that is intentional. I don't think... Maybe underground? Maybe. Z is Sweeper? Sweeper. Sweeper. <laughs> Sweeper Association. Sweeper Corporation. Hmm. Interesting. Well, that's something that's obviously a plot thread. It might be the personal preference of the Wings founder. But it was the singularity, but the cultural styles and social atmospheres varied from nest to nest. The Wings policies also determine the culture of the back streets that belong to it. Okay. Each wing has distinct sets of conducts. Some wings take a relatively cooperative approach to the back streets, while others thoroughly exploit them. The wings will be wings. Cooperation is just a fancy expression of taking advantage of the back streets, and the wings need them. If you can't afford to enter a wing and live in the back streets, you're better off settling in a district that suits you well. You still need a home and source of income, of course. I see. Alright, wait, wait, wait. Wait, so the. Corporations influence the culture of the back streets and thing. So, yeah, Pierre's one was what? District 20 to 23. So that's uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W. Yeah, W. So, right, that, that lends to the theory of W Corp having some influence on the whole like maybe a subconscious influence of people eating people because of the whole warp train stuff where more often than not people start eating each other so i couldn't yeah that that lends credence to this like cannibals in w corp hmm. j corp is las vegas interesting what's j stand for <laughs> oh we don't know yet interesting interesting all right cool yeah that lends that, that lends to the theory about the nest influencing the culture. I I guess Lobotomy Corp didn't have much like notable influence. Like as in, I don't. I think Lobotomy Corp nests, from what we know about it, barely was just normal. There wasn't much influence. Then again, I don't think Iron would have cared about how causing some influence on the nest. Um, at least maybe Z is on a ruin or outskirts. Maybe. Though I don't think they'd have... Yeah, El Corp is just normal. Yeah, El Corp is just normal. Except for the smoke war, but that's normal as well. Okay, interesting. I, I really want to see a corpse nest. Like, the one with the head. The corporation with the head under it. So, Iron is known to be kind. <laughs> I think he just didn't care about establishing a backstreet relationship. Like, he, all he had to, all he cared about was getting Carmen's goal achieved. The smoke war wiped out pretty much any idea of the L nest having any culture. Any cult? Yeah, I guess so. It was just, it was like a reset button. The smoke war pretty much was a reset button for when L Corp came in. It was like nothing, nothing there. <laughs> It's just there. It's a normal place. Well, Bono, you have nothing to say. Well, people are hung up on money. It's not because they want to be well off. The formidable tax burden is part of the why. No matter how humble your job is, you want a bunch of smokers. <laughs> Maybe that's where the smiling faces um, came in. They used to be part of the old L Corp, and then they just like, <laughs> they just fucked off somewhere else. <laughs> the head choice to destroy destroy uh destroy Z Corp with everything like a net true. Maybe just not have maybe just have Z Corp be by itself. Who knows? That's a mystery. As, um no matter how humble your job is, you're still obliged to pay your duties if you earn money. It goes for every type of business transaction. Even syndicates are no except no exception. Anyone living in a city has to pay taxes. If you don't meet the deadline, you get a warning. The first three offensives, you get a notice of warning and no other penalty. If you don't pay your taxes the fourth time, you're dead meat. They'll come for you. The eye will seek out tax evaders by any means. 
and the person it sends will rip those poor cheats to shreds. Oh, I see. The eye is like um, the surveillance of the city. They're like the overseers for the head. But just but the the eye is the overseer of the city. They keep track of all this stuff, while the claw the, the claw is pretty much the muscle, the ones who come in and do the killings and wreck shit up, pretty much. While arbiters come in to give judgment on like the bigger associations like uh, labs and like lobotomy corp, I guess. Except Mr. Tax Evasion Iron. I think he paid tax. <laughs> I think he paid tax. <laughs> oh, well, besides the tax from... Well, I mean, he had to have paid tax. Dare, even criminals dare, don't dare to tax evade. <laughs> mass, mass genocide, I sleep. Tax evasion, send 50 claws. <laughs> I think Iron paid his taxes. <laughs> At least. I don't think... Even whether you mean the original um, lab in the outskirts or <laughs> or um, the lobotomy corp, I don't think as a wing he'd have been like, "Lo, I'm not paying my taxes because I'm a wing." Then the claw comes in and kills everyone. <laughs> actually, um, while actually this is a this is a sim similarity with Yoshi. <laughs> actually, um. Um, so while we're here, I had this thought in my mind that I'm really not sure about, um, about the head. Like, alright, so we know the head's true reason for going after the library is because of, um, Angela being an AI, for example, um, and all that stuff. But like, the re- but the head didn't attack, um, like, I don't. Like, Angela wasn't made by when Carmen was like in the outskirts lab. Um, they didn't. Carmen wasn't made yet until after Bina attacked. Carmen wasn't made until afterwards. So then, how? Why did the head attack? Unless the head has some for future foresight to like see that. Oh yeah, this these fox are gonna make an AI. I'm gonna kill them now. So, like, like, what's it called? Like, one thing I don't know if it's a theory or if it's true. Like, Hod, like Hod reporting to the head. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, Angela wasn't Angela wasn't wasn't made yet. Um, when the when Bina attacked uh, the the original L Corp, well, the lab in the outskirts, um, Angela was not made yet. So then. Why did the head attack in the first place, then? Um, because, as in, I guess the theory, like, people are saying, oh, it's because of Angela. And, like, Hod warning, um, telling the head about um, the experiments um, was just nothing. And then Hod killed herself for no reason. Well, she was still upset that she, she thought she was the reason why... Um, the Botany Corp was attacked, so she killed herself. But it turned out n not really. It was just because of Angela. I guess, yeah, I guess the head can see the future to some extent. That, oh no, these guys are gonna make Angela. I can't let that happen. Time to kill them. And then I guess, but then, if, the, I don't know, if the head knows that, then why did they let. If one had a singer already made purple omnipotent but the head can also be omnipotent true 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 well omniscient rather than well i don't think omniscient i don't think they know everything they just know what they know but um yeah it, it leads the question to like why didn't like iron i guess iron had his ways of avoiding the head like he just had some he had some mental mental <laughs> Ayin just knew how to avoid the head because of Bina. So, I guess even then, somehow Angela's existence was kept... Uh, um, yeah, they don't know everything. They just know what they know. <laughs> or almost everything. But yeah. Um, Yaxi... Yeah, true. 
Oh yeah, true. The head likes how cruel Iron is. True. By the, if, by, even no matter how cruel you are, no matter how much the head will like you. AI tax evasion clones, you're dead. <laughs> Pretty much. So, I guess Iron did have a way to hide Angela. Um, he found some way to hide Angela's existence um, from uh, the head because of Bina's knowledge. I guess. I guess. I guess that explains it. We live in a society. <laughs> yeah, the head sure is. Um, the head sure is not so. Let's say there is something funky with them. We'll find out in the future, maybe. Anyway. Um, formidable tax, but not to how humble your job. Even syndicates are no exception. Everyone in the city has to pay taxes. If you don't meet the deadline, oh yeah, we read this already. All right, cool. This is just showing the importance of money. It's not just greed or thing. It's to live because, um, like, yeah. All right, we'll see. Sayo. The hands of the back street is probably the biggest reason no one dares to take care of the lawless land that- Yeah, I just kept Anzal in the basement. Yeah, I guess they had some way of hiding. Like, even if the head had foresight to know Anzal we made, maybe they thought, Okay, we attacked the lab. Angela does not exist anymore. <laughs> the head of the back- The hand of the back street is probably the biggest reason no one dares to take care of the lawless land that is the back streets. Associate, no associations or wings can touch it. And not even the head itself can easily interfere. The five syndicates are the. Okay, all oh right, the hand, right. The five syndicates are the. Well, I mean, uh, can the head not. I mean, the, I think the head just chooses not to interfere. But from what we can tell with the head now, I don't. I think we just choose not to interfere. Like, we don't care. <laughs> we just don't care. <laughs> um, the five syndicates at the apex of the back streets are called the thumb, the index, the middle, the ring, and the pinky. Okay, we are called the pinky. Okay, so thumb, index, middle, ring. So these last three, we don't know. Well, middle, we know a little bit about. They parcel out districts of the back streets and comprehensively manage their territories and periodically hold meetings to efficiently control the back streets. They call this conference the Finger Bow Bell. Okay, so they do try to be a bit um, civil with each other, but <laughs> I'm certain as to whether this name is meant to suggest they actually make pinky swears not to invade other's territories, but they call it as such because the fingers gather in one place. The minds of the higher-ups is a mystery, truly. The farm is the mafia, the index is a cult, and the pinky is a bunch of artisans. Oh, do we get to see the pinky somewhere else? Like, the middle is like a cartel. Um, I don't know what they're carrying, but... <laughs> when I think cartel, I think drugs. So, I don't know. What the, was the middle... Oh, Leviathan. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Interesting. Going back to, uh, going back to topic. When the finger bell bell nears, all members of the five fingers will try to avoid conflict and refrain from causing problems. It's thanks to the leaders of such syndicates who consume their subordinates that fight between smaller syndicates can perhaps grow into a massive conflict between the big ones. Perhaps. If subsidiary syndicates ran into trouble, the seniors of the finger bell bell would be faced with quite the embarrassment now, wouldn't they? Oh, this does, it's like the whole embarrassment thing like with them, um, like during when the fun, uh, during the fun conference. Since Project Moon came out and said the head can handle Aleph at once, I think, yeah, Sile is wrong. We, oh yeah, we, we have to remember that these come from points of views, unreliable narrators, and whatnot. <laughs> Yang. Um, they're the main villain. Oh, I see, the Pinky is the main villain in Leviathan. Interesting. There are two kinds of folks who hang around the back streets at night, the Predator and the Prey. Pretty much everything go going on in the city can be described as savage, but the other parts of the city at least put it up, mm, put up the effort to package them gentlemanly guy, put them in gentlemanly, gentlemanly guises. Even a cheap hamburger made from whatever unspeakable ingredients is still wrapped in a modern and rich packing. Yeah. Uh, oh, I see. On the other hand, the back streets at night are filled with raw and blatant barbarity. 
nor even a layer of crude cover is there to censor this brutality. No deed is forbidden. No one is held responsible. Imagine the most appalling, vulgar and filthy deed you can think of. I won't dare say, behold your imagination, since I have no idea how insane you might be. <laughs> but I can guarantee that whatever you're thinking casually happens somewhere in the dark alleys and the back streets at night. Oh, it's the ring. Oh, never mind. Don't worry about it. Eh, it's fine. Eh, I, I haven't read Leviathan, so I don't know information anyway. <laughs> I see. So anything goes in the back streets pretty much at night. Despite all that, people still inhabit the back streets. They doggedly, su they doggedly survive, struggle and survive in their own ways here. Keen. A fallen nest no longer has an owner to protect its inhabitants. What happens to them then? In the wreckage of a nest that's gradually turned into an environment similar to the back streets, all we can do is accept horrible deaths as back street residents do or hire a fixer. Or pay protection fees to one of the powerful syndicates that enter the nest and be under their care. Some move to a different wing, but this is an exceptionally rare case. The syndicates may charge ridiculously expensive fees, but they'll, they will keep you safe for sure once you pay them. If an, if an even stronger syndicate comes in, drives with the others and asks for you to pay protection fee, then there's no choice but to give your new protectors what they ask for. They'll protect you with their lives as long as you still have the money to pay. The assets will become useless when you die anyhow, so you might as well spend it to extend your life for just a little longer. Um, the, uh, the former feathers don't have a choice in the matter. If they don't pay the fee, they die or get kicked out. It'd be a miracle to walk out unharmed. Hmm. Yeah, even, even then, money is still a factor, huh? Kurokumo Henchman. You hear that news? We're about to collide with Kingfishers again. Kingfishers? Don't remember that name at all. Were they a real thing? I think it's still going on. Um... I think it's still going on, I saw. I saw it still going on, I think. I think I saw. I follow the Twitter. I see a few posts here and there. At least. I see a few posts here and there, at least. Yeah. Alright. Um, Kingfishers. Don't remember that name. Were they a real thing? You know the syndicate that's been struggling with finance and feuds between members? Uh, the form of the story was changed. Oh, I see, I see. They seem to be getting back on their feet after raiding the Constellars, but it looks like they didn't last long. They were irrelevant chumps, so I completely forgot about them. The knot seemed to be after them. When they finally hit them, Weedlings will get hand hounded, and now they're trying to invade our territory. Desperate to loot, Anything. Oh, it became a light novel. I see. Doesn't matter. Their names wouldn't be so unmemorable if they were any strong. Taking them down should be a problem. And the fixes at the Clam office that were cooperating with them from the back are gone too. Clam, what are they about? I guess there is like so many offices and syndicates that they just become names in the wind. There's like so many of them that some they just come and go. Huh. The Viphon was a manga, but it became light novel with pictures. Ah, I see. Meow. He ha doodle do wolf and me. The four <laughs> Okay, right. The four of us were moved to the core of the by the pianist performance. Alright, so you you did distort though. It's only he ha doodle do wolf. That's the four of us. Um the four of us moved to the core by pianist performance. To recreate the performance half as splendid as what we heard that day, we formed the Musician of Bremen to study the music. Also the Kurokumo reception they mentioned the Blade Lineage. Oh yeah, Blade Lineage was um Wasn't that Kim? Wasn't that wasn't yeah, Kim. Kim was Blade Lineage. I see, I see. Um, we tried flicking strings back here and there, playing music while sitting on our backs, even while handstanding. We still couldn't come close to the pianist level, but we managed to make our own brand of music, something that only the musicians of Bremen can play. Our performances was actually, were actually fantastic, you know. Unfortunately, time didn't last long. One day, a mysterious person approached them and asked us to join his ensemble to perform with him. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
All right, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I was yeah. yeah. As I mentioned that Pluto is going around, going around, um, making this well, getting distortions to to get to recruit, um, to join with uh, the ensemble. I see, I see. Wolf Doodle Do and Hee Haw to the offer and left that guy. Imagine a six-headed Bremen, <laughs> the full Bremen. That'd be interesting. I had to stay because of new members that had just joined the band, though. So, yep, Moo Moo and Oink. It's kind of uncomfortable to just leave them behind, you know? Ah, Meow was kind of sweet, in a sense. We can't let them mess around and taint our name either. I've been practicing with them to create a performance that could get a standing ovation once my old bandmates came back. But at their current levels of skill, the three would just clock at these <laughs> newbies' performances and go back to whatever they were doing. <laughs> You see the back streets are a nigh inescapable inhabitable hellscape. But the people here live on somehow. There's lots of people who live in fear every moment, but the others live a pretty normal life. Some think the back streets are total, totally shady and poorly aid slums. And we do have all the amenities that we need here. Old woman Meow, she's fifty she's forty one. Oh she's forty one? Damn! Doing pretty good for forty one. <laughs> She got oh yes oh yeah true yes meow attacked Angela and it was our first time um, properly seeing Angela get hurt. There's lots of people who live in fear of every moment, but the others who live the others live a pretty normal life. Oh yeah, yeah cat yeah. <laughs> and finished twenty. Oh yeah, I saw the art book. I I quickly saw a bit. I didn't see all of it though. And it's like yeah. Um, Finn is 20. But again, 20 is still young, in all honesty. 20 is still young. Also, I did see that they avoided, like, I saw in an interview, they avoided mentioning, like, Lisa um, Tifereth, Lisa, wasn't mentioned to have died at all during Lobotomy Corp. We just had to, we, we obviously know she died some at some point before Bina before Bina came in, at least. But obviously, um, they didn't. I saw, I read they didn't mention that Bina, I mean, Lisa died because she's like, you know, a, a child in Lobotomy Corps. So it's like, it's obviously why they didn't mention she died um, in the. Yeah, I saw an interview for that. So I guess, I guess that's why, yeah, like Finn is like 20 years old. <laughs> Enoch. I mean, true. True. But I guess... Yeah, true. There's Enoch as well. I guess maybe not having too many child deaths. <laughs> or something like that. I I have the... I, I'll check it later again. Uh, for one, the supermarket's oink likes so aren't as good as those in the nest. But it's got everything people need. Mini child violence, yeah. Mo mostly to avoid... I see, child violence, right. Not death. To avoid the whole... Right, because like, if, if if Lisa was around for um, Bina invading... Well, what's her name? Child harm... Uh, it's, it's some, there's some things you have to work around. Um, what was her name? Not Bina... What was Garion? 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 Yeah. <laughs> Garion. Yeah. When Garion invaded, I don't think it'd have been nice if Lisa was still alive at that point. Clothing stores, groceries, dry cleaners. I heard the details are different for each district, so there's that. I'm just telling you how things are where I live. People who here aren't too unkind to each other. Most Nestor just like to gossip about how we're cruel and dreary and all that, but the truth is we're doing fine. Uh, oh, and there's tons of good restaurants here. Oh no, he's just, I think he's asking what, yeah, where you read, where you read Leviathan. That's what they mean. Good restaurants. Is the street of flavor after all? What district are you in? Um, oh, street of flavor. Freshly baked meat pies, spaghetti made of spaghetti, bleh, spaghetti made of special pasta. Your tongue and stomach have a wonderful time if you can go to a trip to our district. 
We used to hand out leftovers from our performance here to local restaurants. And um, that meat would go to. Oh, performance into. Oh! Oh, right. This is talking about the cannibals. Oh, the cannibals, the cannibals. Right. <laughs> I was gonna say, oh, spaghetti sounds good and pies, but. Oh. <laughs> Um, not exactly. I think it's more for ratings, I guess. Like, obviously, there's some taboos to avoid. <laughs> there's some taboos, especially when you evolve that sort of thing. It happens. That meat would go to waste if you left on the spot, so you might as well give it to the people who can make good use of it. Ain't that right? When Woof, Doodle Doo, and Hee Haw were around, we got enough chow to share with several eateries, but our fine was halved since they were gone. And Oink just kept making silly noise with it, mistakes with it, and ruined those ingredients too often. Oh, I see. I see, I see. Right, because... Alright, I see. So, the reason why they stopped was because they weren't that skilled enough to make proper meat. We sometimes got tasty meals for free when we gave them our meat. I see, they're cannibals though. I see, I see. A seven... Association is a fixed association. Right, seven. Oh yeah, seven was Dante. Right, seven was Dante. What was Dante? Dante, yeah. Dante is seven association. All right. So, oh yeah, and um, Oink um, left them. Uh, did you already read the things that they worn in the Limbus Company, Limbus Culture? I don't think there's a lot of taboos remain to break. Eh, uh, true. I mean, it depends. I guess it's... I mean, eh. There is like some taboos that are taboo higher than that. As in, like, it just is how it is. It is how it is. <laughs> that is that. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Because <laughs> yeah, Lisa was a child in Lobotomy Corp at least. Alright, the Seven Association is a fixer association, specializing in investigation and intelligence. Knowledgeable in pretty much every affair that takes place in the city, but deals with a syndicate gaining infamy in the back streets of one place. The association probably knows what district it is exactly, but left before I check the details on it. All the information revealed about the distortion phenomenon, which has been going around lately, when and where fixed offices start up and close business, and the beat goes on. The association treats all, so all kinds of information about the city. Oh, they don't have access to top secret intel like the streets of the singularities each nest holds, obviously speaking. Secrets. Um, obviously speaking, when they solve cases, they usually cooperate with each other, with other associates like Xi and Lu. I see. If you ask what how the Seven Association can secure its confidentiality, despite holding tons of juicy you just see info that could attract many. It's because the staff aren't bad combatants by any means. We don't use fancy... They u don't use fancy but crude workshop weapons that are basically large amalgamations of various technologies. Regular informants are armed with nothing more than a simple bladed tool. It sounds very underwhelming from the weapon alone, but they use minimum technique with pinpoint precision to take down their foes. Yeah, um... Yeah, like, what's it called? Um... Like, Dante's pages were really good. Like, I, I like, like, Flesher was really, really handy, especially. They were really good for uh, a while. That's for sure. So they were simple weapons, but they were still pretty strong, even then. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know if they'll mention that, but maybe. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know how they would bring that up, but I love rolling gacha with information assessment. <laughs> yeah, it seems like a really good page. I just haven't um, really... Like Dante, I just haven't really properly... I properly used her. Used them, I think. Eh, don't worry. It's more like... No, I mean like in terms of in-game. I don't think there's any way they would just bring it up. Like, I don't think there's a way they would bring it up without it just being weird, I guess. Who knows? 
I don't think the world is so messed up that like that doesn't have that world is so messed up that it doesn't have questionable. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? <clears throat> the eight o'clock circus was a real sod of a case. Dante's interesting pace, but late is kind of useless. Yeah, kind of. There is like resin. Yeah, re resistances are pretty on and off, huh? His leader wasn't a, wasn't a particularly powerful enemy. It took a long time to assess the strengths and behavior of each of its crew members, of his, each of his crew. No pattern. It was difficult to predict what would come next. It's akin to watching an erratic circus of lunacy. When someone opening up a champagne can be seen as sexual. Uh, kind of. I get what you mean, but I don't think um, they, me they meant it in that way. Like with Angela popping open the champagne during Lobotomy Corp. I don't think that was meant to be taken that way. <laughs> but I see what you mean, but I don't think it's um, uh, meant to be that way for this stuff, at least. <laughs> the only champagne was um, Angela popping one open as part of the script. The weird purist, uh, it happens. It's just, it's a weird thing culturally, let's say. But yeah, let's move on, I guess. <laughs> Um, there was no specific pattern to it. It was difficult to predict. The lair was mysterious and terrifyingly bleak. And the crew took the crew took hideous forms as well, looking too grotesque to possibly be considered normal living beings. They were strong as they looked. When the blob-shaped lying bit Pamelivis blunt teeth, her body quite literally blew up on the spot. You missed the Bloodborne. <laughs> However, our enemies were slowly brought down from the vantage point, and they were completely covered. The leader escaped along with a few of his crew. Oh, I see. Yeah, we killed. They killed a bunch of the mem of the crew, at least. Even though we couldn't put an end to the case, we decided to prioritize recovering Pameli's body, as we knew the circus would be weakened enough to stay low for a while. <laughs> as we stored Pameli's head in stasis preservation, and headed to the exit of the collapsing circus tent, we ran into a group of fixers. They seemed rather exhausted after fighting a swarm of the crew outside. I that's why they couldn't enter the tent until that moment. It's not uncommon for two or more officers or fixers to be present at the scene of Finnish case. 53. I see. Pretty old, but still going well for that age. So I generally known to greet them. I identify ourselves as fixers of the wedge office, who have come here to solve the case. The shortest among them, the aged looking woman who appeared to be the representative of that group, Let's run the circus, 10. Let's have a sigh. You just have herself as Moses, of Moses' office. Oh, okay, this is the one you're talking about. I see. Distortion detective. While smoking from a pipe. Moses then started thinking, presumably ruminating over what words to choose. She must have taken a request that's rather tricky to disclose. The two behind her, nervously exchanging glances with each other, appeared to her to be bodyguards of sort. Having such trivial thoughts, I waited for this Moses, to, to this pers Moses person, to resume speaking. After a period of silence, Moses breathed out smoke in the other direction and asked me where the lead of the circus went. So I didn't know much better than them. I told them why I couldn't breathe. We seemed troubled by my unhelpful answer, but soon accepted it and left, my se left the scene. The group reportedly appears every time a case of distortion is solved. They are allegedly working as the distortion detective, but recent witnesses of their appearance were always followed with a distortion case in the same location. While it's unclear whether they're involved in the case, I believe that there's enough reason to be aware of them. I see. Younger than Oscar. <laughs> Critical lung failure. Yeah, lots of characters. Lo lots of characters. Just, just lots of characters smoke, huh? Okay, cool. So that's some. Um, that's some. Um. um foreshadowing well or like teasers for the distortion detective we did get also at the end of wonder lab i think they mentioned distortion detective as well in wonder lab life insurance for fixes is often a sham a lot of them take your money never to give it back even if you terminate your insurance they won't it's not easy for your life for damage to be insured either you have to be at death's door to qualify, pretty much. I guess with such a dangerous job, it makes sense why insurance sucks for this. The chances are as low as winning the lottery. And what if you just up and died? What can the dead do about with money? 
you'd be much better off making a savings account for an augment procedure or quality workshop gear. I was a very lucky case, keep in mind, but this wasn't this isn't normal at all. Insurance can sometimes be used for depending on its form and condition, sure. If you take the pain into account, it still doesn't feel great. Yeah, you, you like, Pimeni was like on death's door. Like, literally just like her head, her head left and then cloned body with Pamela. Um, basically speaking, people who visit our office are looking for shrewd and precise situational assessment rather than combat prowess. The ability to make quick calculations for various possible scenarios and neutralize or kill the enemy with the least effort. We are the hunters of the city. <laughs> Alright, that's... Okay, fine. The Bloodborne thing, yeah, is really apt now. <laughs> the hunters, huh? We wedge pierce the request... We wedge pierce the request we get with swiftness and precision. Of course, our office isn't perfect in every regard. So we're in partnership with a number of offices. Fixer offices... Is there even spears in Bloodborne? Yeah, there's a spear. I forgot the name of it. It's a spear gun. Um, it's a spear that, that the trick weapon is a gun, I think? Yeah, there's at least one spear. I, don't, I didn't use it much, but yeah, there's a spear. Fixer, fixer offices often request others for help when reinforcements or professional aid in specific areas is needed. In this case of our office, we were sister offices with Dawn Office, sharing more information than we did with other partners. Oscar is good friends with Salvador, the man running the office, and we've known each other for quite some time. But there's more to this sisterhood than that. Wedge Office excels at analyzing capabilities of foes, and Dawn Office specializes in combat, so it's only natural we go together. Ah, Gcan. <laughs> the rusted chains ain't the biggest syndicate, but each member's got strength to boot and boast. <clears throat> the only weapon. Um, we use the spiky chains. Tie them up, smack them, anything goes. Uh, we gotta be careful not to get swung or swayed around, or bind ourselves with our own metal. My body full of scars. My body's full of scars, thanks to that. But hey, it's not too bad, is it? I mean, you, you, self, you injure yourself a lot. Bah, every part of my body's aching. Cloudy bastards. Why are we picking at us so much? We've taken some serious damage on our side. Heard the blade dean's got also got messed up. Got any news? Oh, this is from this is continuing on from Kurokumo. Heard our boss is gonna go out and talk to him. If the boss is going alone, would that be dangerous? The other side is only sending their top dog or whatever, so no need to worry about the boss. Right, they're weakness individually. That's why they like to move in packs. Workshop affiliated. Or oh, just a general workshop. In the city, there are many workshops, as there are unique gadgets, and the Tre Association is the one responsible for managing workshops. Workshops. It reviews newly designed weapons, files applications to the head, and charges taxes. You can't use the weapons that haven't passed regulation. Also, Philip's 24. He's younger than the two of them. Is it? Do we get the age? Oh, he's younger. Yeah, yeah. I guess they're just small, or they- I don't know how often they did clone stuff. I think they're just- I think they're, they're just small, to be honest. They're just small. Just, they're just short in height. 29, 26. Okay. They're just- yeah, they're, they're, they're just short. Like, not everyone has to be tall. <laughs> in life. <laughs> they can- you can be short. And old. And older than- like, they can be like short and old. You know? <laughs> Getting rejection from them basically means they see the weapon as something that shouldn't be used in the city. We aren't too caught about it though. We sometimes sending application feed applicants feedback about how they can improve their designs to a possible level. Not that we need it, since our latest weapon passed on the first try. I mean, they're just short. They gave good they gave good advice to Philip. So they they talked to Philip and it's like they weren't they didn't they're just short, pretty much. They're just short. Uh, Hanafuda. Oh, gambling. Um, in the nest of gambling, hundreds of games take place every day. The humans leaving as sinner, winners or sinners, winners or losers. Some admit their defeat while others try to make a scene and escalate it into a violent mess. It's the job of offices like ours to monitor the game, the gaming between individuals or associations. 
um, organizations verify the results and prevent situations from turning violent. There are, they are, there are naturally a lot of offices that handle this kind of work. Most of them being affiliated to the UFI association, ours included. Whenever a game happens with, some, with something at stake, a goal between needs to be there to prove that the results were legitimate. Given the sheer number of games were often short-handed. Oh, cause oh, J Nest, yeah, which is um, most residents in J Nest, Nest J, are relying on a special entity. I can't talk much about it, but it's like the fortune readings others sometimes see. Oh, I see. It predicts the events that will happen to you during a year, like an annual fortune. It gives opinions on the immediate matters. It never gives. That's the okay. So that's the singularity for fortune telling. It never gives direct solution to your problems, though. It's up to you to make your choice, but I can't deny that it has a strong influence on your decision. This is the nest of gambling. You hear all sorts of noise daily. It almost drives you mad. Gunshots, screams, aren't exactly sore to wake up to. These sounds used to wake you up every day, but not anymore. The person living in room 1829 vanished after losing a bet a week ago. And I saw him carrying a large coffin out of 1831 yesterday. Rooms. I see. Boy, is it like a is it like a massive casino hotel? Uh, let me see their books actually. I vaguely remember something. With them. The singularity is locking. Locking. How does that work out then? All right. So. Oh yeah, flip, oh yeah, flip the table, shuffle hands. Oh, I see. These are all gambling. I see. Uh, shuffle hands, and then well, Sakura's does that. I think it makes sense with the discard. Oh, lock like Bina. Interesting. So why, what does that have to do with the whole fortune telling then? Hmm. All right, interesting. What does that have to do with the fortune telling? All right, interesting. Uh, low at night, high at day. Alright, interesting. Uh, N Corp District looks like an insane asylum. All the buildings is just painted white, and all the characters we know from N has the same hair. Oh, interesting. Do we, do we see any in this one, or in the other thing? Cool. Interesting. There's a lot of potential, like, there's a lot of associate. there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of them, that's for sure. Um, alright. We'll go and we'll read like... It really is cool Hanafuda has a passive where all dice roll min max to emphasize the luck thing. Oh yeah! Right, right, right. Mm, that was it. I see, yeah, that was it with Hanafuda. We could have multiple singularities. Oh, true, true, yeah. Multiple singularities, right, right, right. Yeah, because W Corp used the old W Corp singularity. I see, I see, I see. All right, I'll read, I'll go for six hours and then we'll come back. Well, I'll stream again tomorrow as we read, as we get through the rest of this. Um, I'll read, I'll see how long we go for, but I'll, yeah, we're definitely continuing, we're definitely continuing tomorrow. Oh, just had, I, 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 oh, idea had, right. Wasn't it, well, to be fair, Hanafuda was like bottom deal, wasn't it? Yeah, Hanafuda was um, bottom deal and stacking the deck, so that it does work for ga gambling. Wait, what was the minimum maximum one, or was that just hot um, Abno card with uh, Leticia? Um, funny prank. All right, yeah, it's uh, that's that's funny prank. <laughs> All right, we'll um, read a bit more before we call it a day. And then we'll come back tomorrow. Alright, Urban. Alright, there's a lot still. Well, smiling we'll save this for next stream. Just because that seems to be that, that seems to be that seems gonna be a big discussion. Maybe. We'll see. Eugen, Eugen's page. Argalia alias the blue reverb. The guy the person who is known to furtively cause incidents. Recently, he is suspected of recruiting individual powers. Individuals with building powers that are presumably related to distortion phenomenon in an attempt to form an organization. Yeah. As well as prying into his plots. 
I intend to hamper his efforts myself before collecting data and presenting evidence of his irregular activity to head. Yeah, good luck. I don't think the head would have cared. <laughs> I don't think the head would have cared. As the blue reverbs plot was already in motion, I needed to act quick and do the least I could do to stop him. However, she association was too fatigued from the barrage of request, so I asked full stop office to deal with the church of gears. His leader seemed to harness a power that resembles distortion. I haven't heard I haven't heard I haven't heard from them since. Since they were eliminated in their mission at the hands of the church, or did the Blue Reaver have expected to fix his arrival and toyed with them, but now I definitely have to go to the library and read their books. There was event there was evident rationale to read the books of the musicians of Bremen as well. For they could contain even the slightest hint on the Blue Reaver Blue Reaver's plot, he might have told them. We did yeah, I guess maybe um Meows. Yeah, Meow's one because she knows that Pluto got the Bremen musicians at least. But I don't think much though. Even I do not know the man in detail, admittedly. However, I'm certain that the Blue Reverb is conspiring something that violates or will violate the rules stipulated by the head. I must gather crucial evidence and report it. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't think I don't think anything Agalia was doing would have violated any of the um, rules? I don't think, I don't think so. Would they? Would have? Yeah, it was only gonna be Angela with the whole AI, her, her own existence violate, violates his rules. I don't think like Argalia would have gone into cloning or making guns. So I don't think he would have. In the end, I don't think is is a pointless endeavor because the head would have done nothing anyway. I know how corrupt the association is. I am woefully aware. Of Thelma's cunning, Thelma's cunning and unhinged purpose behind saddling section 2 with one request after another and wearing us down. I am but waiting for the right time, waiting and enduring until I can seize a chance to bring the she back to glory. I firmly believe that everything will turn, will take a turn for the better to take this work. I pledge I will change the system with my hands, no matter what. Oh, I like, I, I like that. That was cool. True, yeah. Eugene, yeah, Eugene's fine now, at least, and because Blue Reverb's dead. So maybe when she comes back, Eugene can rebuild the She Association for the better. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah that'd be cool. Yeah, when she comes back, she can rebuild the association. Thelma, 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 Thelma. Head of the Southern Branch has been overworking Section Two to a nonsens nonsensical degree lately. The requests he's given us are burdensome to take once per week, and he's constantly cramming down our throats. Yeah, Thelma's dead. Yeah, Blue Reverb just killed him, or rather, he got the smiling friends to kill him, smiling faces to kill him. <laughs> It's unclear if we um, can successfully tapping the strength and will out of the section. Unclear if we can successfully handle this mission to the library. But it's basically obvious that he'll give us another request to take care of immediately afterwards, even if we could. Most of our surviving crew are losing what little, motiv little motivation they had left. As for why he insists on using section 2 when the other sections are available, he's probably trying to get rid of Director Eugene, because he, sus he suspects that our director knows something about the blue reverb. It's unacceptable that someone could use a branch leader out of, of an association to make toy of, his, of the entire association, color or not. Let me see if the goal is to group with our director Eugen. I'm not sure what plan director Eugen has to overcome this. I suppose I can wait until we finish our mission. I don't think there was there was a plan, but I don't think it would have gone well because the head doesn't care. The head doesn't care. From the receipt of the request to prepare, um, of, from the receipt of the request, to preparation for execution, every step of an assassination is carried out covertly. This Greek killing is the Sea Association's specialty. An all-out war in a, an open fields where numerous people clash at once is not preferred from a battle. Though it's one of the areas where Leo Association excels. Ah, I see. They reiterate that point later on. Living in South Branch must be a city. Must be a nightmare. With all the things that happened in Ruina. <laughs> yeah, but again, it's interesting, like, it really was just a small part of the city. There was, there's still a lot of the city to go through. 
and like a whole lot of other things that could happen. But yeah, I mean, to be fair, the library didn't harm you unless you went there. And as long as you didn't go in L Corp's nest or live, at, live near any of the distortions, you're fine, pretty much. So it's hell, but it's not the worst hell, if that makes sense. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, we truly shine when we operate in small numbers. We pursue... Oh yeah, because true. Little Association fights are big group fights a lot of the time. Yeah, it's like 5 on 5 a lot of the time. We pursue extreme efficiency in order to kill our targets within the limited window of opportunity. Also required is the ability to make quick assessments of the situation in order to swiftly strike the target's vital points with minimal movement. The library fucked over other people's plans and made things worse. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. True. Tenma, your beloved. <laughs> She's cute. I like the whole, like, I like the whole thing with, like, um, really big jackets that cover the mouth. Like this one and also with, um, uh, the lock. The lock's one also covers the mouth. The demand for association assassination requests is pretty high these days. Um, as the most surefire way to eliminate people armed with high quality workshop equipment on top of body augments is sneaking up on them for a fatal blow when they least suspect it. Still, the streets aren't being filled with corpses of assassination targets because there are fixers whose job is to kill those who are hired for assassinations. Fixers are continuing their fierce strife no matter what the place. I like Eugene is the biggest health but you'd heal. Yeah, like it really shows like how powerful Eugene is, but 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 by the time she comes to the library, she's exhausted. She's she's tired as all hell. <laughs> she's like overworked to hell and back. So if Eugene was full power, she'd be a lot harder. But yeah, being an um, being an organization that's familiar with dealing death, the she's code of honor is to treat everyone equally, as the weight of death is equal for everyone. As long as the request fee is paid, we remove the target with no questions asked. Using that full power could um, come close to non-eagle Zhao. Yeah, yeah, I feel that. Honestly, maybe even more than Zhao. Like Zhao was like fighting in the team, so honestly. Like, non-eagle Zhao, I think they both would be close. They have different specialties, to be fair. Back when she first came out, every she page has 200, 200 plus HP. Oh, every single she page. Okay, I guess it, it makes sense why they just made it Yujin only. This makes sense lore-wise. It makes sense lore-wise. <laughs> Power of anime. I mean, they are really strong. They're assassins, but they're, like, sturdy. Um, we remove the target with no questions asked regardless of kind is. What kind of a crime they may have committed or any other details? The boss of a syndicate known for murdering people in cold blood. A criminal wanted by a street somewhere, laundering an identity for a person of higher status who often bribes. Even a quest to kill one's own friends and family. We handle... Oh yeah, true, yeah, yeah, they are. Mm -mm. We handle all requests... Without leaning to a side. Of course, we have a duty of confidentiality to uphold for our clients. We mustn't give in and maintain silence even in the face of immediate threats of death. So those are the rules and mindsets that the Xi Associates members must abide by. I see. Mm. Yeah, like really assassins and like the whole secrecy and like maintaining um, for their clients and stuff, no matter who hires them. But again, they aren't sent to, like, Eugene, they were sent to do, like, a bunch of these odd, like, jobs of stuff. Alright, we'll do, um, we'll read Puppets last, and then now we'll call it for today. We'll read Puppets, and then we'll call it for today. <laughs> I gotta cook something as well. Life in the Nest. Also, I don't use these as, uh, appearance projections, personally. Life in the nest isn't anything special. You missed a bit of sheep page. Oh, whoops. Oh, wait, whoops. 
However, the recent behavior of the Sovereign Association goes against the core values of the Xi. On top of exerting power for his private interest, his selfish actions are causing severe damage to Section 2. All of us is, are eagerly waiting for Director Eugene to overthrow this rotten system one day. Yeah, Roland is technically French, yeah, with, um, with, uh, with, uh, Roland and the Charlemagne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't, I swear, like, Astolfo is British, though. Like, I know, like, let's say, for example, in Arthurian, um, Arthurian legend, um, in Arthurian legend, um, Lancelot came from France. I think Astolfo came from Britain, I think. I think. I'm not too sure. I in uh the name does have religious terms, but uh I don't think like I think as Roland mentioned, there isn't really a religion in the city, isn't there? Like I think when listen, there isn't really a clear cut religion. As uh, Roland puts it, in the city. Uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> jeez. No, <laughs> no, just no. But yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think there really is. I mean, to be fair, we have Plague Doctor, which is like, and um. White Knight, which does allude to like Christian, it's, it's kind of Christian ish, and we have also the Tree of Kabbalah, well, the Tree of Life, um, which is like, I think it has Jewish um, parts in it, but yeah, something like that. Something like that. There is like references, but then uh, I don't know about in universe though, like, why did I in call it the Sephira. I don't think that needs to, I don't think we, we need an explanation. It's one of those things we accept as um, being thing. I'm gonna force Greta memes on you now. Jeez. <laughs> as I mentioned, it's because it's because Hod is my favorite Sephira. So <laughs> I'm not even that pissed about Greta herself specifically. More I just wish Greta had more to do with um, I just wish Greta had more to do with um like, at least have some more build-up. That's pretty much it. Greta has potential, in all honesty. There's potential there, and maybe there's more in the... Uh, thing here. But there's potential... Like, I just... I think Greta could have been done better. At least... Or at least... I don't know. Made it a lot more of a... Some better clash of philosophy. Like, everyone else had, like, a good clash on, like their ideals and philosophies, I feel. Most of them did, anyway. At least. <clears throat> but yeah. True, maybe it's a, maybe it's part of the old world, post, like, pre-apocalypse, maybe. Um, let's see. I mean, Greta and Tanya are just muscular. They're just muscular. <laughs> they're, just, they're just muscular. But yeah. Um, puppet page one. We'll read these two and then call it a day. Life in the nest isn't anything special. It's the same world holo. Yeah, true. You get. I think they mentioned this in someone. Like, even life in the nest is like you're scared of getting kicked out of the nest. You get picked, pecked by your boss and go through months of workload. You find yourself working overtime pretty much every day. Payday. In the end, there is no freedom. <laughs> in a sense. Or at least it's hard to get freedom. Payday isn't all that exciting either. When you realize that you barely get money to without paying after paying for maintenance. Um Yeah, true, yeah, because like Greta I mean sorry, Emma and Noah are just office workers, aren't they? They're just office workers. Living expenses on that. Most of your life's income's gone in a flash. And then back to work. I have my ways of enjoying the little things in life, though. When I come back home from work, I crack open a cold one. <laughs> oh, I see. Right. This is the... This is... This is... From the other side. We had people talk about... People from the nest watching in. But when we have... We're talking about people, someone from the nest watching in on the back streets. When I'm lucky, I can see people clashing each other or getting into a tussle. And I think, oh, 
I should hope that person managed to get away. I'm just being a hypocrite, of course. We're all simply watching for fun, don't you agree? It's like a TV show. Viewers aren't generally concerned for the people on the rectangular screen. All they care about is guessing who will win. So many unrealistic and unvaried situations take place in the streets. It actually feels like I'm watching television. Don't call me out for being inhumane. Who knows? Maybe someone is watching me work to the, myself to the bone from a high rise, holding a glass of wine in their hand. <laughs> it's a sure, it's a, it's sure, um, a sad situation, huh? Like in the end, people in the nest aren't happy. They're just living dull lives. El Corp Nest is kind of well beloved because I and hide people without discrimination. Oh yeah, 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 right. Yeah, because um, didn't Hokma talk about that? Like. There were, you needed certain people for, to work, but it wasn't a case of class or wealth. It was about, I don't know what was, what was it again? Hokma mentioned it when you we were talking about Anya, um, the person who was uh, hired in. When we were talking about the employees and how, the agents and how we can do stats and all that stuff, Hokma mentioned it. I forgot what he said exactly, but yeah and also what was it i think one of the days talked about how they won't be missed or something like that yeah 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 something like that mm -mm -mm. they won't necessarily be missed at least as one factor because people just die in lobotomy corp and also yeah pretty much like if you had i mean to be fair i mean even like even let's say let's like, say daniel dying for example I don't think that had any effect anywhere. Like, he was a nest, like, a high rank, like, he came from a well-off nest family. And there was no effect on him, on his death, on his, I feel. Like, with well, no mention of it, it's been 10 years in the real world, I think. 10, around 10 years since Lobotomy Corp, the cycle started and then exploded. I think 10 years in real, in actual time. But the only big loss was Red Mist. She just she up and vanished. And then again, I guess to be fair, Mio knew she was alive, but as a box, a robot. Kind of see why the faces characters call Ian as their kind of beloved savior. Did we? Did we get that? Did we really get that? Besides Hokma, did we really get that scene? Did we? I don't remember that. In honesty, like, um, we had people, like. Um, follow Carmen by all means because she was charismatic and she was really sure on her goals. While Ian, like he became cold as a wing, and even he lost he lost all his closest friends. And then, oh Christopher and oh yeah Christopher. No, but that was um that was um during oh wait no that that was during was it no no this this was um Christopher was no but then they right. We'll talk about this during the Red Mist thing. It feels like there's a kind of retcon timeline-wise because... Um, yeah, because it makes... Yeah, because I don't... Was... Was Gabura a robot? Yeah, no, no. Yeah, Gabura was already a Sephira. Right. She was already a Sephira um, during... Um, um during Christopher. Right. I see, yeah. To be fair, I guess because he is the head of the Bosby Corp. And I guess I think Ian is more cold, but he doesn't he's not outward he's not outwardly mean. He's just cold, rather. Timeline challenge. I think it's more because we'll discuss this when we get to Red Mist. I talked about it in the comments on one video, but yeah, because since Christopher is has a good chance of being red mist of being of being nothing there like christopher could be nothing there but then it doesn't make sense timeline wise because um prototype nothing there i mean too fair you could say that nothing there is a general concept in people's minds so prototype nothing there was extracted but like not fully extracted like full power but that was the one that Read that Gabura, well, Kali was using. So you could argue that the full power, non prototype, nothing there was Christopher. But they managed to get some bits of it 
earlier because it's a prototype and also because nothing there is a concept of humanity. Most, most of the story in the Bosby Corp is a script Iron made to make them emotional. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like, um, the script he made was in order to, like, force the, the Sephira to reach their lowest point and then so that, um, so that they can realize their seed of light, pretty much. Like, Angela couldn't help, like, Angela couldn't encourage Hod to, like, yep, here's some tips on your, um, counseling club or giving Malkov like Malkov was even searching for some uh Malkov wanted some like reassurance or like from Angela she, she even looked for his reassurance from Angela but like Angela gave like when she did it was um an error or like um Chesed with his um abno deterrence stuff so yeah it wasn't, yeah, it's cruel in that sense that you have to make, that they made, that I intensely made them break down, but I do, it, it was for, for the seed of light, and then in the end they did get over their trauma. It even implies he knew that B would come and kill him by Angela. Ah, I see. I see, yeah, I get, it makes sense that, otherwise, yeah, B had to be part of the plan, because, like, or, or rather Hokma, because otherwise... Um, there would be no seed of light from Hokma at all, which is the um, facing the past to build the future. Was it face the fear to build the future? No, the eye facing the past to build the future, wasn't it? Or was it the fear to build the future? What was it again? Let me see. I made a title referencing it. Um, it was um. Yeah, I embracing the past to build the future. Abu who's Kane and B who's Abel. <laughs> That's complicated. I don't think exactly like that, but yeah. I guess even, yeah, Ian planned for his best friend to be killed by Angela and become Hokma. I mean, to be fair, even in the end, Hokma was like, I trust, he trusts in Ian. And it was like, even like he knew that, I guess he knew that Hokma would become protective of um, uh, Ayan to the point where it's like um, that he would have a somewhat, not really a full meltdown though, that's the thing. It was more to teach Ayan a lesson. Because um, Bina and Hokma were, con were like, they didn't, they kind of did, but also not fully meltdown compared to like everyone else in the upper layers. So who is Eve, Carmen? You can kind of see it as that. You, you can kind of see it. And like, as someone said, you can kind of see her as Eve, yeah. And then as both Eve and Lilith. Um, Lilith, who was expelled from the Garden of Eden, etc, etc. And all that stuff. But you could, you're, it's really open to interpretation, honestly. Even B said he wants to be Iron Shadow, so they could be together forever. Pretty much, yeah. Like, my guy is dedicated to him. <laughs> it's actually admirable to that extent that, yeah, Benjamin, like, he's just, like, Iron's best friend and all that stuff. That's for sure. Alright, pop it page two and then we'll call it a day. Money rules the city. Every denizen of the city is obsessed with money to the point of pol of uh, obsessive. Uh, maybe during Lobotomy Corp, but then he got. He's not as obsessive now. Like as much as we meme about, as much as we meme about Hokma being a simp for Iron, he's not like Iron, 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 Iron. Every single conversation, he only brings up Iron when it's necessary. He doesn't say. It's not like he went up to like Angela and was like, "Low Iron." He like, he doesn't bring him up over time. He just has a lot of faith in him, rather. As opposed to be meme him being a simp, he's not like obsessed, like overly simpy, like overly obsessive over it, like or like that's all he says. <laughs> Pokemon's really cool, honestly. He toned it down a bit because he comes in age, yeah, yeah. And since obviously like Hokma's role now is like he's kind of like the mentor figure. Um, He's the mentor figure 
to like everyone especially angela he's like the dad and mentor to like everyone in the library i know just about hokuma sim but he just likes him yeah not make him as a joke mm -mm. yeah no, no. it's just more like sometimes it's easy to forget as much as we joke around <laughs> but yeah Everydayism City is obsessed with money to the point of popularizing the belief that money can be from almost any problem. While the earnings of an average nest resident are significantly higher than those in the, in the back streets, there is also a wage gap among the nest and inhabitants. One thing to keep in mind is that your position in your job doesn't always guarantee a high income. No matter how high your rank is in a small enterprise, you might not earn much more than a fixer in, in Section 6. Even if your financial gain is on the higher end. You likely won't waste enough money to or enough money to waste extravagantly. Uh, we call Bina and Hokma grandpa and grandma. Oh, I see. I can see that. I can see that. Meaning you won't get to take first class seats on board trains all the time or load the table with scrumptious feast, sumptuous feast. However, it will be enough money to secure a stable life in the nest. People who earn four million on. Oh, that's the currency. Okay. Or more per month can be considered upper middle class. That's where the quality of life sees visible increase. No longer have to worry about being evicted from the nest for being unable to pay taxes. And you can even hire a fixer to keep you safe. You can save up for emergencies or send your children to better schools. A life lived in safe haven, free of illness and starvation. Where's the life of an upper middle class they will talk about? What is there to be considered special? We just earn a little bit more than others and live in a bit more comfort than others. Yeah, he get, as in like, yeah, you can separate the meme simply from like I, uh, Hokma being generally a mentor figure. Honestly, it seems like, it, let's say, the nest life is honestly like the closest thing, like, the nest is like pretty close to like, um, real life in a sense, like in terms of where you, depending on where you live, of course, it's like, depending on where you live, um, yeah, but again, you can you can relate this game to real life in a bunch of ways. But yeah, the, the nest, like they even they mentioned how in one of the episodes, I forgot who it was, um, that even living in a nest isn't isn't the best thing ever. You're you're constantly scared of getting evicted, like you're always underneath someone. You're constantly you're still working in a group somewhere. And then, obviously, there's a threat. There's still the fear of one day your nest collapsing in of itself. <laughs> so, yeah. How come is the cool uncle who actually likes his kids? And then, like, wow, um, wow is the dead, wow, Iron's the deadbeat, deadbeat dad. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. <laughs> All right. We'll continue on tomorrow. Um, Eight o'clock circus sweepers index warp smiling crying other star star is also a long one. Star is a long one, and then other then impuritus. All right, cool. The nest isn't some great place where everything good can happen. It's just very politely not as much as not a hellhole. Pretty much. Then again, even some people, I feel like some people would be happier living in the back streets compared to living in the nest. Bean is the crazy old woman across the street. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, the nest isn't, even then, like, Jai Hyun, like, he hates the rich people for, like, having the whole back streets being. Um, torn down because of uh, his son dying so he he like projects that onto the rich people because obviously land was being made but yeah um, what's it called road roller yeah pretty much yeah <laughs> because his son was caught up by the road roller that was made to make an expansion because of and all that stuff yeah, Jai Hun really releases his frustrations. Venus is a grandma who wants something interesting happening. True, or just he just observes and drinks tea in the meanwhile. 
But yeah. Alright, we'll be continuing this tomorrow then. I might, if it turns, if, if we end up extending, if we end up having more to do, I might do Monday as well. <laughs> I'll see how I feel. Um, but yeah, we still have um, Urban Nightmare, 8 o'clock circus downwards, onwards to go through. So that'll be fun. That'll be fun. Um, but yeah. That was fun. <laughs> Honestly, that was really fun. Like, just discussing the game and reading these. It's been really fun. It's been six hours and a half nearly. But that was really fun, actually. I like to do something. I like to do stuff. I mean, we're still playing a game, but like, um, something different from just playing, I guess. Just chatting and stuff is fun. Um, there's so many variants of black tea I've not found the need to explore other kinds of tea. <laughs> I mean, I, I think. Didn't she mention green tea? I can't remember. But yeah, she's the coolest grandma. And like, a bit scary who talks about the person she likes. I mean, I think it's more like she, like, relates and admires Ian because like, she was pretty much like, yeah, I would have done the same as you if you were in my situation. If I was in your situation, I would have done the same as you. I would have um, picked someone's brain apart for knowledge of how to survive. <laughs> We need the stream to talk about Greta for six and a half hours. No, <laughs> I didn't talk. I didn't talk about her for six and a half hours. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I can make a highlight of myself just talking about it. But who knows? <laughs> it's pretty spread out. It's like I think it's spread out from like the first ensemble and then a bit talking about Greta during the Distorted Ensemble and now this stream. <laughs> Three hours. <laughs> Honestly, I'm curious to see how long I did talk about Greta. Maybe an hour at most. 30 minutes to an hour. Tops. But yeah. <clears throat> well, we're going to be talking about her anyway. <laughs> Only five hours, they're not six and a half. Ha. Well, we'll find out what the hell Greta's deal is down here we'll see maybe i'll maybe we it would deem the whole um uh clash like it'll make her more clearer we'll see um we'll check out um the eight o'clock circus next time we'll do it tomorrow well probably we'll probably talk about greta if we go if we finish up one two three four five six seven 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. 23 sections or 23 categories of books. Last stream, just just read her book. <laughs> uh, I'll continue. Um, yeah, we'll continue reading next stream, though. <laughs> no, I need to I need to eat. <laughs> I know it's going to take a while to discuss afterwards, so I, I'm going to save further discussion for tomorrow. <laughs> Read other books and then make Greta only her. <laughs> That'll just be like, what, an hour stream at most. <laughs> Coward. <laughs> it's fine. I need to eat. I'm hungry. <laughs> but yeah. Um... It's also been six and a half hours, so this is the usual stream, like, for Arena anyway. I honestly didn't ex like, I had a feeling, but I didn't think we'd actually legit be able to, um, not finish the credentials this stream, in all honesty. <laughs> but again, like, the first, like, hour or two, um, was, like, talking about, well, within the first hour and a bit was, like, we were still in Canard, and we were, we were talking about... Um, we were still here, and we we're talking about Sephira. <laughs> we we're talking about the Sephira, so yeah, just talking about the Sephira in general. But that was fun, honestly. In all honesty, that was fun. <laughs> um, I really liked just discussing the story of this game and stuff as well. But yeah, that was fun. Um, we'll continue this tomorrow, so 
yeah. Oh, just aside, that's a fun stream. Be it'll be nice to see the rest next time. Mm -hmm. I'm streaming tomorrow, that's for sure. Um, I really need to think about how long it will be. VTuber Greta. Ha! It's fun because of chat, true. Mm. It's nice to have, like, to bounce off some of these comments. Ha. But yeah, I'm continuing this tomorrow then. Um, same time tomorrow, I'll continue this. Um, or a mouse are tracking. That would be insane. I can't deny. <laughs> that would take... Um, that would take a lot of time to... Um, uh, like, the rigging on... A Greta VTuber would be nuts. Like, <laughs> we're talking about her still. <laughs> um, like, just damn, all those mouths and stuff, huh? <laughs> and what? Then what? You get, like, Greta's outfit reveal. It's her distorted form. <laughs> outfit reveal Greta is a distortion form. Yeah, very small shark. <laughs> but yeah, um... <laughs> made outfit Greta. Who knows? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Does Greta even get that many memes in the community? Like, um, does, does Greta even have memes? <laughs> like, who's the most popular ensemble member in the community? I assume Philip, probably. Like, Philip's probably the most popular. <laughs> does Greta even get memes in the community with, like, in the Rowena community, like, Greta at all. Her memes are a wasteland. Good. <laughs> but yeah. Um. <laughs> well, it's more like a wasteland because there's nothing much in the game for her. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm gonna say it again, aren't I? Because he doesn't have much build-up. Like, Pluto, by all means, could have more memes because he's funny skeleton man. But also because he showed up a fair bit. <laughs> anyway. And also, at least with um, Neza, with uh, Bremen, it's funny as hell. Like, Neza trying to talk to himself during the whole Bremen conversation because all we do is cluck and make sounds. Why don't we make our own memes about Greta? I don't even know what memes to make. My <laughs> the only reason I talk about Greta so much is because Hod was paired with her. <laughs> the only reason I talked about Greta was so much was because Hod was was paired with her. If it was someone else, I wouldn't mind as much. <laughs> uh, average Pluto Sans fan, average underprepared Greta build up enjoyer. <laughs> like even like even if you memed about. Greta's muscles. We had, we have Tanya for that. Like just Chad, Greta, all muscular. But when we have Greta, we have Tanya, who has that as well. <laughs> Give it a read her book. No, I'm hungry. I need to, I need to stop this soon. I need to stop this soon. I need to stop this soon. <laughs> I'll give it one more minute before I end the stream. <laughs> Kind of point. Greta's appearance projection is hilarious. Like, yes, I don't. It. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> yeah, it's like just massive. <laughs> like, bruh, you have no neck. Where's your neck? <laughs> You're just pure muscle. <laughs> Even like, everyone else is like. Normal, even Tanya's not that tall. I mean, to be fair, you could just change height. Greta, you could just become ultra massive. What were you? What were you wearing? Whatever. I'll just give you Elena. <laughs> Naked apron. I guess there is like people who are into that. <laughs> I guess there's people who are people who are into that. I guess. <laughs> who? Bong bong. I've seen like 
I saw this like, like Bong Bong, like from Lobotomy Corp. There's this like massive meme around Bong Bong. <laughs> I think there's like this one artist that destroys daily art of Bong Bong every day. <laughs> or something like that. It's like this, like Bong Bong is this blue haired agent or something like that. And I think I seen their art around the fair bit of like the, them destroying Bong Bong every day. <laughs> it's quite a dedication. She was, she was with Hod in the fan art. Oh, I see. Interesting. I wouldn't mind seeing fan art of that. As in, wording. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing fan art of Greta and Hod. Just to see, like, what people make of their um, relationship. Like, um, contrast. <laughs> it'll, it's some, it'll be something at least. What surprise was we see Angela nothing there comics? Interesting. <laughs> bong bong. <laughs> the legendary bong bong. Um... <laughs> now, we're just chatting a little bit before we end. I'm just getting roasted on Greta now because of how much I've ranted about her. But anyway, um, and then we moved on to talk about Bong Bong because I don't know. Someone just mentioned it. How far did we, how far did I get? Um, makes Greta and Hod cooking fight. That'll be fun. That'll be that'll be cool. Honestly, like I don't mind if I see a fan art with them together. I just wish in game Greta was developed more, frankly. Because she was paired with Hod, so I want Hod to, like, Hod was done dirty <laughs> by Greta being paired with her. But that's more because I feel strongly about it because Hod's my favorite. Anywho, um, we got up, we got up to um, eight o'clock circus, so we still have everything from eight o'clock circus downwards. I read puppets last, so eight o'clock down to Impuritus. So yeah, still a fair bit to go. <laughs> it's gonna be a while. It's a lot, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if all of next stream is credenza reading. And then I might just do... I might just do a reaction stream to... Or like just chatting about Project Moon stuff, like, in the future as a chatting stream. Maybe. Ayn is Armstrong. Does that really even fit him? I mean, we have Hana Association here with like nano machines. <laughs> we have Hana with nano machines, so it fits them a lot more. Um, let's see. Okay, I'll look him up then. I'll look him up. Okay, interesting. Oh, this artist. No, no, wait. Oh, oh, this artist. Yeah, I followed. I followed them. For a lot of their um, fate grand order stuff, like they do a lot of fate grand order, but I wanted like I saw some of their art for um, um, Lobotomy Corp, especially the ones for like realizations. Those are really 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 good. Like we have like um, um, <laughs> we have everyone just like um, was it? Clothes lining Angela, and then we have also like Tiff just like smashing down on Jester of Nihil. Oh, we did it in his Project Moon account. I see. I don't know, like, I wanted to retweet their art so badly because it's really, really good art. Like, it's really, really, really good. But I don't know why they deleted all their stuff on Twitter. At least. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I don't know if something happened or if it was related. I don't know. I don't want to guess, so I don't know. His art of Iron and Bean is the best. Yeah, there's a lot of really, really good art they made. I see. But yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's a shame it's deleted. I don't, I don't know why. I followed them because of their fake Grand Order stuff, but I don't know why they deleted their Project Moon stuff. I don't know why. It's a shame, but bad is that this is this. <laughs> um, yeah, several traumas on the extravagant in response to needing to advance the plot. Ha. But yeah, uh, YouTube meme for every floor in a nutshell. 
Um, I'm not gonna do like a watch along for that stuff, but like, uh, I'll probably watch along the maybe the trailers. We'll see, we'll see. He got hired by Project Moon, but refused at the end. Of huh? He got hired but refused and deleted everything? Ah, That's a shame. Um, feel free to link in the comments. As long as it's not anything, like, too bad. But, like, feel free to link in the comments, I guess. If it still, if it works. But, yeah, feel free to put links in the comments or whatever. I think it should be fine. But, yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, that's a shame, then. Ah. He also likes Adam. I see, yeah. I don't know, why would you delete everything then? Unless, I don't know. I, it, it seems a bit too murky waters. Um, uh, it's a shame, it's a shame. I'll just say that, it's a shame. Because their art is really, really good. It's, I, cause I already followed them beforehand for Fate Grand Order. And then seeing they did um, stuff for Lobotomy Corp was like, and then obviously other Project Moon stuff was like really cool but it's a shame it's a shame no oh, well I don't know the reasoning behind it so it did I don't know fully why but it did be like that made another account delete it again I see I see yeah I don't know if it's still on the Pixiv account let me see if it's on still on Pixiv or not oh yeah it's still in it's still on Pixiv at least so Pixiv so, I don't know why they deleted it from their Twitter account. Like, I wanted to retweet it so badly. <laughs> but, I don't know why they deleted it from... They still have it on their Pixiv, but not on Twitter. So, I don't know what the hell was up with that then. Yeah, it still has Project Moon on Twitter. So, I don't know why they did that, but... I don't know. That is that, this is this. We don't know why. <laughs> Oh well, it do be like that. It do be like that. Uh, maybe some more R in the future for Limbus. That'd be nice. Like, honestly, like, if he does, if they do make Limbus art, it means there's nothing. Like, it's not like he abandoned the fandom. He abandoned the games afterwards or anything. It just means that I don't know some reasons or another. They just didn't draw. Cause like, yeah. But a lot of their stuff is FGO, I see. I Well, I follow them because of FGO, but yeah. Oh well. We'll see, we'll see. He likes FGO, yeah. Like, maybe like maybe they'll play Limbus. The last R on the site is, told, is, is drawing of Elden Ring. Ah, I see. Yeah, the last one they posted was um, uh, Artoria Archer. But that was like today <laughs> on the Pixiv and Twitter of uh, Artoria Archer. I mean, Artoria Archer? Artoria Coster. <laughs> mm. I haven't played Elden Ring myself yet, so maybe I'll play it one day, but not anytime soon, but I am interested in, I am interested in Elden Ring at some point. But yeah. Mm. I like the most about the library. Oh, do it for Rani. Yeah, I've seen lots of people really like Rani, the blue-haired witch with like four arms. She looks cute. <laughs> I think she's also one of the endings as well for Elden Ring. Like, I saw like I saw like some guy, but just like like you get like a special sword or ring if you do her ending, and I saw some guy with like. What, like 10 plus copies of the sword you get, of the item you get at the end, at the end of Rani's route. Um, <laughs> every, like, they have like 10 plus copies. So they went New Game Plus constantly. Just um, marrying Rani, yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. Mm, in one of the endings, yeah, yeah. It must be that library likes everyone working together and having fun. Yeah, like, honestly, um, I like seeing fan art of like the patron librarian Sephora just like having casual chill times as well like 
as you can tell from the thumbnail, I already saw the credits. At least I didn't. I didn't see the epilogue scene. I'm saving that for um, later in the future, as in maybe next stream or something. But I remember I saw the the the, the removed CGs for the original ending in the credits. I get why. I get why they didn't. Um, um, I get why they didn't uh, have the CGs in the ending credits this time because they do not fit poems for a machine, poems poems of a machine at all because they're all like happy, but then poems of a machine is a lot more um, melancholic and all that stuff. So, <laughs> I mean, after. Ensemble after they got booked, worked together like with librarians. Oh, interesting. That's some nice fine art potentially. But yeah, as you can see from the thumbnail for this stream, like I knew I saw those CGs and like they're all really cute. Like you have like, oh yeah, Hod's Rooting Club, or you have um, <laughs> you have um, Neza and Roland getting wasted together, which is and, or you have like Tifereth reading with Hokma. That was cute. That was really cute. <laughs> but yeah. That was really cute. Or like, um, you have Hod with um, having coffee with Chezed. Like, that's the kind of... I like. I love that kind of stuff, which is why I'm really happy we got the short stories in-game as well. Uh, Greta and Hod cooking competition, or your sod smoking with... Oh yeah, I saw... I saw the Assault smoking one. That was funny. <laughs> and I think it was also there was one with Malkuth with every burn character with the Dawn Office, Philip, and uh, every every burn character with Lulu as well. <laughs> Ian like a scary villain. To be fair, Ian does come across as a type that has like a really scary appearance or like really serious like brooding appearance if that makes sense so it does fit iron personally uh, he, he doesn't seem the type to look gentle right away like you need you need to either be good friends with him for him to look gentle towards you or he's to be in a really good mood let's say only dawn and wedge oh no I, I saw it was was it dawn and wedge i thought i saw lulu as well hold on let me try seeing it again uh... Oh yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. It's Dawn and Wedge. Never mind. Dawn and Wedge, <laughs> and then crying children. <laughs> Dawn Wedge crying children. Right. Yeah, I see it now. Yeah, yeah. Your oh, iron's back. Yeah. To be fair, yeah, because he doesn't look that thing. Oh yeah, I see the I see the I see the cooking competition one now. That's cute. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it has like Pierre and Jack, and then you have um. What was her name? The one from Warp. Um, the one from Warp. Um, Lesty. I think it's Lesty, yeah. Lesty's cute. I like her as well. Um, and then the Carnival and then the Sweeper. As Hod and Greta do a cooking, cooking composition. And they have, like, Bleed Hod. <laughs> but yeah. Lesty and Sa... Uh, yeah. Hmm. Rose is not a cannibal. It is, I don't think Rose is a cannibal, no. I don't think Rose ate people. Ever. Like, it's against her whole character to have done that. <laughs> but yeah. <clears throat> okay. Adam is the one he likes to draw the most. <clears throat> Adam is... Yeah. I see. Adam was... Yeah, Adam was the god one. Yeah. Adam was the one who sees themselves as god. Alright, yeah. That should um, do it for now. <laughs> that should do it for now. Um, yeah, that should do it for now. Adam with White Knight. Oh, yeah, I, see, I can see why those two would... Um, be drawn together. That's for sure. 
Is it just kind of not? But Elena and Nosferatu. Oh, you know, I feel it's maybe not family, but they are linked because um, someone mentioned in the comments before about well, not comments, but somewhere else. I saw someone. Someone told me, um, yeah, because um, Elena is a blood fiend, and like Nosferatu was like Nosferat Nosferatu's lore um, mentions about how there are bloodkins. In the, not bloodkin, sorry, that's something else. Blood fiends in the city, so that's obviously Elena. So they are related in some sense. Maybe I don't know about direct family, but they are related. Nosferatu and Elena, that's for sure. It explains why Elena is Elena. Elena, Nosferatu, and Carmen. Carmen, I guess, because Carmen has like red eyes. Like I really liked the reveal in the Botany Corp. Where we see Carmen's face for the first time. And it's like, it's these like big red eyes that, I don't know, they're kind of not too many, like somewhat maniacal, but like, oh, drinking blood in the bathtub. I see. No wonder. <laughs> but yeah, like Carmen's eyes have that somewhat maniacal, like, look to them, at least in Lobotomy Corp. She doesn't look that, that, like that in this game. But she does have that. She has like not unhinged, well, somewhat unhinged. But I get why she is somewhat. Anywho, Ian, Bina, and Zena. I can see like B I can. I see. I, I can see Bina and Zena fan art together, and Elena and Notaratu. Roland looks almost the same. Oh yeah, true. Like Roland's. Uh, I mean, to be fair, he has black hair, and when he goes through. When he does the realization on Geb's floor with Nosferatu. Black, yellow, black and yellow. I see, yeah. Hmm. Oh, the blood form. Yeah, yeah, blood form, yeah. Uh, this one. Yeah. <clears throat> but alright. Um, I really gotta cook something. <laughs> so, yeah. Alright. That'll be over today. Um, I'll be continuing continuing this tomorrow, so I'll catch you later. <laughs> um, goodbye for now. Uh, let's see. Bye bye. Ha. But yeah, uh, catch you next time. I will continue reading credentials tomorrow. Bye bye for now.